It's the Bob and Tom Show. Okay, here we go. You can be mean to me, mean as you want to be. Just say anything that you like. You can be nasty and catty and cruel and unusual. Twist my nose with your fingers. Trip me while I carry liquids. <laughs> <laughs> but as you pin me down, my arms down on the ground, as your spit drips into my face <laughs> deep in the back of your mind remember at some point you'll have to fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and when you fall asleep into your room, I'll creep. Did something move in the dark neath your bed? And then a voice you hear calling out loud and clear. A voice that is your own. A voice that's saying, ah! <laughs> <laughs> There are things that one can do with Bengay, Nair, and Super Glue. <laughs> <laughs> a package of indelible dye. <laughs> Why would a guy such as I ever buy indelible dye? <laughs> Blue as the sky. Don't ask me why. This catalog I found sells roaches by the pound. <laughs> Millipedes, centipedes too. They say the meek shall inherit because they stay up late and change the will. <laughs> <laughs> and when you fall asleep into your room, I'll creep. Did something move in the dark neath your bed? And then a voice you hear, it's calling loud and clear. A voice that is your own, a voice that's saying, ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> I love that. Good morning, hello, and welcome to... The Bob and Tom Show. Pat Godwin over there in that performance studio. Hey, check. Look at him. He's been, uh, he can play uh, 12 instruments. 12, 11? 11, I'm I, sorry. Had, I added the bassoon. 11 instruments. You oh, should nice. hear him on, on the bassoon. Yeah, hey, your girlfriend tells me your embouchure is uh, oh, something to be uh, happy lately. Mm -hmm. Would that help in Cunnilingus, you think? <laughs> wow, throw it right out there. Dr. Griswold, your thoughts? Um, I, I'll have to ask my bassoon expert, Paul. Oh, you're you're just fine dancing around <laughs> it, aren't you? But you don't want to talk about it. What did you, uh, what did you, hi, there's Christy at the news desk. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Willie Griswold's here. Yay! Hey, man, how are we doing, gang? That's right, we're cheering because we're glad to see Willie, and we're glad that Josh isn't here. I'm Chick, <laughs> and here's Tom. What did you tell Willie to call his, uh, when he was a uh, little baby Willie? His unit slang for his. Oh. Did you did you use penis or did you? Uh, I don't remember. I think probably just text junior something. Dinkus. Text uh, junior. Dinkus. Have you ever heard junior. Dinkus? No, probably. We were throwing wiener around a lot back then. <laughs> wiener was the real funny one back then. Hey, put your wiener away. It's Come, gonna be a whole show. A wiener show. A wiener show. Well, I get to go home. <laughs> <laughs> well, Join it. Lucky you just got here. You missed the. You missed the opening if, I don't ball. know if this well, is going to uh, uh, embarrass my baby girl or not, but I'm going to have. I'm, I, I don't know if I've said this on the air before or not. Uh oh. But we used proper terms. Sure. Penis and, and vagina. Yeah. But she didn't hear correctly or didn't or couldn't say her V's, so right. she used F's. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most adorable little thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that a character in Austin Powers or something? Shrek, maybe. Right? Oh, uh, oh, a lot of vagina. A lot of A lot of vagina. Vagina. Oh. I'm Richie Cunningham. <laughs> 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 this is a lot of vagina. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, uh, a friend of mine is an ER doctor. Oh, yeah. And, and he was telling me that Half the women that come in uh, to his location refer to it as down there. Yeah. 
So uh, yeah. as a culture... I've said that. But do you think that's in the uh, doctor-patient relationship? They feel like they have to say that? Or is that what they call that in their everyday life? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. I, I, doctor-patient, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah, I'm guessing too. Because or, or, in their life, maybe moneymaker or, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, so when you go to the doctor, if you, if you, not, to, not to suggest that, that, that you're having any particular issues. No, no, go ahead. Would you say... Um, Doctor, my maybe you'd go with your 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 Anglo file. Doctor, my tally whacker appears to have an issue. I like uh, I like crank. Mm. You're crank. Really? My crank mm. uh, feels a little uh, <laughs> yeah. out of sorts. Can you help me with my crank? Yeah, you don't go with that. I have yeah, this really heard, bad visual in my I've heard head. Crank a lot. Well, you don't go with pork sword. I have never heard no. crank in my life. You never heard crank's a fun one. No. Crank, you gotta crank. Say, oh, crank. Oh, yeah. I'm simply, not joking. simply hang down. I've heard that. <laughs> but see, a, cra a crank, crank implies that it, it, wrong with it, my hang down. A crank <laughs> implies that you're being requested to somehow. Yeah. Crank it, you right. see. Yeah. Crank does imply. To, to wind it. <laughs> it does imply action. You're yeah. exactly right. Winding yeah. it would hurt, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, you don't want to wind it. Okay. No, no, no. It, it, it wind it, it's like the word <laughs> screw. You don't actually hey. screw it. What? But what? I'm, I'm trying to explain the, uh, the the metaphorical. Screw, blow. Yeah, yeah they're yes, not, yes. Right. They're not really numbers. accurate. They're right. all misnomers. Yeah, you know, there's, right. there's, some, screw, you there's some poor Amish We're girl just going... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys, I, you I, messed I, up on that whole my word day blow. Last <laughs> Wait, huh? Ace, you had somebody do what? He Ace, what? I, 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 I can't even talk around this. So you and the lady are uh, getting yeah, down to it. Here the trans I hear it's, it's money time, and uh, she uh, started blowing. Did you say make a wish? <laughs> <laughs> Were you on fire? That's what I'm, That's exactly my point. Yeah. Oh, if you're oh, a woman, Lord. you don't know. You shouldn't. Uh, yeah. You don't know. You I guys a, should never have started using I have a that very, I don't know, <laughs> em, very embarrassing version of this. You guys, have you heard about the alphabet trick when a fella yes, is trying to yes, please a gal? Right. And, go to, and yes. the, the idea is that you kind of use your tongue and so you're right, writing cursive right. to right. do the alphabet. Right. I didn't know that. I thought it was like a vibrations thing. I thought you just went down there like it was an ASMR little microphone. <laughs> oh, okay. And I was, I was, hey. <laughs> the girl, the girl goes, what the hell are you doing? Tell me. The alphabet. I, go, I saw a TikTok about it. It's the alphabet trick. A lady did it on a cantaloupe, but I thought sang, I'd give it a try. He sang the song even. So how's Willie? Well, well, he, he talks. He's enthusiastic. <laughs> he can get to Elemento, then he gets a little in his head. <laughs> He's a lovely man. Look, he she was a head. nice lady. Otherwise, there might have been, you know. Large echo. Uh, large echo. Uh, large echo. Yeah, it, it had large it echo. In the um, uh, I don't remember my first one of those. <laughs> uh, I, I, first, let's just stick to the topic, you which is time? nicknames. Oh, okay. <laughs> It'd be funnier if the doctor did that to you. What? If, if the doctor started using the unusual terms. Oh. That wouldn't be funny. Yeah. Well, Chick, would... I'm afraid in order to uh, do this test, uh -huh. I'm going to have to uh, uh, poke you in the chocolate starfish. <laughs> So he, like, he likes that. That's where he wants he to go. Yeah, I'm going to count the spokes and we're going in. Counting the spokes. Yeah, get your, get your, get your, I will never yeah. forgive Josh for saying out loud in this no, room, counting either. the spokes. I will never, I will never forgive him for that. Chocolate, cho but the doctor said, well, mm, appears you have a lesion in the chocolate starfish. <laughs> yeah, we heard you Hey, he said, time. changing the topic. Thank Do you. they still make those uh, <laughs> those little holiday chocolate starfish candies? Brock's, I think, oh, makes Brock's them. Oh, Brock's does. Yes. Yeah. Aren't those, those yeah. are really good. We have fish in the news, and right now uh, Josh mm -hmm. is uh, sitting on a boat. Fishing. Uh, uh, yeah, his, uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Central Time's on. Uh, he's an hour away, more or less, from Well, they're starting. looking for their spot, I bet. <laughs> I bet oh, they're they're, they're the in boat the boat already? Oh, yeah. But the, the important thing to remember is he's not here. <laughs> okay. Oh, he's not here. <laughs> it's that early morning brothers waking up. Do you know how many, shut up, just give <laughs> my coffee, just, we take it easy <laughs> over there. Hey, next time, try to get over. a little, just a drop of urine in the toilet. <laughs> Can you do that? <laughs> I, mean, I have no idea about brothers or sisters or... It's yeah, you're it's an crazy. only child. Your, your quote was perfect. What? what? You try to get a drop of... Oh, yeah. Is, is that what toilet. brothers do? The, yep. The pissing everywhere? All of that, yeah. <laughs> and, that, and, 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 and almost everyone here... There's someone here that must have uh, some kind of kink in the... Not me. Plumbing. No, not you. Kink in their crank? There's a, yeah, a kink in the crank yeah. be, because there's a lot of puddle. Maybe their crank is like a little... Which leads to this letter. <laughs> Pat? Yeah? What, what is the name of the um, of the the technical name for bedwetting? What is it called? Uh, uh, nocturnal enuresis. Nocturnal enuresis. And, and I'm not in any way making fun of it because uh, uh, it's a serious issue. <laughs> not this particular time. Um, 
uh, but um, we have a, a an issue in which uh, someone was uh, suffering from that. Mm -hmm. uh, this comes to us from Kansas City, and uh, Paul, kind enough to take the time to write. Uh, I was a bedwetter when I was a kid, so much so that my brother once got into the bed with me with goggles and a snorkel. Ha! <laughs> Why is that really? <laughs> that's, see, that's a brother thing. That's that's goes, a lot of urine. My caring, loving brothers nicknamed me Pee Pants Paul. <laughs> now, as an adult, I've gone full gangster. I go by 3P. Ah, uh, yeah. Go. There you go. Isn't that a cool nickname? Hey, man, 3P's here. <laughs> How'd you get that nickname? 3P. Well, I beat the bet a lot. Uh, now, uh, we have uh, interesting stuff in the news today. Uh, giant snake news. Speaking of... Uh, snake! Um, uh, pickleball news. And uh, Caitlin Clark continues to take over the world with the uh, Indiana Fever. Yeah, she was, of course, number one draft pick on... Uh, when, what night was that? Monday, Monday night? Monday night. First pick in yeah. the 2024 WNBA draft. The Indiana Fever select Caitlin Clark, University of Iowa. And Tom and I were talking, and uh, Willie, your sisters are uh, uh, WNBA insane right now. They're wa they watched the draft. That is so <laughs> exciting. Night. That makes me so happy. And I tried to go on the uh, WNBA website and uh, scope out a Caitlin Clark jersey. Right. And um, on the NFL website, if you want to go and your favorite player is, let's say, Chick McGee. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they do have a section where you can go and go, McGee, and his number would be 74. Thank you. That was my senior number in high school. <laughs> and uh, so you can dr draw that. But Caitlin's obviously sold out. So I thought you can also get personalized jerseys. Get the custom. Make the Clark Yeah, so yourself. go, go uh, for uh, make Clark in the NFL, you In the NFL, you can do that. You still can't. You can't do it on the... I, I tried this morning to do it, and I might be doing something wrong, but I... You I, can't get an NFL jersey that says Clark 22? No, I can't get a WNBA jersey that says oh, Clark 22. Oh, okay. So you can't make I it. don't know if they have that feature on that, that you can get a personalized gotcha. WNBA for yourself. But they have some kind of computer thing. And for yeah. some reason, I saw yesterday that they won't be available again until August. There's... They are way... Behind there's pl there's lots and lots of stuff on the website that uh, the, that has Clark's number and, and name on it like sweatshirts and t-shirts cool. and stuff like that. So uh, um, it's interesting because also the other big person in world news, in a pleasant way, is a woman, and that would be because of the huge release last night. Anyone Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. Oh, yeah, my yeah. entirely a new, a, a whole other album, whole new for album God's sake. And, a, and then, a video coming out with but Chris Malone. The new album, and then like this bonus album with the album. There's anyway, uh, yeah, and Caitlin, uh, also, uh, the rumor is today, it's today or Monday, it's going to be announced that she's a $20 million endorsement deal from Nike. And uh, Ladies Online is blowing up the internet. I wonder what uh, Caitlin's shoe is going to look like. Man. People are losing mm. their minds. She's taking over the world. Mm, what if Plus, we are not. Very cool. Twenty million. And, um, That's a lot of money. Breakdancing shoes in the news, and we have uh, the yes. first uh, a breakdancing uh, team member has been named USA, uh, which we'll get to. You know, there was a guy. There's a guy, and I don't. Uh, man, I hope I can. Uh, there are many, many other Olympic sports that maybe they used to have tug of war. <laughs> Evidently, what? they played tag. Yeah, these are uh, Olympic sports that you uh, didn't have a problem with like you do break dancing. I don't have a problem with all those. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. I were these correct. in ancient Greece? The ancient Greece and okay. stuff. You know, when people were smaller. The people were only like oh, three feet six. I, I was considered a giant. Uh, now, uh, right now, I, naked would be I want to remind you that coming <laughs> up, it's Mother's Day. A Sunday this year. It always is a Sunday, Tom. Very convenient. May 12th uh, okay. this year. Uh, um, uh, Mother's Day coming up, and of course, we've got the uh, we've got the answer for you. How do you take care of all those moms? Well, you can do it. Uh, just grab that phone and go to IHateStevenSinger.com because Steven Singer's got uh, the answer to all your questions, including, uh, for example, those great new roses. They are 24-karat gold, real roses, dipped in 24 karat gold and the special one right now this season is called the red wine deep rich burgundy colored rose and once again it's dipped in 24 karat gold so it's something special it's going to last forever and uh, of course it has the steven singer guarantee it is um it well it comes in a beautiful box and it it's it's shipped to you for free how about that free shipping you don't get that very often these days there's also a free personalized gift message for that mom there are a lot of moms in your life. Take care of them. 
You can also get some beautiful bracelets. Christy's favorite oh, is... Oh, yes, the Atlas bracelet. The Atlas so bracelet. beautiful. Oh, that's a good song. Yeah, it is. Oh, well, there's a beautiful <laughs> bracelet named after it. Very um, affordable, very, very beautiful. Did you hear me sing Atlas? Yeah, do you want to go through... Do, do you want to go through a handful of songs that Stephen Singer did? <laughs> Stephen Singer didn't name Joey? I made the decision to yeah, shop think, at Stephen Singer. His name is Singer. I think he would like if we sang some songs yeah. for him after all. Let's yeah. make him a jingle. That'll keep you busy for six years. Why don't you do that? That's a great idea. We already have the Stephen Singer, singer, singer. But, you know, stretch out. <laughs> horns. Get some horns. Posters. That's what he needs is a poster. Poster, 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 poster. You love making posters. Now, we could have... Um, Okay. Why don't we, we ask Stephen to create bracelets based on various songs? We could have... Um, you know, I don't care. I don't know if I care for this. Me seeming, seeming so insane, and you're just calm as can be. You mean rational? Yes. Uh, in charge? No. The way things are. I guess. Uh, where, where was I? Oh, I hate stevensinger.com. Don't forget those great roses and lots of other great jewelry. And of course, uh, you can always upgrade. Steven's got the best deals going with respect to uh, his guarantee, the lifetime guarantee. I hate stevensinger.com. All those moms are going to thank you. Then you're going to thank me for letting you know about it. Coming up, we have uh, great stuff in the news today. I'm very excited. Uh, we have monsters in the news. Anybody know what the Mariko Aoki phenomenon is? Heck nope. yeah. Mm, you know what it is? Yep. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> it's um, when trying you, to help. When you walk in, when you walk into a certain establishment, you immediately have to go to the toilet. It's a, it's That's a, re a thing. It's a real thing. Huh? Can uh, it be manipulated? Uh, I, that like I don't if there's know. a waterfall or some kind of. It's if you if there's a is there a place in your life where you go all the time and as soon as you walk in you have to go to the toilet. My this house. Is, the, <laughs> Yeah, the at Christie's house, they do the same yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. When I see one of my ex-wives, I want to vomit. Okay? <laughs> That's a different phenomenon. Bad decision. We'll, we'll get to that later. Bad this decision. is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi, this is Carl Lewis, and you're listening to... <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We are live in the Napa Auto Parts studio. Got a little surprise coming for you here. Okay. Uh, surprise for the... Uh, performing crew. cats, performing cats, performing cats. It's, it's I'm not performing my breath. cats. Is the surprise ready? Yeah, bring them on in there. I'm holding my breath. Now, uh, Chad Daniels, comedian, I'm joins us in the yet. studio. Neither am I. I don't want to um, look. Along with uh, Chick McGee, Josh Arnold, this is Tom speaking, the lady of the house, Christy Lee. Hi, everybody. Is it the real Aruba Ray? Uh, it is not the real no, Aruba Ray. No, I know what it is. Uh, is it the backward oh. singer? Oh, no. It's not the backward Mark. singer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've, I've brought in a... Oh. I mean, hey! I have brought in a... Uh, uh, now, listen to how he pr Chad. pronounces this, Chad. Listen. Now, uh, this is a real rock and roll cat here. Uh, you can see he's got the tattoos, just like you, Chad. Got yeah. the Rush t-shirt nice. on. Wearing a Rush t-shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a beard like he's a waiter at a, a hip restaurant. Kind of a, uh, I do that on the side. Kind of a kind of a super hip looking mega goatee, nice head of hair, big stash, and he's you know what he's carrying in his. What do you know what that is, Chad? It looks like the gun from Mission Impossible Five. <laughs> Snuck into the orchestra. That's right. Uh, it's uh, that is a bassoon. Bassoon. A bassoon. And I bring this up because the other day I was in a restaurant. That's not I, how you were pronouncing it. Bassoon. Bass bassoon. You were saying wait. bassoon. Is that what you were saying? Uh, bassoon. Bass okay, bassoon. Thank you. Uh, do you say it again? Bassoon. Bassoon. Not ba, ba. Right. Bassoon. Okay, bassoon. bassoon. Are there any famous rock songs that feature the bassoon? Um, was it, uh, um, what is it, uh, Wait a second. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of stumped. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. There are at least five other bassoons. There's a Smokey, Smokey Robinson tune. Oh, okay. So four, uh, four. That's got Tears, Tears of a Clown? Tears of a Clown. We have just oh. had... We oh, have just, right at the beginning. Tears of a Clown, yeah. 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 We've just had four other bassoon artists enter the room. Is a bassoon uh, player referred to as a bassoonist? Bassoonist. Bassoonist. Wow. So there are now five bassoonists here. Uh-huh. Are those all the same size bassoons? No. Is, is when there, do you want me there? Bassoonist. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know as a former clarinet player, there is a, there's also a bass clarinet. Right. Are there alto bassoons and, b and bass bassoons? And yes. There's contra bassoon. What does that mean? Twice the size of this. 
You have to smuggle well, them. about the lowest note of the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The contrabassoons are smuggled, as Christy just <laughs> brilliantly said. If this <laughs> happened in a high school, they'd lock it down. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo, Pablo Escobar I'm was not kidding. a contrabassoonist. I can actually bring one of those in sometimes. You okay. Can. Once again, this is the, uh, the uh, Rock E bassoon quintet. <laughs> Keep us soon. Oh, there's more. <laughs> That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Rocky Bassoon. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skill it, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. No, Kentucky that. Derby winner Ali Sheba out of his father, the great Stian Ali Dar, and its mother, the broodmare Belle Sheba. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're looking at one now uh, called, out of a stire named Whiny Bull by a, a mare named Girl on Girl. We named it Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom, 24 7. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're all here except Josh. He's, uh, he's fishing, as my mother would say. <laughs> he's in a fishing tournament. The Ozark. Yeah, he could did, win some big money. Did your mother say, like, she's a Fishin, Weishin, President Bush? Italian. <laughs> that, that was her uh, accent. Arm. She was from southern Ohio, like south of Columbus, is mm -hmm. what I mean. President Bush? She's, she's President Bush. <laughs> old old Bush and new Bush. Is what she old Bush and new Bush? Old Bush, Bush and new Bush. Not Bush the younger yeah. Bush? My favorite mo my mom's story is I get a lot of questions about my mother. And, yes. Uh, I say, yeah, everything from I your say therapist is about all true. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I was at an event hosting some sort of event at a monster truck, and they're playing the national anthem. Mm -hmm. And uh, the home of the free, and it, uh, that wraps up, and everybody's. Going. And my mom in the background, you can hear, boy, uh, the home of the free, you pay for it, though. <laughs> Uh, what the hell's that mean? Mom, what the I hell? I like it. Though. I mean, what the hell? I mean, freedom. What are you talking about? I mean, maybe she's paraphrasing you know, freedom know. made free. I, I'm not sure. I, 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 I think I heard a guy <laughs> in the waiting room at Jiffy Lube say that one time. <laughs> right? An old one tooth trucker uh, say that one time. <laughs> and then I saw on the line, uh, online the other day, yeah, I didn't have the best parents, but uh, at least I'm a little funny. And that me talking about me. So there you go. Now, um, let's see. We were reviewing Tom, your thoughts. many things uh, uh, to review today. Um, we have an inter interesting uh, set of things in sports, certainly. 
Dear Chick, thank you. You made my year. I have always called my hang down a crank. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have never heard that oh, yeah. till today. Are we going to get mail on what you call it? Uh, uh, Jesse from Cedar Rapids. Thank you, Chick. I call mine the tallywhacker. And I believe Tom said that. Well, obviously, that's, that's kind of, I think, an English thing. That sounds like a, yeah. Uh, or he says the unit is a circle jerker. I never heard of no. that. Uh, that no. was like, that's like a uh, gathering. It's a circle jerker. Yeah, right? there's, that involves crackers, and we don't need to go into that. No. That's um, true. Okay, well, um, I've got a nice letter here. Uh, two weeks ago, spring break, writes um, Dan from uh, Somerville, South Carolina. All right. We were driving south from Somerville, South Carolina to Miami. Heading to go on a cruise. Um, I knew a little bit about Florida because I was stationed there in the Navy. We passed the exit sign that said DeLand. I asked everyone if they knew why it was called DeLand. <laughs> no one knew the answer. So I said, because it's near the sea. Everyone busted out laughing. Everyone busted out laughing. <laughs> Thank you for the great gag, Tom. Well, thank you for your service, Dan Owsley Jr. Did any other liars write in this morning? <laughs> My goodness. Oh, thank you, Dan. Uh, Somebody classic. smarter than me should compile all of our running jokes. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we don't remember a bunch well, some of them. of them drift away yeah that's true i mean some of them just go away naturally like this one tiger king tiger tiger last thing i thought about this guy tiger wait a minute king, well tiger, it, i know tiger, tiger king, king but man if you're talking tiger about king, a tiger, tiger, talented tiger individual tiger king. sam oh, oh, listen, the vocals listen to that sam. Vocal. <laughs> <laughs> and i understand he's playing all the instruments is, is that yeah, correct that's, that's yeah, what his brother sam yeah, he that's did how that. you want to start oh, today man. he's a modern day band and he can cook he's right he's right around call him have him come down here how about that he's probably still awake drove down trying to hang out with my pals have a good time with my buddy chick to eat how i get treated i'll get fired up right now (laughs) dear tom uh for as much as you brag about your education and your love of the olympics one would expect that tom would remember olympic sports of the past cricket croquet ballooning uh look this up christy basque pelota B-A-S-Q-U-E, Pelota, P-E-L-O-T-A. I don't even know what that is. So these were... Uh, okay. And tug of war. They were rejected at some point? No, they were sports in the Olympics. Ask Pelota and they're Olympics. gone, though, now. Oh, yeah. Well, they are gone. But maybe breakdancing. This will be the only... Uh, My objection to oh, this... Oh, it's kind of like high lie. I think it's early high lie. There you go. Oh, yeah. Does your high school team have a Pelote team, whatever the hell it's called? Basque. 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 It's Basque Pelota. Oh, like okay, great. Basque. Okay, good. That's great. <laughs> so it affects no people at all. <laughs> the, the Olympics are supposed to, they're supposed to kind of pure sports, not fads. I have a theory with you about these sorts of topics. Like someone will come in, uh, a hardworking comedian, Mm -hmm. one of the Bob and Tom legends, possibly, Greg Warren or Greg (laughs) Hahn, or I can't think of any others at this time. But I mean, anyway, they'll give a a title of an album and you will be irritated. And my theory is you just didn't get to name it. That's your problem. Not at all. And I think. It's the same with the Olympics. They went ahead and said, we're going to have break dancing, but they didn't ask you about it. That's your problem. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. If you want him to like something, what you have to do is you have to put in a glaring omission. I'll write a joke. I'll put in something, a very easy fix. I right. send it his way. Right. He does the easy fix, and then he goes, oh, I, I helped too. Comes in and saves it. Take exactly. no credit. So How many times have we had this uh, discussion behind the scenes about Tom? Okay, we want to do such and such. And we go, okay, how do we how do we get this done? And we go, somebody, someone will say, not even the same person every time, we have to make Tom think it was his idea. His idea. That's right. Okay. All right. And a, we start a, yeah. the wheels in motion. I have a, I have a trick. Oh, you have a trick. Dealing with I, Tom. I, I asked Tom, what rhymes with spoon? And he goes, tuna lagoon. <laughs> <laughs> and it immediately puts in, in the, a, yes. a good mood. Now yeah. it's a hit song. Now it's a hit song. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Can, How about Spoon of Laguna? That would, that would that, work. That's oh, real poetic. Fun. Yeah, license. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fun for right. the whole gang. Um, how about uh, Fire at Hare Harbor? No. <laughs> I'm not sure what that rhymes with. Parking something down a yeah. side street? Yeah, no, do, like do you want to read the break? I got it. Just because you like it, I got a break dancing in the Olympic story for you. Go morning. right. Oh, is this? I, oh, I, I, I sent it to you. The it's got all the information you need about breakdance. Victor Montalvo is the first American breakdancer to qualify. They're having qualifying for breakdancing. That's right. Uh, for the Paris 2024 Games, Montalvo, known as B-Boy Victor. <laughs> I, and I, I've learned that 
the the break dancers that are all it's B boy nickname or B girl nickname. That's the way it works, apparently. Really? Yeah. That's as far as I can tell, yeah. Huh. You mean like left fielder, right fielder? It's a term for you're a B boy the sport. If you're a breaker. And okay. I guess they call it breaking, not break dancing. Really? That's, that's what just I'm, breaking. It's not dancing that's anymore. That's what I'm gleaning from my Are you telling me uh, breaking electric boogaloo was ahead of its time? Uh, exactly. Okay. Uh anyway, B Boy Victor earned his spot on Team USA at the 2023. WDSF World Championship in Leuven, Belgium, beating out Canadian Philip Kim, known as B-Boy Phil Wizard, <laughs> to, to take gold. The 2024 Paris Summer Olympic Games will be the first time breakdancing will be included as an official Olympic sport. There will be two separate solo rounds for men and women with 16 B-Boys and 16 B-Girls competing against each other. Competitors will adapt their style and improvise to the beat, as the DJ switches up the tracks. Now, what does the DJ do when they do pole vault? And the judges, you know, reading this now. <laughs> <laughs> this There's no does DJ seem, in pole vault. There, oh, there isn't? I mean, sports don't have to have. This all does seem a little bit silly to have break dancing in the. Okay. the You're going to get excited because they make merch for every team. You can get a USA diving. Oh. You can get a USA basketball. Now we're on to something. You can get the Adidas yes. official yes. USA break and track suit. Yes, you can. Can you really? There They'll be you breaking go. hearts in that thing. They, They'll be walking around Whoa. town. Damn right. You they know. have the shoes. They the released the break and shoes, break and shoes uh, Monday. Who so who uh, with the Olympia? Is it Nike or Adidas? Let me, let me look. I've got, a, I've got a picture of them here somewhere. I've no. got a song if you need it, too. For break dancing? Shoes. Break shoes. dancing shoes. Break yeah. dancing shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you need, I got them. Yeah. <laughs> you want well, to hear it? Well, hit it, plus baby. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Plus one for the gold, bronze for number two, three to get silver. <laughs> Pass, I'm coming for you, but don't you <laughs> step on my break dancing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> But lay off of my breakdancing shoes. All right, now. Wait, you can take my cardboard, slap my face, smash my boombox all over the place. <laughs> do anything you want to do, honey. Lay off of my shoes, don't you? Step on my breakdancing shoes. Everybody now. Oh, you can do, do anything, anything. But lay off of my breakdancing shoes. All right. I've left the building. Oh, <laughs> amazing beat. Here you go. Here's a picture of it. This is the um, Nike breakdown. They're kind of cool looking shoes. I've got to admit that. Oh, They've yeah. got like a double nice. blue stripe going down the side and then a... Got the Olympic rings. And, and a reverse logo and a regular Nike logo. One in orange, they, one in blue. There we go. Oh, yeah, very there cool. you go. Well, they are cool. I like them. I don't care for the swoosh to be any way swoosh. other than how it's intended to be. Oh, you mean upside oh. down? You I assume like it. it's upside down because the break dancers are upside down a lot, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's my I guess. Like that. You just you just turned me upside down. <laughs> just blew your mind, didn't and I? And turned you round, round. <laughs> like a record. That See, so, hey, my objection to break break dancing, I, it, I know I, it's extremely I, difficult. I share your objections reading Because I, what's next to the next Olympics? Jazzercise? I'm... I'm uh, coming up in the Olympics. The thigh master event. Here, of course. No. Here's what I'll say. If you're worried about the integrity of the Olympics, mm -hmm. you're a loser. That's 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 my whole argument. That's if you're worried. <laughs> really? If you're worried about the integrity of the Olympic Games, yeah, you're a loser. I think. I don't think the Olympics really matter. You, you don't? Know, I don't think the sports in the Olympics matter that much. No. Is it a generational thing that we're uh, not More captivated, it, yeah. but we're we know when they are and we're looking forward to the? I'm gonna watch the basketball games. The swimming's fun. There's a lot of it that I really care about. Track, there's, track there's, and field. There's a million things Gymnastics? every year that you don't watch on TV, but some people yeah, do. That's it's just, true. I'm not that worried about the Olympics. But man. they're they're watering it down too much, really. Like. Uh, what's that? Shake weights? <laughs> I mean, every you don't take an exercise fad and make it an Olympic sport. Do you remember the first videos of those when the girls were uh, taking their the shake, shake weights? Oh. <laughs> I remember we asked how funny was we that? asked some of the women here to try them, and as soon as they started, I said lawsuit. <laughs> Get Put it down. Yeah, we had them here. Remember? Absolutely. Let's continue with the breakdancing no, story. Here's There's what's going to happen: process. because we're mocking it, this will end up getting the biggest numbers. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now, typically, the biggest numbers in the Olympic. Well, I know in the Winter Games, it's the Skating. Right. So. I think people will tune into breakdancing because they're just, what is this? Mm -hmm. You know, they just want to check it, was it out. dated at this point. I thought it was dated yeah, as it's, well. Yeah, it's a mid-80s fad, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's an international yeah. sport. Breakdancing just got to Eastern Europe, so for them it's oh. quite new. Oh. Oh. 
very excited then. about yeah. it. Yeah, in Eastern Europe, it's 1983. Wait till they get a hold of them in Somalia. They'll kick ass as soon as they get electricity and... Oh, sorry. Competitors will adapt their style during break breaking competition and improvise to the beat at the Olympics as the DJ switches up the tracks and judges will be looking for moves like windmills, the six step, and freezes <laughs> as dancers show off their skills I can freeze. and stamina. It will be freeze great though. Freeze tag! Remember freeze tag? I just hope they have those. I hope they have those uh, way too serious, solemn announcers like they have for golf. Well, it appears that he's uh, developed the Belgian freeze tag. That's right. They're very, they talk too quietly. I'm Dick Button. Yeah. Or the, the, the like, breaking the, the guys at the Masters uh, talk as if, by the way, Jesus Christ is putting with Arnold Palmer right now. By the way, the Olympic Games, if you want to put it in your phone, uh, July 26th, the uh, opening ceremonies and the breaking competitions start <laughs> August 9. All right. What day do the plate spinners start? I don't know about oh, the, plate spinning the, the, yet. Really? Oh, okay. But I am chuckling to myself that that's probably what I would have said about breaking uh, last I year. Remember, there were people that were bitching about basketball. I tell you what, uh, basketball. Why is that uh, an Olympic sport? Well, look at those. Uh, no, uh, that's not for the Olympics. They should be nude and throwing a spear. That's what they should be doing. <laughs> ja javelin. That's what they do. Oh, the nude, uh, the nude uh, <laughs> gymnastics is what they. No, oh, no, nude wrestling is what they had originally. Yeah, yeah. Greco, yeah. Roman yeah. Greco wrestling. No, you, no, you, Christy, you've heard my idea before. You were a gymnast. Yes. And you are a person of uh, petite stature, if you will. Short, She's yeah. She's not regular size. Most Most gymnasts are small. I've always advocated having weight classes in gymnastics. I will watch a 280-pound guy do the vault. <laughs> I want to see. That's what I want to see. Oh. That's not what you want to say. No. You want to say, you want to see a BBW doing the pommel horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God, the horse has disappeared. You know oh. oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I think you uh, committed a penalty, Tom. Foul, number 99. <laughs> number Tom Griswold. <laughs> He's giving them business down there. <laughs> 15 yeah, it is, Tom. He's giving them the business down that. there. Is that from an NFL game? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Uh, maybe a college game, but uh, an actual game. That is yep. really funny. Uh, more sports coming up, including uh, Falconers. Hawk trainers? <laughs> they call hawk trainers falconers? Or, I'm familiar with the falconer term. I uh, don't know if all lar large bird I think so. people, if it's all falconry, even if it's not a, a uh, falcon. I ha hawk yesterday take care of one of the Canada goose prop problems. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hire them, bring them over that here. that little baby right off the ground. <laughs> you think there's a falconer out there who's like a badass falconer that doesn't sure. use a glove? Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, I don't believe in the gloves. I gotta use a glove. You, you, you know my <laughs> story. His name is Nerve Damage Eric. <laughs> yeah. He just doesn't care. God. Doesn't uh, feel uh, anything. Uh, uh, yeah. Without going into too much detail, our friend Haywood yes. has a wonderful son, Coulter, yes. good friend of the show, who was d working on falconry. Also, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, the Haywood Banks insane gene. And, uh, <laughs> and, his, and his buddy called him and said, you got to get over here right away. And he had had a, 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 a bird claw through his hand. Oh, God. And they had to pry it off. Oh. But we do have that in the in the news, and falconry. Sports. And, sports. and by the really? way, we were talking about geese yesterday and how much I hate them. Yes. Did anybody go out the main door when they left yesterday? Yeah, I did. I did you notice all the piles of goose poop on the stairs? I did not. Yeah, I thanks, fellas. That. Yeah, I, right I, there. I go up and down the ramp now. now I go out the side door. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mother's Day is right around the corner. You know what mom really wants for what Mother's Day? What does she want? A Raycon every day. Oh, yeah. You know that. Or yeah, any so she of can Raycons. tune you out. Unbelievable ear. So yeah, she, you, you could have this show on, and Mom could put those in and listen to. Uh, oh, that's a shame, else. honey. Hang on a second. Yeah. Click. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and just nod your head. Oh, that's. Uh, call your dad. I'm sorry, care. honey. Yeah. Are you going to be here for dinner on Friday? <laughs> okay. Can't hear you. <laughs> Raycons everyday earbuds—a perfect way to tune out all the noise around you. Eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life, and Raycons also that seamless Bluetooth. 
sinking. They're practically connected as you take them out of the box. And Raycon's optimized gel tips fit every ear ever made, and they will stay in place. With additional features like earbud tap functions and noise isolation, they make a swell Mother's Day gift. And also, because it's mom, Raycon offers easy-peasy 30-day returns just in case. Plus, uh, you uh, chick's tip, you can buy mom a pair of ear earbuds from Raycon and get a pair for yourself. So go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today and you get 20% off your Raycon order plus pre, uh, free shipping. Get 20% off and free shipping by Raycon.com slash Tom. That's by Raycon.com slash Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, coming up, um, Mariska Hardigay. No, oh, sure. Hargitay. 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 Mm -hmm. Mariska um, Hargitay. Uh, Jane Mansfield's daughter, yes. Gorgeous. Beautiful woman. From uh, SUV, uh, mm -hmm. what is it, uh, in the news today. Mm. Kind of a fun way. And um, she announced her uh, love for me in any way. Uh, oh, she loves Chick? Yeah, that'd be exciting. How nice. about that? Oh, yeah. Hey, be... Mariska's on the phone, guys. Hang on a second. <laughs> oh, uh, first of all, That's great, cool. great, beautiful first name. Yeah, Mariska? You know, I, I'd go nickname, like Risky or Mari. Or oh, Risky. Mar 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 hey, Mar. <laughs> yeah, Mar. that's what I would do with a beautiful name like yeah, that. I feel like she's already Mar dumped me. And I yeah. don't think I've got to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Risky we, business, Jake. <laughs> risky business with Mariska. I have given uh, Jason, our producer, an assignment that's kind of a tricky one. We'll see if he can get it. And it has to do with a uh, story about drunk vultures. I love this story okay. so much. Yeah, wait till you hear it. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Reach us toll free at 1 888 Bob Tom 1 or at Bob and Tom. Bob, 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 Everywhere I go, it smells like weed at the grocery store. It's guaranteed. Even standing in line at the DMV. Everywhere I go, it smells like weed. Oh, boom. On the way to work, it's that reefer I smell. I smell pot at my hotel. Ganja's in the air on every street. At the gym in my church, it smells like weed. I went to Tacoma. There was a marijuana Roma. Tiva Sanibel and Captiva Smells like Cannabis Sativa Smells like Cannabis Sativa On the plane ride home It reeks of weed The TSA They all agreed My suitcase Smells like stems And seeds everywhere I go Smells like weed. My hair and my clothes smell like weed. Maybe I shouldn't smoke so much weed. <laughs> Josh, what's wrong? My back is sore, my legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look, nothing. Ah, uh, Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All see right. you later, buddy. Give it a... Oh. Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. Oh, Josh, Josh, did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific. Give See you later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. 
Hi, this is Pat Godwin from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? You don't want to do that. Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcasts. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. Have my tire checked. So you're sitting around with your friends and you're going, uh, I hope I can afford a hoopty someday. And they're thinking, uh, this guy is an idiot. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Don't, 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 don't. The essential morning radio. Don't. This is Bob and Tom Radio. 24-7. And now, from the Amish Brewing Company, Buttermilk Ice Light. Ringer! <laughs> nice toss, Graver. Thank you, my friends. Women of the Old Testament. Hmm. Okay. Ruth or Mary Magdalene? <laughs> <laughs> Ruth. Okay, how about this? Ruth or Eve? <laughs> buttermilk ice light from the Amish Brewing Company. The hand-churned buttermilk is frozen, the curds removed, put in the back of a buggy and driven around town until thawed, then returned to the farm and slowly filtered through a hand-sewn patchwork quilt, <laughs> then refrozen to create the unique taste of buttermilk ice light. Okay, plain black floor-length dress or red lacy see-through teddy. Mm. Plain black floor-length dress. <laughs> when you say buttermilk, you've said it all. Ninety-nine glasses of buttermilk on the wall. Hold, hold it, Fritz. Uh. Fritz, move over. Let me drive the buggy. Ah. It's okay, Graber. I took his reins away when he wasn't looking. <laughs> You're a good friend, Yoder. <laughs> the Amish Brewing Company would like to remind you, if thou hast had too much to drink, thou shalt not drive. <laughs> Amish Brewing Company, Napanee, Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is comedian Sean Maury, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Why do you have to get drunk to be an ass? Why do you have to get tight before you get loose? Why do you need a double before you get into trouble? Can't you get into trouble without an excuse? You want to get up and get out and get free and get crazy. But why do you have to start by getting stoned? Because, Pat, you don't have to get drunk to be an ass. You can be an ass on your own. <laughs> so, Mark, you're a single guy. Yeah, I tell you, though, it's tough because uh, <laughs> I got these neighbors behind uh -huh. me. Really? My neighbor, Gail. Very, um... Gail? Uh, Gail is a woman who just moved to... Her bedroom wall is right behind mine, and uh, she has a new boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I found this out. Uh, his name is... Tom! <laughs> this is Bob and Tom 24-7. Up a little bit later on. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Uh, Willie Griswold is here joining us. Good morning. Josh Arnold taking a couple of days, and uh, Willie's over there at the Steven Singer sidekick chair. Steven Singer Jewelers, the 24-karat gold dip rose in red. Red wine is now available. Steven Singer Jewelers, 24-karat gold roses, the number one gift for Mother's Day. And now you're suggesting that Mr. Singer needs to make a, a jewelry item based on every song. Red, red wine. If the, if it's, the song has a color. Any sort of color in it, yes. I, I agree. Yellow brick ro roses. How about that? Mm. There's something. Yellow brick roses? Red, yellow yeah. brick ro Hello, roses. Yellow brick ro yellow uh, these yeah, are, these yellow. Are, they're, they're, they're in the uh, development stage. Sounds good. We're spitballing. I like the yeah. idea. All right. It sounds good. Now, we've been talking about uh, the Olympics and uh, break dancing. Yes. Uh -huh. There's an official shoe now. That it's, it's, i got to tell you, it's a cool-looking shoe. 
And any minute, Caitlin Clark is going to officially announce she's got like a twenty minute, uh, twenty million dollar endorsement deal with Nike that includes a, uh, a signature shoe from now, Caitlin. Uh, should we now? Do you want to start coming up with bad jokes about what the shoes are going to be, or let everybody else do it? <laughs> let everyone else. Do okay. It. Mm -hmm. Chris, I Christy, would you like to come up with any? What? Well, they have to they have to design the shoes. So how is it going to be distinguished from other shoes? Mm. Is there going to be some kind of three point aspect to it? Um, something girly that would be offensive. No, girly? Don't, you That's, don't want girly. Just some. Stuff. I don't know if you say something girly and have to add the word offensive. No, I mean deliberately. Saying. I'm trying to just prevent the jokes from emerging. Some Nike executive, <laughs> fellas, how can we make this shoe a little more girly? Like a girly. Hey, yeah. you put a Change unicorn or a sweet. rainbow. Uh, I mean. Uh, 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 Something about uh, Let me how tell you she's something. breaking all kinds of barriers. Of this shoe is going to be oh. crazy popular. Mm -hmm. Your kids People will are, it. are losing their minds mm -hmm. online wanting to know what it's going to look like. When's it going to be? And released? I'm trying to get my little girls' jerseys. They're going. They're Caitlin crazy. They're they, they yeah. They watched the W. Your daughter. How how old? What? Oh, Eleven. Uh, knew uh, their uh, WNBA draft. I, I came home from picking up dinner and she's frantically trying to find the WNBA draft. So I'll I'll take care of this and I grab my phone and start trying to find it and then she of course found it. So uh, boom. you aren't the only one. I've had other friends whose kids wanted to watch it. So this is great. It's yeah. really exciting. It's you know when I was a kid, I got to grow up watching Reggie Miller. I was a huge Pacers fan, mm -hmm. and I'm excited that my little sisters, kind of like me, will have the opportunity. They're going to watch these games. They're going to yeah. be just like Reggie. I can be just like Caitlin. They're going to get a basketball. They're going to go at the first day of basketball practice, and they're going to hey, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm not very good at this. <laughs> I, don't, I can't shoot. I'm not very fast. I have no ball handling That's ability. Right. It's all a part of growing up. I run like a Griswold. I was never meant to be to be on this basketball court. Now, uh, and take that disappointment and just extrapolate it over your entire life. Do you think she really gets any say in what her shoe looks like? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. The, right. There will be a making of the shoe documentary. There will yeah, be, oh. be, be a movie in 10 years. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> But it's oh, interesting. Like Michael like in Jordan thing? What's interesting, and I, I will give an analogy that no one will get. Okay. But um, sometimes when they when they first started doing this, there's a famous story in manufacturing of uh, in the world of skiing, they did the Jean Claude Keeley ski, and it was a disaster. Why didn't they call it the the, the Jean Claude Skeely? <laughs> oh, very nice. If they'd, if they'd called it that, it probably would have still Why not sold. Why was it a disaster? It was a cra crappy ski. But the point oh. is, oh. I wonder in the history of all the, especially now when there are so many different shoes out there, I wonder which ones the design was really cool but the shoes were terrible and that's why they didn't go mm -hmm. there's a you're famous the, you're the shoe guy you would know. i'm listening to rex chapman's uh autobiography actually how is that a, it's, rex it's wonderful chapman. it's wonderful and it. you especially and you know what i'm talking about you should listen yeah, to it. who's rex chapman he's uh he was a, a kentucky wildcat basketball phenom he took yeah. over he was called rexington when they went to uh, uk uh he played uh i want to say nine or ten years in the nba mm -hmm. he's uh he was a great guy but he was uh, addicted to opioids and this that and the other and he's fine now. he's wonderful now he's got a great life but uh, it was quite a struggle but he said he the worst thing he ever did was uh sign a deal and this shoe shoe company is out of business i think and one he had con a converse deal mm -hmm. and he signed with and one and he uh, instantly started having trouble with shoes and his feet and he had an injury because of the shoes oh. so there's the other side of so, yes yeah, so, but I'm, but I'm, so what i'm wondering is if is you know when do will Caitlin have time to have them design a shoe, try it, make sure that she likes, or is it strictly she has a shoe she likes? They'll just change the outside of the design. Or does she have a shoe that she sells that she doesn't necessarily wear that particular shoe? Yeah, when she plays? a lot of guys wear yeah. other people's shoes. Probably, yeah. Luca wears KDs or right. LeBron wears Jordans. People don't always wear their own shoes. This is a boring story. Only I find this interesting, but I have a pair of Art Monk actual game worn cleats that i'm not telling you how i got them but i have them and he uh had a nike deal a nike shoe deal but he didn't like wearing nikes he liked adidas so the equipment people in washington uh he was washington redskins wide receiver he's in we're, we're semi aware of this Art since you talk about a moment so his soul his soul of his shoe was an adidas soul mm -hmm. and they sewed a nike top on the top of the sole so he could wear the shoe in games and not void his contract. Hmm, that's interesting. Ah. I bet there's a lot of that going on there out is, there. I think it's called spatting when you can actually have the equipment guy draw draw a Nike logo on tape or something and make it look like it's a Nike shoe or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I also know that there are, 
I forget which guy. Well, there's a famous story of some guy who was a beer endorser, and some guy took a picture of him at some bar, and he had a different beer in his hand, and it caused. Remember this a few yeah, years ago. So it sounds familiar. You got to be. You've, you've got to be real careful when you're at, the, at that level. So yeah. anyway, we'll see how the how the Caitlyn shoes go. But the, the, again, like I said, these break breaker break dancing shoes are actually really cool looking. And they do have, as I noticed, an upside-down Nike logo on the bottom of the shoe, which is probably because they're spinning around upside-down all the time. They are, because and, they're breaking. And I, yeah. would, I would assume the Nike's going to be smart enough to do an ad, just break it, and oh, with I some upside-down so. guy spinning around or I some lady doing it. Should be fun. Uh, what's coming up in sports? Coming up in sports, we've got uh, Falcons and Hawks, but not the Atlanta Falcons. These are like the actual bird Falcons. <laughs> this is and the, it has something to do with the NFL draft. This is the most bizarre story. It's crazy. Uh <laughs> Uh, and more ballerinas today. And, uh. and bird people, please don't abandon us this morning because we also have drunken vultures in the news. Yeah, we do. Of all weird things. And I have a... Uh, you mean like the drunken stork in the cartoons? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> wants to have a drink with the stork. <laughs> and I have I'm a, bringing them, baby. I have what <laughs> may have be, drink with maybe them. our most offensive and yet obscure reference musically, sonically coming up. I cannot... The, Wait. You're not going to believe it. <laughs> and it's, it'll, be a qu it'll be a quiz trivia thing. I think only Ace will get it. Okay. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Add to or continue. I think we're going to take it down a notch and play something romantic. Oh, all right. All right. Secrets, you're not saying a word. Doo -doo -doo. I can't describe just how much that hurts. Doo -doo -doo. I thought our love was honest and true. Mm. Doo -doo -doo. You're guilty, baby, and your silence is proof. Not up to me this time. I'm leaving it up to you, baby. I'm leaving it up to you, girl. I'm leaving it up to you, baby. Don't you tear apart my world. I'm leaving it up to you, baby. I'm leaving it up to you, girl. Well, I just can't believe that you're deceiving me. It's a slow dance for Java and Christy Lee, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a lady's choice, obviously. <laughs> Do -do -do, you come home looking like you've been caught in the rain. Do -do -do, smelling like cologne. And it ain't rain for days. High karate. Time after time. <laughs> I say this can't get much worse. No, no, no. You've got cheating in your eyes, girl. And your drawers in your purse. Oh. I, I, I can't read your mind. Oh, we've been living a lie. It's not up to me.
Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. Sunshine. Bob and Tom Radio. Radio. I actually uh, I have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Woke chick up. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh, in my fantasy, I'm making love to this woman. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> 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 Safety first, everybody. Safety That's first. My most recent marriage was a disaster. It made the wreck of the Edmonds Fitzgerald look like a fender bender. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry to hear that. Uh, hello. And you remember Lord's famous line about uh, gun control. More ah, or yes. yes. It, it, the relationship taught me a lot. It mm. taught me they won't sell you a handgun if you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Like <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. Jeff Rothband is our guest. Uh, Jeff is a fine, fine comedian. Um, I actually had to do that once. What? Be a pallbearer. And that, oh, my that's God. That's heavy. Yes, that's a heavy, heavy job. Yeah. I actually had to go to a funeral, and I was asked to be a pallbearer, and I, uh, <laughs> always a pallbearer. <laughs> <laughs> Never the corpse. Never the corpse. <laughs> you know you're too when you're eating cereal naked and your girlfriend tells you to put some clothes on, you realize it's not your girlfriend, it's just a woman on a bus. So that's how you know you're too high. Hi, this is Ross Bennett, and you're listening to Tricare.com. Good morning. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. So glad to be here today. There's Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hello, chick. Willie Griswold. Good morning. Is at the uh, I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Ace Cosby. I'm Chick McGee. Here's Tom. A lot of interesting uh, stuff in the news today, including mm-hmm. birds and sports. Lots of birds. Of all things. Uh, a couple of really cool bird stories. Many, many birds. We have a uh, production challenge, I call it. I've asked uh, I've asked uh, Jason to work up a couple things uh, in the world of uh, audio oh. that we'll be, uh, we'll be presenting for you. That's you wanted uh, us to design qu- shoes. Uh, uh, a quick note here. Uh, don't tell comedy. Shh. Don't tell. I won't tell. Columbus, Ohio, next Friday and Saturday is Willie G. Sitting right over here. And uh, Willie's also with the story in with uh, Jeff Oskey coming up uh, Saturday night. Saturday night, tomorrow night. And there's tickets at Willie Griswold on Instagram. There's a link in the bio. Check it out, gang. Come hang. Thank you very much. Have some fun. Now, um, we were talking shoes. Yes. We were talking Caitlin. We were talking... uh, $20 million endorsement deal with Nike. Uh, Should be announced any any moment. As they say, get the bag. She Mm -hmm. got the bag. Still applies. As far as that goes. Very good. Very good. Um, Now, uh, we have some other interesting things in the world of sports. And they they better... uh, Come up with a shoe for her. The pre- preseason really quick. starts like her first week of May. I Why think. did high tops go out of WNBA. fashion? WNBA. I don't. I I I see them in the NBA every now and then. Every now, now and then, but not maybe. like mm-hmm. yeah. not like we used to. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's it's interesting to me how they go in and out of fashion. I, this is obscure, and I'm sorry, but I was reading something yesterday, and there was a photograph of uh, Brian Jones from the original Rolling Stones. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And it looked like he was wearing a pair of Converse All Stars in oh, like '65. Yeah, well, that rockers was, wore high tops. Those were the only shoes. Yeah, forever. They but were, I mean, uh, here's the deal. He, uh, he was a he was quite the fashion plate rock star you know, with all of the. He kind of was the first English, <laughs> to me, rock star, and, and very very much. Uh, but I thought it was so cool. He's here. He is wearing you know, some exotic snake vest and all this other gear. And, oh. Those are Converse All Stars. Chuck Taylors. Yeah. Uh, now um, you know the principal of my high school when I graduated in 1976 was named Chuck Taylor. Really? 
It was not the, he was not the shoe baron. Did he uh, wear was Chuck Taylor? We could do a whole show, people. Chuck Taylor's sending all the time? us names to people that know that aren't the same as the famous ones. Uh, so I have a question for my zeal. Christy, I'm, 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 I'm asking a question here. Yes, sir. You were saying that they have to come up quickly with the Caitlin Clark shoe, and and don't take this the wrong way. Do you suppose it's like obituaries? They already had one. Where they already have. Oh, uh, do you think they had one 99% designed and said in case this happens here? Of course. Here. I believe that. Yeah, I'm sure she's going to walk yeah. into a room and a team They're going to have 10 shoes yeah. to choose from exactly. or something. They'll and... have physical shoes. But, I mean, yeah. do, do you think they talked to her six months ago or a year ago when it was very apparent that she was great and oh, said, hey, about that. what kind of Maybe. shoe do you want? Do you try? It, I don't know. We'll see. Um, it's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I think that this is all very new to Nike because I don't think anyone uh, could have predicted the Wait, and, uh, what's phenomena the, that she's. Become. What's the turnaround time for a shoe? I assume quite uh, substantial. Well, well when I got you guys shoes for Christmas, yep. it takes. Uh, but that's not anything like de designing a shoe. I mean, I mean yeah, designing, manufacturing. Is, is school in session in Malaysia right now? Because if it's summer break, those kids can get to work oh, real fast. There you go. See? Yeah, you I see did. what just happened. I'm the guy that hired the children. Thanks. I'm the one. That, I want it. This sound familiar? I love it. Who it's does my, that sound? It's my his dad thing. right here. You are your father's. <laughs> father. oh, 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 you're coming at me again. That's exactly. And, 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 then, thing. and then the same line. I think is, you should embrace it. I'm coming in hot Monday. I'm gonna write for the first time in a while. I'm making fun of all. There we go. The, the savior always says, it was just a joke. I was kidding. It was a joke. Uh, Stop crying. It's a joke. <laughs> That's my favorite. Thing. Okay. Well, um, now we have. Uh, Where are we? Do you wonder one of these bird, these bird stories I think are fascinating. Treating drunk vultures can be challenging, as evidenced oh, by okay. an intoxicating discovery <laughs> from a Connecticut wildlife refuge. Here's Christy with the story. Oh, no, that's all right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Why. How did I end up with I don't it? Go know. right ahead. CBS I like News this. reports that Watertown Animal Control and staff responded to sick vulture call. Wildlife rehabbers said the birds were unable to balance, stand, and kept passing out. One out of 12. One out of 12. We got drunk vultures out here. <laughs> we ran every test, and in the end, they were just simply too drunk to fly. Rescuers believe the vultures had been dumpster diving and got themselves into something that was fermented enough to cause severe intoxication. The vultures, this is the best part, yes. were treated with fluids, allowed to sleep it off, and given a big breakfast before they were released. Does it sound familiar? Yes. <laughs> like anybody who has a good hangover. Maybe some Pedialyte yeah. in there somewhere. A banana bag, they call it in the hospital. The uh, banana bag? Yeah. Is that what they call Gives it? Gives you the fluids, yeah. Oh. Uh, the rehab facility has reminded folks to keep their dumpsters closed so this doesn't happen again. So, okay, I want to see if, now, they were referred to as being too drunk to fly. Right. Um, Ace, you may be the only one that'll get this. I want you to identify the band. You're going to have to listen very carefully and uh, and see, see if you can uh, see what this is. Okay, you got it. You went to a party. You had 16 beers. You so far so good. Yeah. Uh, here well, so I far. Don't know about good. But... <laughs> here it comes. Here it comes. This was a big hit. Here it comes. Okay. Oh, I get the, uh, uh, yeah, I get yeah. the implication, yeah. Too drunk to too, right. uh, not, not fly. No, but, but too, he had too many beers and she goes, hey, baby, you're out of luck. That's my question. Uh, I know the song. I do not know the song. I, I, I don't say either. Black Flag, but I, that You're close. Like. You're close. That's that, it's that era. Yeah. Fear? Uh, no. The Dead Kennedys? It is the Dead yeah. Kennedys. Oh. Is it? Yes. That's one of those songs that you tend to read about rather than listen to. Tom says, oh, it was a big hit. No, that was not a big hit. It was a big hit in that in that world. Okay. And I, admittedly, it's highly offensive and difficult to listen to. <laughs> uh, the the, the name Talk of, about alternatives. The name of the band is unfortunate and tragic. But yes. as Willie just said, I didn't name the band. Don't bring me into this. No, I'm just Don't doing bring it. me into your little diatribe here. I was doing my own thing earlier. That's right. He's got his own diatribe. <laughs> <laughs> Too drunk to... Fly yeah, were uh -huh. the vultures, and uh, yeah, the what band. About, uh, why don't we get drunk? And is mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah, is that Jimmy uh, Buffett? Yeah. yeah, remember why don't we didn't get well, drunk? Well, then yeah. it, it, maybe they couldn't because they were too drunk. To, yeah, that's yeah, the other side of it. Yeah. I think it's a sense. Imagine yeah. seeing a drunk vulture, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, of course, it's reminiscent of a certain cartoon. Of course, that stork. The stork. Yeah. They, have to, they have to regurgitate to actually fly. Did you know that they eat so much and then they have to act to get their to get oh, off vultures? The yeah. Yeah. Well, that they would explain they what overeat, there's, a, they there's, there's a picture of this lady holding back 
the vulture's feathers while it pukes into a <laughs> toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Ever had to do that, anybody? No? Oh, yeah. Ever I, had to um, puke into a toilet? Sure. You've, never had, you've, hair you've never had a man holding your hair while you vomited into a toilet? No, that's I never. Don't. You haven't lived. That's <laughs> Yes, I have lived a lot. That's got to be a linchpin of every rom-com. I, I like it has to, to be. vomit on my own, thank you. Oh. I don't need any help. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a loud vomiter? No, I don't. I will go out of my way not to vomit. Huh. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, right. Most people to. don't go the other way. I hate it. Well, uh, there, uh, <laughs> yeah. there are some people. Know, eating disorders. I can show you some uh, a pamphlet if yeah, you'd Karen like. Karen <laughs> I was once barfing out the window of my Suburban while Tim Wilson drove us back from a gig. Well, I had the flu. That was awful. Yeah, the flu. I threw up yeah, yeah, the flu. Ace's yeah, the car flu. once. <laughs> no, I did have that. I was backstage. It knocked out the whole time. And then, of course, I have to listen to Tim the whole time <laughs> describing yeah. why I... <laughs> He's going, you know, I was sick. <laughs> I can't remember the last time I vomited. That, Me either. Exactly. The Irish flu, you've we'll start. To, we'll start taking calls. Anybody ever remember. been too drunk to fly? Too drunk to fly? Huh? No. Anybody? Well, I've flown when I shouldn't have because I was so hungover, but. Mm -hmm. I mean, they wouldn't let you on the plane? Yeah, me, yeah, in Chicago to Des Moines, believe it or not. We're they wouldn't, they wouldn't let you fly. Uh, no, no, no. I got drunk in Peoria one night, ended up playing the drums at a strip club. <laughs> the oh. next morning, so sick. Had to drive home that next morning. Uh, uh, first of all, have you ever oh. played drums before? No. <laughs> uh, I think it was only the second time I was at a strip club. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, no cell phones back Let's then. Let's do this. Oh. Oh. Did you do a lot of bop, 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 bop? Let tell you Wipe out. I, 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 in some way, I thank whoever's in charge that we they did not have social media when we were oh. doing that. Was that Big Al's? Silly. Yes, that silly comedy tour. Yeah. Oh, there's chicks sleeping in my bed. What's going on? <laughs> I think Julian Edelman has a problem. I tell you that. He's covered in vomit. The bad news is it's not his. It's not his. Oh. I remember when the vodka bulk, uh, vodka bottle crashes. Oh, night. yeah. That was fun. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. So the, they, they saved the drunken vultures. Yeah, yeah, they did. But they were too drunk to fly. Talk about Good a great thing name about for vultures. You know, they'll never eat anything that's alive. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Well, yeah. that's just polite. Isn't it? Yeah, they That's will. common courtesy. I feel the same way. You don't eat anything that's alive? I bet you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've always Robert. said that. I've always said that. Robert. I ain't eating that. All oh, right. No, Dr. Dr. Noguchi, I don't need a bag. <laughs> no. no uh, thanks, Dr. Noguchi. I'll eat it here. Oh, well, that's not <laughs> so you got to get down and uh, yeah, have yeah, a look yeah. see every now and then. Well you know what? Here. They appreciate it. Mm. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I learned something today from Willie. What's that? About the alphabet. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're you not know. supposed to say it after all these or, years? <laughs> or sing it. <laughs> Who was I supposed to learn from? No one was going to teach me that around my house. Uh, now, uh, I, 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 can, uh, I can teach you something. I can teach you how to check off a box, ladies and gentlemen. Ah. There is a box one must check off, and that is the proper gift for Mother's Day. Lots of mothers out there. Maybe uh, your sister's a mom. Oh, she's a mom. Wow. Uh, here's what you got to do. You got to get him a nice gift. I would recommend my buddy, Steven Singer. By the way, Steven's a dog guy. He's got a great dog named Buddy. You can see the, the Buddy. He's adorable. If you go to his website. Uh, IHateStevenSinger.com is the place to go. And there's one thing coming up right now. It's something new, the new season for moms. It's the gold-dipped rose. It's not just a red rose. It's now red wine. Oh, it's beautiful. It's a rose dipped in 24-karat gold. Deep, rich burgundy in color. And uh, these go for about 69 bucks, 69.95, I think it is. And uh, you can make that Mother's Day extra special. My, my suggestion is you get the rose and then dangling from the rose... That beautiful bracelet that Christy has. Oh, the At Last bracelet. The At Last bracelet. At Last. Gorgeous piece of gorgeous piece of jewelry. It's, My love is coming along. It's interesting because it is as and chick will it is, not it have is, to sing. It is it. as beautiful. It is the antithesis of the beauty of chick singing. Everybody's a critic. Uh, okay, I hate Stevensinger .com. Check out these roses. By the way, they've got a whole collection, a uh, different variety of them. You can check them all out. And maybe get a dozen. Have some fun. Be be a be a big uh, mother supporter. How about? That. Uh, find all the details at IHateStevenSinger.com. Tell them the Bob and Tom Show sent you that I mentioned free shipping. That's very important. And you've got beautiful earrings. And by the way, he's famous for his upgrades and the guarantees. See what I'm talking about? Go to IHateStevenSinger.com. S-T-E-V-E-N. IHateStevenSinger.com. Good friend of the show and a dog person. Uh, just one more reason to love the guy. Uh, coming up, a bizarre story involving more birds and the NFL draft. Yep. And um, do you know what a polycule is? 
Yeah, uh, I didn't I until yeah. today. It's many kills. Uh, that's actually <laughs> kind of close. And uh, a cool Star Trek story all coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. I, uh, when we, when we uh, decided to do this, I said, uh, Tom, we should do a uh, Tim Wilson song. And I, uh, this is really hard. Um, I practice and practice, and man, I sucked. <laughs> you just can't do a Tim Wilson song. So I uh, took liberties with some of Timmy's songs and, uh, and whipped a song together in uh, honor of Tim. Help me get through this, folks. Can you hear that? Yeah. That's too bad. <laughs> he really loved his trailer park a woman. Didn't care much for Dr. and <laughs> Phil. I'm sure he started the church league fist fight. And his ass got tired of Shaquille O'Neal. A big white hat with a black six string guitar. Now the heavens have their newest star. Where's my jetpack, he would say. Now he's sporting wings And he taught Jesus Christ the booty song <laughs> We all thought he'd go to Chuck E. Cheese hell With George Bush, George Strait, George Patton, and George Orwell A hillbilly homeboy, I could be wrong but I know he's tired of me singing this song. A big white hat with a black six string guitar. Now the heavens have their newest star. Where's my jetpack? He would sing. Now he's sporting wings. And he asked Jesus Christ to join his band. They're singing Georgia, goodbye Georgia, Georgia, goodbye, Georgia, goodbye Georgia, Georgia, goodbye. This is Christy Lee from the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for watching this morning's show. To listen, just go to bobandtom.com. Check out the list for a station near you or stream the online radio station on our website and the Bob and Tom app. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me, is right here. I could easily be doing this. We we don't need you, man. I uh, look. 
There's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin cheese, jalapeno flavored oven baked cheese. It's now available in Gardner's oven baked bundle package. So try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. And then you take little peas and you place them strategically four inches apart all the way around the hole, right? And a polar bear will crawl up and he'll look at it in very much curiosity as what is going on there. Now, when he bends over to take a pee, you kick him in the ice hole. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and Tom 24-7. Bob and Tom show. Got a lot of birds talking to birds today. We had falcons, hawks. Hey, talking birds, huh? Uh, hey, what birds was the one work. that got drunk? Vultures. Vultures, Vultures baby. Yeah. Is there a band, uh, them them crazy vultures? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah like Dave vultures. Grohl and uh, a couple of the guys? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Too drunk to fly. Sounds like an I'm album title, to doesn't it? Oh, man, that's that crazy. scare me. Again, <laughs> too drunk to fly, too drunk to F was the Dead Kennedys song. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on a serious note, uh, sad note, uh, the, the great uh, guitarist, songwriter, singer Dickie Betts, uh, best known as a member of the Allman Brothers, Dickie Betts has passed away. I didn't know he was sick. And uh, he's, he, has, he's hasn't been uh, in good shape for quite a while. He was 80. Oh. Thank, yeah. thank, thanks very much. He was 80. Uh, never mind. I try to do something decent. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Why didn't one of the betting sites get Dickie Betts to come in and go, my last name says I'm changing it to DraftKings. <laughs> <laughs> but we could get Mookie Betts, you guys. But Mookie Betts? Mookie's not available. Yeah. He's, he's still he's in active. the league. Yeah. <laughs> well, There's a they, they might be able to make him an offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. Um, yeah, Dickie's son is an uh, excellent guitarist, Dwayne. I did not know he wrote... Um, Ramblin' Man, Ramblin Man, Jessica. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was a great writer. He wrote, for the Mallman Brothers fans, the definitive album is live at the Fillmore. And uh, there's so many... Uh, uh, In Memory of Elizabeth Reed is a classic instrumental. Is that his? Yeah. Com yeah, compared oh, by some that. to a Miles Davis yeah, tune, actually. Yeah, he wrote that. Uh, interesting story. Dickie was in our studios, and a real <laughs> nice real nice guy. Yes, he was and, here a couple uh, times. And uh, he made an effort. It was uh, at one of the early changes in the Allman Brothers band. He made an effort to introduce Warren Haynes. Went out of his way. He wrote down Warren's name because we were talking to him and Greg, Greg Allman. And Dickie handed me this piece of paper in the middle of the interview going with an arrow pointing at Warren. Mm. And Warren's been in the show a bunch. But I, uh, And then when Dickie got kind of kicked out of the band, uh, interestingly enough. What uh, happened there? Do you have well, a, uh... Derek Trucks came in here and Derek... Who had kind of replaced him was kind. He, he took his guitar and played a Dickie Betts song as kind of a quiet tribute. But anyway, sad news. Uh, the great, the great Dickie Betts. Uh, has I think it's nice. Away. Warren Haynes was in the band because he didn't. He certainly didn't need the money. You know all that the underwear money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The whole family. I tried. Uh, now, no. uh, in any event, uh, he was a very nice tribute. Warren's out there this uh, this summer. You know, there might have been a text going back and forth among the uh, elder statesmen of the Bob and Tom Show yesterday afternoon, saying, "Oh God, <laughs> Dickie Betts died. <laughs> Our lives are over." We thought you'd take today off. Yeah, but you've been very. Uh, Tom's a huge fan. Nice about it, and you are. Uh, <laughs> you waited almost an hour and a half into yeah. the show to mention Her, it. I'm no, it's a sad, sad day. He was. He had terrible problems with drugs and alcohol. So yeah, but, wasn't he the one that said he didn't do any interviews before noon because what was that famous quote he had? I don't do any interviews before noon because I'm still partying at 11:30. Or I'll have to find it. I can't remember. Uh, exactly. But I mean, was Greg Allman the one during the, the during like the the young days when he would be. Um, Passed out as he was being seen to by a, a young lady. <laughs> yeah, there's, there there's there are many it? famous stories about many 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 boys. Famous Here stories. it is. Dickie <laughs> Betts used to joke he didn't do interviews before noon because he was not done throwing up before eleven thirty. Ah, it was a part, quite the party. There you go. Yeah, but, but fine, a fine songwriter, singer, mm -hmm. guitarist. His first name. Do you know his first name? Richard no. Betts. No, wasn't no. That's his middle name. Isn't no, it? Richard's his middle name. You know what his oh. first name was? Forrester. Oh. Leonard. Forrest. Forrest, okay. Forrest Richard Betts. Huh. 
I'll be I highly recommend if you've never uh, 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 live at the Fillmore from the Allman Brothers. But the Dickies really shines on the Brothers and Sisters album. He wrote the song Ramblin' Man. I actually owned the Brothers and Sisters album when right I was album. in high school. Uh, but, I think I ordered that for, um, oh, it was one of the 12 I ordered for a penny from ah, Columbia House. Cool. Oh, that was a good one. They usually didn't give you the good ones. Huh? Oh, yeah, no, they, I, yeah. I, I joined, we're just, we're just different in age enough that they really picked up their game by the time I joined, I think. Okay, oh, you said to buy like five crappy albums right. to get one good one. Yeah, every now and then. Why don't you happens. guys just use Spotify? That seems so dumb that you guys say, ah, kids, I mean, you guys. Those are different oh, times. <laughs> oh, hey, Pearl Jam's uh, new album's out today, oh, Dark yeah? Matters, very, oh, wow. very, 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 very good. And uh, Taylor Swift. Very good, and Taylor Swift, a whole new album, mm -hmm. surprise album, surprise. Uh, the NFL draft's coming up next week, he said, the sports guy said and two trained birds of prey will be employed to keep detroit's buildings and streets clear of bird poop they're hosting the nfl draft next thursday and now you're saying well, wait a minute how can birds clear bird poop they don't eat it do they yep no they don't eat it oh. according to <laughs> cbs news the owners of the birds paul and therese thomas of sc air Force Falconry or Scare Force Falconry. I bet it is Scare Force Falconry. <laughs> were contacted by Bedrock Detroit to have their hawk and falcon, Cersei and Yahtzee, shout out to Game of Thrones, mm. keep smaller birds away to keep the producers of the duty away. This, this ah. business is doomed. It's a husband and wife, and then <laughs> these birds are a couple as well. It's a perpetual double date. It's, it's bound to go wrong. That's true. This is a dangerous territory. You ever been in one of those, well, the the Griswolds want to go out with us again Friday night. Uh, I one, know. one of them falls out of favor with I, the other one, and then I can't never talk see to that guy yeah, ever I hate again. that guy. Yep. That's what happens. <laughs> so evidently, the hawk and the falcon are going to keep the smaller birds away from Detroit. They don't is, have a bird poo problem. Wasn't there a place that... Just used the the shrieks of the birds to keep them away. A Didn't recording in downtown. Yeah. Yes, I think you were. Yes, there's a place near me that does that. Uh, they play a recording of the birds. Yes, to keep the birds off of the uh, it, billboard so that's the, right on the. Property. Do the real birds flap to the birds and go get? I don't see any birds around there, so I guess what? it works. Get actually, if you speak get. bird. <laughs> Is get uh, okay? Get out of here! Get out of here! What a weird story! Isn't it dangerous? It's a very weird story. Well, it's either that or uh, you know s snipers and uh... <laughs> <laughs> birds are hard to keep. Are they I hard to, to keep? Yeah, I used to have birds. Did you? You like? Yeah. Well, what happened to your bird? <laughs> well, I'm Frank Sinatra. Oh, right. how's your bird, pal? Yeah, it's Remember tough, that? tough keeping. Tom, you were the one who told me that story. Day. Sinatra asked yeah. his friends, "How's your bird? How's your bird?" And he was, was talking a, about the uh, the male member, the male member. Whereas in the, in England, the slang term for bird would be like a girlfriend. This bird has flown. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. What, no, so no, what is that? Frank, Frank kept birds. Oh yeah, you want to hear about it? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> right, here we go. Thank you, Frank. Egrets. Ah. Egrets. That's right. <laughs> I've had a few. <laughs> oh, oh egrets. <laughs> you nailed it there. <laughs> and a drunk vulture. <laughs> you needed too much falcon attention. That's <laughs> right. You know what I'm talking about. You're saving it. I put them <laughs> in a doopy doopy zoo. <laughs> but they didn't like that form of detention. They want to live a life that's full and crap on cars. Streets all over the place on the highway. So I opened up the cages and let them fly away. That's a high note for this time of the morning. Yeah, yeah baby. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh and you don't do interviews control. before noon because no, you're not done, throw not done throwing up to 1130 like Dickie Betts. Okay, good. I think that's all the, uh, the birds we have. Um, uh, this sports story, though, listen to this. Talk about rom-coms. New Yorkers are now turning to pickleball to find romance. Ah. According to the New York Post, the city's pickleball courts have become hotspots for Gen Zs and millennials looking to play and find love without hitting bars or logging on to those dating apps. Pickleball is unique in that people often play with strangers while the small courts become conducive to chatting and flirt. No, well, that's I, cool. I, I've heard that because it's a smaller court, it's easier to socialize. Sure, it is. Have that, you played? Really I, is, I would yeah. virtually guarantee... Hallmark right now is making one of those Christmas movies that somehow will incorporate pickleball. It's the greatest. That'll be some kind of meat cute or some, you know, oh. she'll get the uh, pickleball ball in the, in the nose, start spewing blood. <laughs> How's that? What's cute about that? What? She's yeah, going to start the... spewing blood? 
Well, that's your dad. Yeah, that's well, I mean, uh, not so much blood. Yeah, just a little. And then he comes, comes, o- you then he comes over There's and saves her. There's always some little injury or your knee. Or, I don't you know, think it's spewing blood, though. Maybe no, she no. slips and she hurts her ankle right, a little right, bit. Right, I don't right, think right. she's spewing. A little slip. I don't know that he saved her, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, directed I, I, by Tarantino. Over there. Yeah. Oh, I wish Josh were here because he gets really angry when I use the phrase meat cute. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. We all get really angry. We, we just gave each other so the look. I'm reading this book right now by Salman Rushdie about when he got stabbed. What, uh, hang on, hang on. Salman, What's his name? Rushdie? How are we pronouncing Salman Rushdie? How, how are we doing it now? Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie. Oh, okay. Famous writer. So okay. I'm reading this book about when he was very sadly attacked. But he also so talks. So now you're pro Rusty. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting book. Aren't it's you a... the one who wrote "I'm looking for a big Muslim"? Is wasn't that you, <laughs> Salmon Rushdie? So now you're 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 on board. <laughs> I'm just reading the book. Okay. The larger point here is he talks about meeting his uh, now wife, mm-hmm. and he he um. This is Rushdie. Yes, Salman Rushdie. Salman, Salman Rushdie. Rushdie. And he, and Does he carry a Louis Vuitton? So he's 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 at this apartment. He's just met her, and he's these finds her quite attractive. And he walks into a glass door. Oh! And he, he refer and he's obviously a very intellectual, literary oh, guy. He, re, yeah. he refers to it as the meat cute. And I thought, oh. oh dear God, if only Josh were here to punch me in the face. <laughs> That's the thing in all these rom coms, Willie. Really. They have the, the way they meet is always it's it's, it's never like normal. No, I understand that. It's but always just... something like, you know, you know, it's usually something very awkward or unpleasant or, you know, stupid. So uh, <clears throat> that's what we'll be looking for. The meat cute <laughs> with pickleball. If it, if it doesn't happen, I'll give you fifty dollars. And Salmon, Salmon, Rush. I highly recommend the book. Uh, I wasn't done with the pickleball story, though. Okay, sorry. Uh, There's bold print here, so I'm assuming it's important. Not everyone is keen on hooking up at the pickleball court. One woman complained, there are so many men, they're all obsessed with pickleball. Then she went on to say, I could play naked, and they'd be like, What's the score? They wouldn't care, Christy. <laughs> uh, I they weren't paying beg, attention. I, I beg to differ. Well, the they'd, men, I, they'd, they'd like to show you their pickle, if you will. Don't uh, you? I wonder what she looks Is like. Is that though. a play hide the pickle? Is that a thing? Hide the yeah. pickle. Is hide it the thing? pickle. Yeah. Play hide the pickle. Ever heard of that, Tom? Play hide the pickle. Is that what they call? Dear Tom and comedic super team. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I'm a cardio uh, cardiothoracic anesthesiologist somewhere in middle America. <laughs> I am working uh, while you clowns are on the air and I have listened to your show <laughs> on the podcast. I'm always a day or two late. Anyway, Tom's fascination with the news story about the injectable salmon sperm. Yes. Caught yes. my ear. Now, weren't we talking about yes. this is, um, Jennifer Aniston, right? Yeah. Jennifer Aniston. Another I guess, Hollywood celebrities are injecting. Was on some podcast and talking about injecting what is essentially salmon semen. It starts that way, yes, and they it, it boosts the collagen production. Yes, salmon semen and salmon. It's salmon. Yeah, they're all. It's salmon. <laughs> salmon. Tom, you should know that anyone who has undergone cardiac surgery. Right me, here, Daddy. Me, me. And you, yeah, um, has almost certainly been injected with a large amount of medication called protamine that is made from salmon sperm. So, there you go. Really? What do you think of that? It's the DNA that's in the sperm that causes this reaction. But this is, with the this is, this is salmon sperm. Because you know there'd be some guy out there trying to get women to think that well, of course, the that male would be... seed would be... You look a lot younger. No, it's some guy named Sam. Yeah, I'm Sam Sperm. <laughs> Sam Sperm. Yeah. yeah. This is what it takes, uh, baby. This yeah. guy's uh, the doctor, the cardiothoracic the anesthesiologist says. So to recap, anyone who's had cardiac surgery is likely at a, firm of sam- a form of salmon sperm therapy. Anyone in that room had cardiac surgery? Mm-hmm. P.S. Stents don't count. I had double bypass there, pal, doc. <laughs> Why don't you look at my chart? This is like my room Why are you being doctor. so hostile to this guy? Why can't you? Well, he doesn't have Thank you for listening, sir. Yes, thank um, you, Brent. Yeah, here it is. It's called, um, it's got some fancy name. Uh, I, no, I can't find it. Sorry. The Salmon Sperm Facial is in the headline, and they say Jennifer Aniston revealed that she does it. It's an injectable, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I said there, in this particular article, there are women who swear by it. They say that it's also, it says it costs $1,000. And you have to do it every six to eight months. It wears wow. off. 
And I'm concerned. I'm concerned that the smell will attract bears. <laughs> you want a bear in a fit? Because face. bears, it's a scientific fact. No, when women face. are menstruating, mm. bears no. Okay, um, that's what causes many bear attacks. All right, they're very good. Now, um, what else is happening in sports? The Eagles and Packers have a dilemma that's out of their control, or I should say, dilemma. The Eagles and Packers are going to face off in NFL's first regular season game in Brazil this September. Cool. Both teams could be facing a major problem, though. Now. Please pay attention. There's a possibility neither the Packers or the Eagles will be allowed to wear their home uniforms for the Week 1 clash in Sao Paulo. It will be played at Corinthians Arena, which is home to the Brazilian soccer team Corinthians. The biggest rival for the Corinthians is the Palmeiras, who wear the color green. Hmm. They take this very seriously in Sao Paulo. Corinthians have an informal ban at the stadium on wearing the color green. A former player was actually fined by the club a few years ago for wearing green cleats. The Eagles and the Packers both have green home jerseys. Brazilian soccer team actually, could they prevent the Eagles and Packers from wearing green jerseys? The informal ban does apply to players and fans in the arena, and there are signs in the stadium that says, don't wear green. Yeah, I went there on St. Patrick's Day, got my ass kicked. It was <laughs> terrible. It was awful. Worst St. Patty's ever. And I think uh, <laughs> both teams, no matter what color jerseys they're wearing, they both have black and white, but the numbers are going to be green, and there's going to oh, be a problem. going to be a problem. Gonna be a big problem, Tom. Well, then have them pay for the new uniforms. <laughs> I don't Brazil. care for this going to Brazil. That seems... Didn't they just yeah, raise their foreign. visa, too? That it's going to be like $1,600 for them or something? Just to, to get into the Brazil? Hmm? Yeah, I thought I read that Well, do you want to see those uh, oh. shavers or not? Nope. <laughs> The you shavers? mean the no? They, the Brazilians are the they wax. Oh, uh, they wax. Sorry, the bums. They wax poetic, and they Miss, have the, they have, bum bum. They have bum the famous bum, yeah. butt contest. Yeah. Oh, here are, this is interesting. The Brazilian government did postpone that visa requirement for U.S. nationals for one year, so it'll take effect, I guess, in April of 2025. Uh, how strong is the NFL? <laughs> I guess <laughs> your witness. <laughs> Holy hell! <laughs> yeah, they'll be they'll be wearing green. By yeah. the time the NFL is done with that stadium, yeah, the, the green right. ban will be gone forever. Yeah. And there'll be people in the stadium wearing Packer and, and uh, yeah. <laughs> also, and if you're the person on the NFL International Committee going, hey, we're going to put a game in Brazil. Yeah, let's get two green teams to play in a stadium. <laughs> yeah. What a clerical oversight. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it's technically a Green Bay home game. Huh. Oh, okay. Hope they have spotted cow in Brazil. That'd be great. Oh, that'd be, yeah, they ship it over there. Things. That'd be all right. More sports coming up, including ballerinas. And uh, and uh, elevators. And Tom, you mentioned the Taylor Swift album. At 2 a.m. this morning, she posted on Instagram a surprise. The Tortured Poets Department is a secret double album. She's been working on this poetry for the past two years and wanted to share with everybody. So there will be a second album of the Tortured Poets. Poets Department Anthology. 15 extra songs. Okay. That sounds like what my dad's middle school poetry was named. <laughs> <laughs> tortured Poets Society. <laughs> tortured Poet. Yeah, she's a tortured poet. She's a blessed poet. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to learn what um, the, uh, we got a couple of unusual names. Uh, first, Mariska Hargitay, mm -hmm. beautiful name. And um, um, Mariko Aoki, which is the phenomenon of going to a place where as soon as you walk in you have to use the toilet facility. So Marika Aoki is not a name, it's a it was the person syndrome. it's named after this person. Oh. But it's a real thing. All right. Uh and it's I just, do you have this where is there a place you have to go or if you walk in you immediately have to go to the toilet? No. Water parks. I do not have that. It's a phenomenon, and it has been identified by an actual doctor. And I talk about a lot on the show, but I don't know if I had it. I'd share it that I had it. I don't <laughs> I I don't think I would. Be handy. Hmm. If you were clogged up, then I got to go to the bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> I need a laxative or I got to go bowl a frame. Either way. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and I don't mean to be mean here. You know what? You can ask me anything. Okay. I'm an open book. <laughs> Just throw, throw questions at Do me. Do you eat uh, uh, yeah, uh, kangaroo? I personally don't. I'm vegan, so oh, so okay. I'm one of those folks. Sure. How how far into the interview did I manage to get that grandstanding in? Um, <laughs> okay. No, but kangaroo is a is a delicious lean meat. People people love it down there. Uh, uh, Tom, no, Tom can't eat uh, kangaroo. No, it right. makes me makes me jumpy. <laughs> well, <laughs> Randy. Uh, 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 uh,
Uh, I pulled that joke out of my pouch. Okay. Yeah. Good Lord. Uh, I'm so sorry. Good so Lord sorry. I was, I was trying to. I was trying to. I, see, this is the thing. You're trying to set me up for for gags. I'm just dead bad. I'm now the straight man. I'm playing the. I'm I'm not the wacky character on the side. I'm just going to set them up, lob you some big balls, and you can knock them out of the park. <laughs> Thank you. Which I guessed. Is uh, is Randy Feltface, uh, Mr. Feltface? Mm. Is, do you have brothers and sisters? I don't. I'm an only, and, and I, I'm like the last of my species. You're I'm the a, last. Of I'm the a critic. Yeah, I'm a critically endangered species. Are you on Felt Facebook? I am on Felt Facebook. Okay. I started Felt Facebook. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just me and Grover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh! Yeah. And Sometimes he's near and other at, kind of at Randy yeah. Feltface at Randy Feltface at Randy uh, Feltface on all of the socials. Instagram. I just put him up on Instagram. TikTok. Yeah, Are you TikToking? I'm not TikToking. I'm Instagramming. Get on the TikTok. Oh, okay. We'll make one right after this. We'll just dance around like a couple of <laughs> boomers trying to get attention. All right. <laughs> how uh, how old are you? I'm 42. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. 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 I'm 44. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. How are you finding your 40s? I love them, man. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, it's mate. Like a good mix between being an adult and still being, identifying as younger than that. Right, right. Yeah. You can still get away with, uh, I have no idea where you are, by the way. I'm just looking generally in the studio. Um, Are you uh, are you finding, like, you've changed? Have you grown? Have you matured? I have. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like a fine cheese. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And the, the, uh, the aroma is there, too. Yeah, yeah well, well, there you go. That's the state aroma of you is an, <laughs> is an aging right. cheese. More sort of a limber. Yes. Mm. Finally, I feel seen. Thank you, Randy. I oh, smell wait. like a gym sock at this point. I've been on tour for so long, I'm literally just a, a yeah. felty. My, the sweat just seeps into my felt. Sure. <laughs> the puppet is dancing. I've never been happier. It's Mr. Felt face to you. There is Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hi, chick. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. The I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. There's Willie Griswold. <laughs> <laughs> Willie can't speak. He's laughing so hard. Yeah! There's Ace Cosby. You gotta watch this tonight on YouTube. So I'm Chick McGee. Yes, you can see all this on YouTube. And here is Tom. Uh, now, where do you find that on YouTube, uh, Ace? YouTube.com. Okay. <laughs> now, um, I thought we would introduce our guest once again. He is Randy Feltface. Um... Are you self-conscious about not I, having ears? I work great on radio. Okay. It's literally just me dancing. Yep. Tune in on YouTube. It'll make more sense. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> no, I, I, you probably have trouble hearing me since you don't have any ears. I do. They're just very small. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really, really the tiny. Yeah. Yes. Little, little ears. Same goes for the nose, obviously. Yeah. yeah no, okay. I, I don't have a nose. Okay. Oh, Randy, yeah. you don't have a nose. How do you smell? Uh, terrible. <laughs> bow, bow. <laughs> Chicka down, down, down. Does that mean I'm officially part of the team now? Yes, you are. Yes, I did it. Hey, it's Josh from the Bob and Tom Show. Thank you for watching this morning's show. To listen, just go to BobandTom.com, check out the list for a station near you, or stream the online radio station on our website and the Bob and Tom app. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. It over there. Mario Lobesto, right here. <laughs> right here. This is a uh, sick, sick wow. thing. Wow. <laughs> that would be, uh, you know. Totally I even, naked. I How did you even get, think of that? You would get, See anything you like, boy? I, I remember that. Free psychiatry <laughs> for life. I think you would. I think you'd get a psychiatrist. Oh I'm sorry. Your, your mother bit her toenails <laughs> naked in front of you as a child. Here. You have free psychiatry for life. Free Prozac. Whatever you want. We are going to fix you. How about it, boy? Ha, ha, ha.
Anything you like? <laughs> so, I mean, Lord, you, help you, us, you, help us, Lord. You can imagine the twisting that would be involved. There's a lot of people who can't even do that. Okay. She was Show's very over. limber. <laughs> Show's over. Show's over. No, Everybody not. out. Hi, this is Rodney Carrington, and you are listening to Bob and Tom Radio. 747 flying both in New York to Seattle, mm -hmm. and the, all of the toilets on the plane stopped working. Uh, I think uh, the funniest okay, part is... Okay, first of all, they've only gone three hours. I'm sure you can hold it for three hours, can't you? You have children, don't you? Christy, we're all full-grown adults. Yeah? You're Barbie size. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to the bathroom every hour, every half hour, a lot. You little Josh Little every... Josh has had a double dose of that in-flight chili of meal. Of course. Oh, all right, gee. did you hear this? First off... <laughs> He can see he, when I take a flight. He's one of the fattest things I've ever Tom done. assumes I would order the chili as if that were ever an option. <laughs> However, and he said a double dose, meaning I requested seconds. <laughs> when grandfather dies, life will be strange. When grandfather dies, my whole world will change. When grandfather dies, I'll scream and I'll yell. Cause I'll be rich as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I figured That's I didn't need to write anymore. You don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We yeah. can't go anymore. <laughs> Holy That's cow. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and I. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. We're all here. Josh Arnold is... Um, in a fishing competition. He's fishing right now in Lake of the Ozarks. Lake of the Ozarks. That's right. As we speak, he's on the boat. That's the rumor. That's what he says he's doing. Fishing for bass. It's a And it's a competition. He could win $5,000. He told me he's putting all these weights down. Oh, Slide yeah. Slide down the bass's thousand. necks, yep. and that way they weigh more in the competition. That's what they do. That's exactly what they do. It <sighs> seems like that is really based a lot on honor, doesn't it? That yes, whole competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of it's course. very, uh, very. But that's popular. why people cheat in it. It's kind of like big time wrestling. If you've ever watched uh, the fishing competitions, they they talk lie. trash and they scream and yell. And... Do they really? Really? Yeah. Huh. Randy, Randy thinks he's going to catch a I'll flounder bigger what, than me. I'll let you know he's never caught a flounder. I don't flounder. know what Crystal thinks he could catch. But he, he said can't the, catch a cold. He, he said the fish ass. have to be alive. Yes, when they, yeah. they have to be alive when you weigh them, yeah. and they have to be from that lake. You can't, uh, <laughs> you can't well, uh, catch one, raise it, and bring it on in. <laughs> it's an honor system. Setting it up. <laughs> Remember they caught the guys, there were some guys who was in Cleveland or something where they were yeah, stuffing they them with... Them. With actual fish fillets. Yeah. Fish fillets and all that. <laughs> and they got caught because of the McDonald's wrappers and the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> fillet, Boy, is there anything fillet o fish I love, that's my favorite McDonald's thing. Every now and then you just need a fillet o fish fillet o fish and double order, double order of fries. Oh, come on. Kidding me? No kidding. Oh. When was the last time you had a filet fish? One fish. Fry. Two fish, one fry? Yeah. I'll allow that, Ace. Double fish filet. Treat yourself today and do that. Will Sally. you please mm -hmm. have a filet o fish and double order of fries today? Well, I may please. have to go get a haircut. Get fry. I'm very, very whoa, 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 whoa. How are Time your uh, sideburns coming? You might need to get a haircut. That'll yeah. take five minutes. Sideburns were voted off last night at the dinner table. I well. uh, came in here Monday or Tuesday morning and you didn't have your headphones on. And your sideburns, I don't know if your your son's up to date on these. You're, you're, there's only one word. for you. They're glorious. No, yeah, he's Look at those. Look at those. Full, full Martin Van Buren Holy over there. The heck, yeah. Here's what happened. And the lady that cuts your hair over at Lifetime, she loves them, too, because I talked to her two days ago. Oh, yeah? Your sideburns. Loves them. She, oh, she, she Does she even know who I am? <laughs> Everybody yes. knows who you are, man. Yeah. You guys talk about dogs together. She has dogs. Too. Okay, okay. No, I, 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 um, <laughs> I was taking the girls to Dairy Queen last night. Uh-huh. And uh, all of a sudden, from the back seat, you need to get a haircut. And then, then I hear Finn go... The sideburns have to go. She's 11. <laughs> it's, I mean, the, well, the, the, the way these children are being raised now, it's insane. Ice cream on a school night, and then they're criticizing you. Yeah. We're, you'd be talking to Mark the whole time. Yeah. We'd say something, we'd get screamed at, and now they're getting ice cream. <laughs> and and a nights. trip to Dairy Queen. How close to dinner or after dinner? Before dinner, I'm guessing, or Is when? After dinner? Come Is on. Right? You know, if you don't go to Dairy Queen, and you're not a good dad. <laughs> Talked about going there last night. Can I tell you something? Night. You're not a good dad. Oh, <laughs> oh, hey, look what time it is. Wow. Stupid. Yeah. Uh, no, but that's because the Dairy Queen that was near our house back in the day when Willie and I lived right up there 
where it's Willie's now house. It's a karate place. It's been a karate place for 15 years. Uh-huh. Yes, for a blizzard, some kid just kicks you. It's like, <laughs> kicks you right in the nuts. Yeah, yeah, kicks right in the nuts, yeah. You know my favorite part about you that, uh, that uh, uh, Dairy Queen that's now a karate place is that they made almost no effort <laughs> to change the sign. No, change no, that. no, no, no this wasn't the Dairy Queen. No, just shut up. Mind your own business. He kicked me through the drive-thru. I went right yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. This used to be a Taco Bell. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> the tea is still there. Don't let your 11-year-old tell you what to do. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Yes. Is that we didn't have this agency as children. Right. No, they live no in a voting. democracy. We lived in it was the feudal system. Yeah. yeah. I was a serf. Shut up and go to bed. <laughs> yeah, but I think, I, 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 Willie, also, you're playing, here at work having a treat. We're going to Dairy Queen. A treat. And we're in, and we're in my car, so it's, you know, it's kind of cool. <laughs> Got my new shades on. <laughs> have you told? The, have you shown the the group? No, the I should shades? get there in my car. Let's oh. let's see those. I, uh, I my favorite sunglasses. Are they giant? Uh, are they, no, they're, they're, they're are they the kind humans? Paul Newman used to wear. They're they like humans? they're like uh, aviator mirrored. But they're pl- they're a plastic. They're like a red, white, and blue, blue plastic. plastic. They were the classic blue. classic ski shades yes. from the mid. Anyone who skied in the mid seventies had these things. All the cool guys, huh? They're hard uh-huh. to get, but I found them in Japan. <laughs> what <laughs> red, white, and blue? Okay. Yeah, they're not that. They're not. They're subtle. Okay, I regret. Oh. I take this back if it's a ridiculous answer. But how much did you pay for these? Oh, no, these, they weren't expensive at all. I think they were like seventy bucks. So oh, four thousand dollars. So <laughs> I'm watching this show called Palm Royale. None of you guys will watch it's it. But the, yeah, I I on Apple Kristen TV, Kristen Kristen Wade, yeah, and Carol Burnett uh, is never a, uh, one of the characters. Yeah, God right. is my witness. It's set in the what mid sixties. He's wearing like them. Wearing those on the golf course, I could not believe it. I, I tried to screenshot it for you. Well, I got I got mocked by my friend Mark about wearing them. So then I, I went online and I found twenty pairs of uh, pictures of Paul Newman wearing them. Uh huh. So yeah. There you go. Oh yeah. Yes. I, Paul Newman, my fellow Shaker Heights guy. <laughs> that's, that's how you know you're. Yeah. Look, no, I'm cool. Look at this, and you hold up a I'm bottle 62. of salad dressing. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's not cool. That's not helping your cause. It's sad that more kids, you make a good point, Willie. More people know who Paul Newman is from his great spaghetti sauce or salad dressing than cool hand Luke. But actually, yeah. I, I mean, I had to laugh, but they are pretty cool, those shades. They're very different. But the reason I got them Do you is, know is the name of the shades? I think it's with a B, doesn't it? I forget what you the You got to go get them. Can we send Mark out to your car and get those? Yeah. Okay. I absolutely um, insist on it. See a little sunglass from Mark, up. they're in my car. They're in probably in the... Uh, yeah, we got to get these. They're either... They're in the, either on the seat or they're in that. What's that thing called in the middle? Council. <laughs> uh, console. Yeah. Console. They might be in the in the in the, in the, in the glass holders. <laughs> Just cut to Mark, the Ferris Bueller valet. Yeah. He's smoking a doobie wah, with his buddy driving wah. down the street. But the reason I had to get them is much more pretentious than just looking cool. What, what is it? It's something to do with skiing? Paul Newman, right? Well, no. Uh, my car has this gizmo on it. When you're driving it, it projects the uh, speedometer onto the ceiling. I mean, onto the uh, you mean onto the glass. You mean the heads-up display? Is the it normal display, people talk it, about yes. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about, Christy? Yeah, yeah I know what you're talking so about. It, and it actually tells me the speed limit. Unless... Your sunglasses are polarized. But if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, you can't, you, you can't see it. You can see it if you tilt your head just a bit. It's really a pain in the yeah, butt. Yeah, that's too much work. So I, I got it's to... too much work. Was it, so were they Valens? V-A-L-O-N? Yes. You oh, find them? I found them. Yes. How cool are they? Do they have like Paul Newman wearing them in the picture? <laughs> well, no, but Jean-Claude Keeley did. That I, was, I re- mentioned Jean-Claude you Keeley. Mean, oh. Jean-Claude Skeely? Nice. <laughs> that's a nice like business, business right there. Every time I like it more, Chuck. <laughs> the more I hear it, the more I it's love great. it. What a weird show for callbacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here they are. Okay, I got yeah. you. The they aren't that bad, really. I Ski mean, aviators. Sure. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, for the... Like f- oh, it says it, there's a you know, description. The ski aviators pay homage to the most iconic ski sunglasses. For the dork in you. <laughs> is what it says right there. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. interesting? Oh, thank, you. thank you, Mark. Um, here we go. These are... If, if anyone who skied in the 70s... Look at those. Or these. <laughs> oh, my God. Aren't they great? I don't see the red, white, and blue. That's well, yeah, well, I, they're actually a lot of A guy thought. that looks like that sold me Molly at Ultra in 2013. <laughs> yeah, he How did. How weird is that? And then, and then the, all the cops wore these in the movies, except they were the wire ones. Yeah, you just made The mirror nervous. shades. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, I cannot wear mirror shades. I don't know why. Um, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't wear it. I never wear them talking to people because it's embarrassing, but... Those look like the sunglasses that a dog would wear if he's riding a motorcycle. In the side Oh, car? yeah, I get you. That That'd be so cool. They look like they're goggles. Good. 
That's if, what they look like. If I could get my, if I could get my golden retrievers to wear these in the sidecar of a motorcycle, <laughs> how great would that be? <laughs> you and your dog both wearing these shades. Yep. Matching shades. <laughs> my golden retrievers right there in the sidecar. Hey, what do you want to talk about? Hey, what's going on? Want me on? to go buy some reefer for you? I'm a hip. <laughs> you wore those to lunch with a friend, and you thought you weren't going to get made fun of. Yeah, what were you yeah. thinking? I don't, Mark was making fun of those, me. So, I, so I, went, I, went, I, I went online and found all these pictures of Paul Newman wearing them. And if Paul Newman can wear them, I can wear them. Admittedly, he's somewhat cooler. but uh, Somewhat? <laughs> it's Paul Newman. Oh, he's one of the greatest Americans of all time. Was um, he cool? I don't very, know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the lore. Talented. Paul Newman. He was very cool. Yeah. yeah. Is he, he's in the Sting, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah. But that was kind of one of his. I mean, that's, that's a fun movie. But he was in a bunch of great movies. <laughs> hmm. Don't let Mark. You actually. This is actually a hit for you. You those think so? Yeah, they're yes, good. Yeah. I do like, you like those. the shades. Okay. Yes. Cool. The tricolor right. blue. Yeah, but any, like I said, anybody who skied in that era knows these these babies. Sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know I why they're in, they've fallen into disfavor. Everybody wears goggles skiing now. I don't. I don't like them. You don't wear goggles when you ski? Not unless it's freezing. Willie, what do you wear skiing? I wear goggles. Yeah. Oh, you there wear you, you wear those sunglasses? Not only that, I wear Willie's sunglasses. Willie gave me his. Oh. He, has a, he has a pair of... Uh, they're also in my car, Mark. They're in the back. <laughs> I, have a pair, I couldn't pull them off. They're like aviators. They're Oakleys. But I can't do the aviator cut. I got a weird nose. I got Wayfarer or bust for me. I can't do it. They, they do they sit, slide down your nose? They, just, they sit crooked. I can't, oh. And then I gave them to the old man. He looks great in them. He looks oh. cool. Looks like a cocaine dealer. Well, not everybody likes them. <laughs> or the sideburns for that. You know, that's what I was going to say. Uh, we haven't talked about her yet. I the knew sunglasses aren't bad. you got to please the ladies. Couple yeah. those with the sunglasses. Uh, sideburns. No. Sideburns. And then, yeah, I don't They're know. going. It's Enjoy them while you can. No, I <laughs> like your sunglasses. You I gotta, give them a big thumbs you've up. You've got to pork chop them out, man. <laughs> Let them go long. <laughs> <Whoop>. Okay. <laughs> be they defiant. Can't, they defiant. can't go any longer. They'll be down to my shoulders. Well, you it's, can't cut them off before that Civil War reenactment you're going to. Otherwise, you're going to ruin the whole day for us. John Lennon had these. When we come back... We have one World of the news. records. Okay, cool. And uh, some really great stories in the news. We have a sex toy tester in the news. Yep. The world's largest elevator. And uh, a snake longer than a school bus. Oh. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Become a Bob and Tom VIP and get your Bob and Tom. This is a song so girls don't get anorexia. Okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> be a plus size model the kind that can't run very far because if i could only be a plus size model i know i'd be a big big star please feed me <laughs> so some, some people get sensitive about it uh -huh. but don't because the beautiful women are the big women and, i agree uh -huh. and i like i gained some weight then i couldn't afford to keep it uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, and i want to carbo load without having to exercise i don't want to worry if the fat goes to my thighs i want to wear a plus press size preserve of room i want to eat chips and wash them down with beer <laughs> well i've got a plus size dream but i'm plus sized ornery for the best job in the world goes to the bigger girls than me they're all sluts <laughs> <laughs> So we're getting back to your hobbies, James. You're yes. a bowler. Thank yes. You. you got that going for you. <laughs> yes, sir. Golf, uh, skydiving, scuba diving, oh, skydiving. skiing. Uh, you went skydiving? skydiving? How'd that go? Yes, I did. Well, was it a tandem jump? or did It you... was a tandem jump. Yeah, scared mm -hmm. me. I'm big. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I, I don't scared wanna... you. Who were you with? I was, was going to say, the other dude. <laughs> I was strapped to the guy. What do, you, what, do you, what do you weigh in at? Do you mind if I ask? Uh, then I was about 280, I guess. I'm mm -hmm. probably 295 now. Oh, yeah. my. Now, is the person, when you do the tandem, I'm, is the person with the shoot? on somebody else. Is the person with the shoot in back of you? He's behind you. You don't have to do anything. You're basically like luggage. You're looking Screen, at the, well, you're I'm just like, watching at the ground come at you while yeah. the guy behind you has, to has the, the shoot and does all the work. And you've never been so glad to have a man strapped to your behind. Mm -hmm. Ever. You will never. And, uh -huh. and you know, they call it a sport too. Well, sure. The it's whole very time. Difficult. They're like, did you like the sport? And I was like, falling 
is not a sport. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was, my grandmother in. would win a medal. <laughs> <laughs> the Silver Hip Award goes to. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. If you want to, actually, if you want to make a sport, you should just throw the parachute out of the plane and then make the guy jump and put it on Ooh. before he hits the ground. Oh, I like that. Now, for competition, sport. competition, yeah. throw one parachute out, three or four guys jump. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. On, he won. So did you glide in, James? We, we, gl we glided in. And, and, and was, on, the, on the tape. Did you, did, you, did you fall or did you land stand? At the very up? last minute, he said, stand up. And I was already going down and there wasn't no. Mm -hmm. wasn't no but my ears did not pop. My, you know, really? The thing with the ears. Yeah. So oh. when I hit the ground immediately, I was like, uh, uh, he, he was like, how do you like it? And I was like, they were good. I enjoyed it very much. Because <laughs> I could not <laughs> hear myself. Hear. Couldn't hear yeah, well, that's that because, stayed. see, if, if it were me, I, I would be tightening every orifice in my body yes. to prevent <laughs> leakage, uh, including my ears. Plus, there's a dude behind you. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that part stayed. That My ears did not pop until maybe the next day. And I had to sing that night. I was doing a play called uh, Smoke on the Mountain. You're a you, singer? I didn't know Yeah, that. where you, you sing gospel music. It's a gospel music play. You so know, that smoke night, was, on the mountain, <laughs> fire in the sky. <laughs> It's a cool. great play. Yeah. So I'm trying to sing. I'm like, the made thing great that we <laughs> well, That's uh, unfortunate. I want to apologize to anyone who knows that, that might have well, a Well, I don't know if you're deaf, you automatically talk that way, even though you can speak. That's what it sounds clearly. like when you yeah. talk. Yeah. I mean, it's it's nerve-wracking. And the more scared, you've already done it, the more scared of it you are, the better you get out, the more you get out of it. You know, it is really like that facing your fear and all that stuff. And yeah. when you're standing in the doorway of that plane, it's yeah, it's every cell in your body screams, you better hold on to something. <laughs> I mean, it's overwhelming. Oh, uh, ow. Oh, back. Oh. oh, hey, Josh. What's wrong? And my back is sore. My legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look, nothing. Ah. Uh. Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. See All you right. later, buddy. Give it a... oh. Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh, Josh, did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific. <laughs> See you a... later. Why? I had to bring along Christopher Walken. <laughs> there you go. For the kids <laughs> who love him. <laughs> I'm a huffer at heart. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the Fat Boy Slim video, but I kick it old school. That's great. Uh, have you interviewed Christopher Walken? No. Oh, I'm sure. Okay, well, here's your chance. And keep in mind, all of his thoughts are completely unconnected. <laughs> So go ahead and ask Christopher Walken anything. All right, what's the what's your new project, Christopher? Frankenstein never scared me. <laughs> so how long have you been working on the on the film? Marsupials do. <laughs> And uh, when's its release date? Because they're fast. <laughs> <laughs> they are fast. They are. You're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. That's awful. Awful entertaining. Essential morning radio. Uh, this is Bob and Tom Radio. 24-7. Now, we've got a couple of uh, heads in here that have a lot of skin on them. One would be mine. The other would belong to Clint Howard, actor. Now, are, are you in every one of your brother Ron Howard's movies? Oh, no. There's been a lot. Actually, um, the one that stopped the streak was, um, oh, Ransom. And then I wasn't in Beautiful Mind, and I wasn't in any of the Da Vinci Code movies. Did that hurt your feelings? Can I say it pisses me off? Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> sure. Your honesty is wonderful and refreshing. Yes. <laughs> Are the stars out tonight? I don't care if it's cloudy or bright. Because I'm blind. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> this is Reno Collier, and you're listening. Shady. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. At the news desk, it's Christy Lee. Hello. There's Pat... 
Aloysius Godwin in the performance room. That was my grandfather's middle name. There you go. There's Willie Griswold at the I Hate Steven Singer sidekick chair. You hey, know man. it. Steven Singer, the 24 karat gold dipped rose in red, red wine, is now available. Uh, Steven Singer Jewelers 24 karat gold roses, the number one gift for Mother's Day, exclusively and only available at I Hate Steven Singer. Dot com. There's Ace Cosby. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Hey, how's it going? Um, and it's beer 30. Ah, uh, uh, yes. And uh, for those interested, a photograph of my uh, sunglasses posted, uh, apparently, in various Bob and Tom social media sites. Yeah, very cool. Uh, and Jim. your soon-to-be-gone sideburns. Yes, the sideburns have been voted off. Does it... Um, off the island. Does it, is it lost on you that there might be, um, you know, one or... Two people out there who desire you and are looking at that uh, picture right now and touching themselves. No, no, no. <laughs> I call him Martin Van Tommy. <laughs> um, Marty Van Tommy. <laughs> Marty, the one-man party. <laughs> uh, sadly, no. no uh, okay. Let's uh, move forward here. We have uh, lots of interesting things to get to, uh, and that would include more sports. Yes, and it not only sports. Stupid world records. World records. Hundreds of dancers gathered at New York's Plaza Hotel to help break the Guinness World Record for the most ballerinas dancing on point. That is the ballet term for dancing on the toes. The That's really, really hard to do, right, Christine? Yeah. Well, not as hard as it would be if they didn't have pieces of wood in the tip of their shoes. It's still they impossible. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> it's so sweet. Christine, are you trying middle. it, Christine? Mm -hmm. It's okay, hard. Christy's trying to... Wait, oh, oh, no, she almost fell over. The successful record organized by the Ballet Scholarship Program Youth Grand Prix saw a total of 353 ballerinas performing a step called the Barrier. Nailed it. How long do they have to hold it? For a full minute. Yeah, good news. Have you seen the video? Tchaikovsky. I did. They're it's very It's really cute. sweet. All wearing tutus. They got their hair pulled back. They look beautiful. Run, yeah. But like, what is the, the fancy name for it? On point? On point. When they mean on tippy toes? Isn't that the technical term? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right? Well, I mean, when you're a kid. Tippy toes is Tippy what it toes is. is different. You're actually literally. Okay. But it looks like they're trying to sneak in, doesn't it? <laughs> like yeah. in a cartoon. Like, <laughs> and their little feet go. Deet, 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 deet. Those <laughs> sneaky little ballerinas. <laughs> they set the new record at 353 <laughs> sneaky ballerinas. The old record was 306. The dancers included students aged 9 to 19 who were competing for scholarships, as well as professional dancers who are alums of the program. Of course, the ones competed for scholarships, some will get scholarships. But some won't. And they'll I'll cry. Have to go home and cry. Yeah. Yeah. You, do you know that... Um, Not everyone's a winner, babe. Have that's... you ever seen... You go to the store where they have the ballerina shoes? Yes. At the... At, like, the grocery yeah, they store have, it's, or a ballerina it's, it's, store? It's a, it's, a, it's a federal law. At the ballerina store. It's a federal law that... You know how they have to have... Uh, in, in some places, they have to have uh, pictures of, like, diseased lungs. Yeah. On... Uh, <laughs> Christy just had a spit take. Diseased lungs yeah, on, on cigarette cigarettes. pack. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. They have to have... Because uh, ballerina toe, it's much like a cauliflower ear. Uh, yeah, it's so It's so disgusting. Yeah, ballerina toe. Yeah, they, they have to have pictures of these mangled toes. Calluses, yeah. Yeah, it's just hideous. Bunions, all kinds of stuff. I think for the first time since we worked together, I don't know if you're telling me the truth or not. Right? I, I, it's a total lie. Okay. These girls are so sweet. I wish I had ankles like that, though. Ah. Are you ready? You There's another one. Stupid. I hate my ankles. What's wrong with your ankles? Oh, they're you hideous. Don't, you don't have cankles. Yeah, I do. No, they're you don't. hideous. Hold your, leg. Company in hold India. your leg up. <laughs> Can we talk about anything else? <laughs> We're trying to get Christy to hold her leg up. What's the matter with you? A company in India has unveiled the look, world's look, look, look. biggest elevator. Look at that ankle. Oh. Yeah. The biggest elevator? Oh, now you're over here. Okay. Is it bigger than Christy's ankles? Company in India has <laughs> unveiled... <laughs> unveiled Christy's ankles, right? The <laughs> biggest elevator. Ever exactly. do it in an elevator? Ever get lost? Ever yes. make out? How do you no. do it in yes. an elevator? You don't have time. Now you got to stand up there and then well, you hit the stop button. Is it an, is it an Otis? Uh, I, don't, I don't mind that. You, know you mean like the partner is an Otis or the elevator? No, the elevator. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm brand loyal. If it's not an Otis, I take the stairs. The elevator at the J-I-O... J-I-O. Hi-O? He-O? Huh. Hi-O. 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 Hi 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 I'm a little more familiar with J-O-I. Not very familiar with J-I-O. Oh, that's encouragement is the last word. Instructions. 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 She walks through right. it there, Jack. What is it? Right. It's like the cha-cha slide. J-O-I. J-O-I. Help me here. Well, the first J is Jack. <laughs> And the last is oh, instructions. Oh, oh, that's, that's, a, that's a form of okay, naughty. Okay, no, I know. Our, our, our producer is doing the uh, broom handle up right. and down thing. Okay, sorry. Thank you, Jason. The elevator at the World Center in B Mumbai can hold up to... 
238 people at a time. That's wow, people. what's the weight limit on that? Hoover, can you make a get on the <laughs> uh, floor, please? <laughs> Everyone's got a different idea. The elevator measures 277 square feet and is the size of a studio apartment and weighs 16 tons. Ugh. The company said it was designed to cater to large wedding groups or high volumes of conference or ex exhibition visitors. It also had panoramic scenic views of the newly opened convention center and their gardens. I kind of, sort of, want to go to Mumbai. Your thoughts, Tom? Yeah, sure. It'd be great. I, if it's, uh, yeah, this elevator, a big this elevator looks something. like a big, it does look like a giant studio apartment. Huh. So. Um, because of its enormous size, the elevator is supported by 18 pulleys and nine <laughs> ropes using an innovative pulley beam system. You guys know that one of the documentaries I watched was about uh, uh, the <laughs> building of the elevator at the world's tallest building. It was way more complicated than building the building. How many, how many stories is this building? I think it's six. I'm not sure. Okay. It's not yet, but it's still... I mean, obviously, it has to stop at individual floors. That would just be f take forever to get 230 people off and only 100 of them want to get off at the second floor. It travels between five floors at a speed of three feet per second. Hmm. It's really a beautiful elevator. I'm sure it is. Uh, you can imagine the B.O. in that thing. <laughs> Why? Oh, yeah. Comic-Con level B.O., I'd say. Oh, because geeks stink. Is that right? Mm -hmm. ah. No, because you're going to get into someone like he's going to get in and, you know, suddenly a flatulence festival is going on in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> you're, well, your mind goes places you're trapped others in there. Oh, you, you never get into an elevator and the person before you is obviously just... Left a air biscuit for you, and then that they get out. Never oh, happened. No one no. does that. I like air biscuit. Nobody. That's a fun little treat for us. Yeah. The air biscuit. I never heard that one before. Oh, you've never heard that? No, never. Oh yeah. What did I hear? The a beige rocket. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, Gerard Butler was online explaining Scottish terms or whatever, and one of them was like a a, ba a beige rocket. A beige was rocket. that for a turd? That was a fart. It was a fart. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay. Beige. Yeah, that's unusual. That's sports. Talk so to it's, it sounds, it sounds, it sounds, <laughs> I'm tired. It sounds much classier. No. Well, thank really you very much. Wrap it up. Hey, Rosie, this is what you farted for. I don't think Willie's heard this. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Is that a fart song? Oh, yeah. It's a real good time there, Chad. Christy! <laughs> well, let's keep with the theme, kind of. A gastroenterologist on TikTok is going viral for a video explaining the reason why some people need to <clears throat> defecate after they, say, walk into a bookstore. <sighs> Dr. Sethi the so-called Mariko Aoki phenomenon, which was first identified in Japan in 1985, describes the urgent feeling of needing to poop after walking into a bookstore or coffee shop. He said some people even go to stores to trigger a bowel movement. Huh. Dr. Sethi said the phenomenon might be caused by a number of stimuli, such as the smell of books, hmm. coffee, smell of coffee, feeling relaxed while shopping, or a shopping-related anxiety. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't have it. I have it for number one. I have never heard of this ever. Every time, every time I go into the iced tea place I go to all the time, I have to pee. Every time. Well, I mean, that's because you just came from working out, right? Uh, maybe. But, I mean, I'll pee where I work out and then walk across the alley into that place and have to go again. I don't know what it is. Okay. Well, why are you walking across alleys? It's not that kind it's, of an it's, alley. It's a, it, you know it's a it building. Is. It's like an L shape. The, it's that, you know... But this is, I mean, this is a real thing. This is a doctor talking about... Yeah, it's a real thing. Hmm. I wonder if it's just bookstores. Is it also like like, like a, libraries or... Can you open up your Kindle? <laughs> well, Kindle doesn't have the smell of books, Tom. Don't be ridiculous. So it's not the books or the reading or the literary component It's the here. smell. Okay. Your thoughts, Chick? Is there a place I you ever walk into where I, you suddenly have to go? I don't. I, I, I no. No. One I, or two? No, you. you but you're. I up. don't like it when we go on vacation because I get out of rhythm. Yeah. Because sure. yeah. when we're on the air, I can't right carve out that time that I need to have a quality relaxing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I've I've got a. I don't of, understand people going in, in, in like in two seconds. It's no. You'll get this. I haven't been in here every morning in a long time. Yeah, yeah. This morning I had to do the movement before I came to work. A lot of struggle. Had to go for a walk around the house. Had to drink some water. Had to make things happen. That's right. And the library wasn't open yet. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> um, I for you, I've got a friend who's a computer guy, mm -hmm. and he and I are working on uh, what do you call those gizmos you put in your face so you can see with? 
Glasses? Uh, no, the other ones where there's like a oh, TV virtual screen. Reality? Oh, reality? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I'm calling it home field advantage. <laughs> oh. No matter where you are, you put these things on and you're at your home bathroom. That's not a bad idea. So if you're like driving through Iowa and you stop at some really nasty truck stop, Ugh. put these things on, all of a sudden everything's clean and nice. Take take them off you in the back paper. of a truck. You, you, you got paper. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, so, so you guys are laughing. One day. Yeah, no, I'm sure it might be already out there. We don't know. Yeah, that'll make some serious cash finally. Uh, right now, uh, I want to tell you, we got some cool stuff coming up, including um, uh, that that last story was about, uh, it was named after the woman, I guess, Mariko Aoki. We've got a beautiful name in the news, Mariska Hargitay, the beautiful actress. Yes. And a funny story about someone mistaking her for a real cop. And her mom is Jane Mansfield. She was and, beautiful. And uh, it's time to think about your mom because Mother's Day's coming up. And Aha. How about a, a pair of Raycon everyday earbuds for mom for Mother's Day? Great idea. Unbel uh, it, unique and wonderful because mom just wants to, that's right, tune out all the noise on Mother's Day. Kick her feet up and relax with Raycon's everyday earbuds. Seamless Bluetooth syncing, eight hours of playtime, 32 hours of battery life, and Raycon's optimized gel tips fit each and every ear ever made, no matter how grotesquely large your mother's ears might be. With additional features like earbud tap functions and noise isolation, and they'd really make a great Mother's Day gift. Plus, the way to play this is you buy a pair for your mom and buy a pair for yourself. And Raycon does offer easy 30-day returns, just in case. So... Go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today, and we've got a deal for you. Get 20% off your Raycon order, plus free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom, 20% off and free shipping. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. I don't have it in front of me. I got a letter from a guy saying, because I've been uh, also uh, promoting the Raycon regular headphones. Mm -hmm. Great for the kids if you're going on vacation. Get them to, you know, quiet down there in the back seat. Uh, that'd be a great Mother's Day gift. You get the kids some headphones, then you get mom a pair. Everybody's happy. Everybody's quiet, and you're blissfully driving, listening to whatever you want to listen to on your Raycon earbuds. You're welcome. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> uh, coming up, we have uh, gigantic reptiles, gigantic snakes, meth news, and something called the polycule, which is like a uh, orgy. Pokemon, right? Orgy, orgy. Uh, not a Pokemon, but a good one. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. All day, all night, all Bob and Tom. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven-baked cheese. It arrives pre-baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skill it, or air fry it. Check out their new oven-baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or any time. Excuse me, are, um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me is right here. I could easily be doing this. We, we don't need you, man. I, uh, look, there's only room for one of us. That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Ganja's in the air on 
every street at the gym in my church. It smells like weed. I went to Tacoma. There was a marijuana room. Sanibel and Captiva. Sanibel and Captiva. Smells like cannabis sativa. Smells like cannabis sativa. On the plane ride home, it reeks of weed. The TSA, they all agreed. My suitcase smells like stems and seeds everywhere I go. Smells like weed. My hair and my clothes smell like weed. Maybe I shouldn't smoke so much weed. <laughs> Exhibit Double D. <laughs> Bob, meet me in my chambers after court. I'd love to go through your briefs. Oh, and bring your handcuffs. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Judge Judy. It's a guilty pleasure. Available only on Bob and Tom Television. This court is adjourned. Now let's all go to my place for margaritas and skinny dipping. Bob. Catch Judge Judy only on the Bob and Tom Television Network. Hey, this is Henry Phillips, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Jimmy Schubert is our guest. Any uh, other interesting news headlines, Christy? The FBI has identified the source of the virus-like blaster infection on the Internet. The suspect, an 18-year-old who has not been identified but is expected to be arrested today. Now, can we execute 18-year-olds in our society? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, I'm there. I'm voting for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you can tell the kid's not getting laid. Any kid that's getting laid on a regular basis is not creating computer viruses. <laughs> How so, true. So it's basically, that's a sex education in high school. They, you know, all they talk about are diseases and things you can catch and the girls stop putting out and kids the hole up in the room and create a virus. He's going to be receiving a different kind of sex education, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I yeah his right. baseball hat and his uh, dirt yeah. button are going to be the same size once I get done with him. This kid's going to be able to do deep knee bends over a fire hydrant. Let's talk to our guest, Tom Foss. Now, uh, do you have any animals? Uh, I got a, two horses, about 15 chickens, dogs, cats. So you are in the country, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. gravel road, one way gravel road. Really? Do you eat the chickens? No, the eggs. Ah, my okay. wife said she'd never kill one of the chickens. Really? But she doesn't have any problems scrambling up the kids. <laughs> <Yeah. That's> sweet. <laughs> uh -huh. Bob and Tom, twenty four seven. Tom Show. Is it Friday? Yeah. Friday starts the weekend. Oh right? yeah, it does. Oh yeah, my book. yeah, it does. You ready for Friday, Tom? I know now Saturday and Sunday in your book are <laughs> brutal. I know that. A lot of stuff going on this weekend for you, I'm guessing. You got a lot going on? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Willie's, do Willie's doing a couple shows. Hey. Uh, he's in uh, Knob Town tonight Noble. at the Noble. Brick God. City. Oh, the Brick uh, the brick something. Brick the Brick Noblesville. In Noblesville. Brick, uh, the Brick House. What is it? Great club. Great yeah. plug. It is a great. It's at Willie.Griswold on Instagram. There's a link in the bio. It Thanks is a great club. And Willie's in Nashville with uh, Jeff Oskey tomorrow night. Nashville, Indiana. Story in. Come hang out. You guys are going to be a lot of fun. Bring uh, the Colin ghosts Unger. are there. The Do the go ghosts show up for your show? I don't want to talk about the ghosts. I don't like them. I don't think about them. <laughs> I'm very scared of them. And I don't don't really? mess with them. Yeah, off, oh, oh, off, hey! the, off the, There's Oske. Over here. Hey, 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 there. How's it going? <laughs> hey, is that one of my shirts? It is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Those shirts are so cool. Captain. Yeah, what? 
<laughs> Captain Newsman. That one looks very What, what do you got there on your tie? What is well, that? Well, uh, this was sent in from a listener. This uh, was from Jerry. Jerry reti- retired. He uh, wore this on tax day every year. It's a bunch of tax guys carrying little IRS briefcases. Hilarious. Aww. Yeah. So thanks, Jerry. I appreciate Aww. that. Our yeah. tax is funny. Oh. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, uh, yeah. we give you a lot of the news each week. We don't give you all the news, so I'm here to give you the news that we failed to mention. Now, here's Jeff Oskay with what you failed to mention news. Pew, 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 pew. Monday was tax day. Uh, what you failed to mention, or as stand-up comedians, musicians, and bands call it, time to lie about my mileage and merch sales day. <laughs> <laughs> what merch? Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, comedians don't file taxes. <laughs> uh, the only thing I hate most about uh, doing my uh, taxes is opening my W-2. Uh, what you failed to mention, every year it's the same thing. Where did all this money go? The only thing I have to show for my 2,300 hours of work this past year are two pair of pants and a Hulu subscription. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Hulu. 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 Uh, Tom, that's a... Uh, a uh, service where you watch movies and uh, old TV shows. Yes. Streaming, oh. streaming, streaming. I'll, I'll look into that. It's like a, a Netflix. <laughs> a, uh, a carpenter, to save time, had a ruler tattooed on his index finger. <laughs> what you failed to mention, uh, for sending D-pics, I have uh, objects in mirror are larger than they appear <laughs> uh, tattooed next to my stuff. Uh, the hardest part was it had to be tattooed backwards. <laughs> Though thinking about it now, it probably would have been less painful to just put that on the mirror. <laughs> uh, live and learn. Live and learn. <laughs> a uh, man faked his death to avoid paying 100000 in back child support. Haven't we all thought about that? Uh, what you failed to mention, I can only imagine his kid the next day at school. Uh, no, my daddy isn't really dead. He's just dead to me. <laughs> Oh. Uh, sometimes I forget it's 9 in the morning. Some of these jokes are more uh, 10 p.m. in the evening. <laughs> uh, I apologize. A couple found a cannonball from the 1800s in their front yard. Uh, what you failed to mention, you guys remember those gazing balls from the 70s and sure. what those meant? Mm-hmm. I yeah. wonder if a cannonball in your front yard was a... Uh, Civil War era swinger signal. Maybe. Like, bring, <laughs> come on, bring the whole troop. Oh, um, all right, maybe not. A, the whack-a-mole in, in, inventor is selling his estate for $5.9 million. What you failed to mention in the game's first incarnation, whack off a mole, <laughs> way less popular. <laughs> Again, probably more of a 10 p.m.er. <laughs> a man at his gym had his finger ripped off during a fight between him and another gym goer. <laughs> what you failed to mention, uh, that's one way to drop the weight. <laughs> I, personally, I just cut out carbs. That's how I talk. <laughs> We learned that video. Video games. <laughs> we learned that video games help alleviate work stress. Uh, what you failed to mention, especially you, if you are playing during office hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Trust me, Wordle and connections are the only thing that keep me from coming in there. And never mind. Uh, <laughs> John Wayne Bobbitt. You guys remember John sure. Wayne Bobbitt? He had his toes amputated. What you failed to mention, oh, why? Did he cheat on his podiatrist? <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. Oh, I get it. <laughs> and finally, tomorrow night uh, on 420, me and old Willie Griswold here hey. will be performing at the Story Inn in Nashville, Indiana. What you failed to mention, tickets are $20 at the door, showtime, 830. I'm Jeff Hoske, and this has been the news that we... What you failed to mention news, Woo! Jeff Oscar. Hey, I got an idea. I think I think uh, I love this uh, tie. That was a great report, Jeff. <laughs> I think if you have a tie you don't want, please send it to Jeff Oscar. I'll get this all set up so we, he can wear a new tie every week. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Hang on a second. He's been wearing a new tie. When you say, you? I'll get this all set up, what do you? What, what, what does that go to entail? Colin Spangle, having him do it. <laughs> What has Spangle got to do with this? I think you just have to just... check the mail for <laughs> Jeff's name, probably, yeah. in a normal fashion, right? Mm-hmm. I have no idea. However... 
You have no idea how a tie would get from point A to point right. B. Okay. I mean, you die a postal system of some way, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching them work. It's fun gotta, to watch them. He gotta, really is thinking gotta, about they it. they got to post the address. Well, Tom, they have tie couriers that you can get a tie across town All right. in half a day or less. Yes. Sounds like a good Absolutely. service. Did they pitch yeah. that on Shark Tank? They do, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> and I invested in that. That'd, that'd be a good thing. What about a tie courier? Brings you pad tie. Brings you pad signature. Oh, the wrong tie. Yeah. Man, I love pad tie. Yeah. Ew. Yum, yum. Well, thanks. Now I got to have Now I got to have pad thai for lunch. <laughs> yeah, okay. thanks. Delicious. Okay, okay, good. Do you uh, do chicken, tofu? What do you go with? Shrimp pad thai. No. Yes. No. Oh, you're wrong. Wrong. <laughs> chicken and shrimp. In the same... Pad thai. Whatever, oh. chunkles. Just pick one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's now time for a palate cleanser, oh. uh, uh, ladies huh? and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Huh? You think so? What? Huh? Absolutely. Yeah, when you hear the sound, you'll know what it means. Huh? Oh, yeah. Sexy man with a deep voice. Ace Cosby, here he is with his joke of the day. Have you guys heard about the uh, blind Cyclops brothers? What? No. <laughs> Neither I. Neither that I. That was Ace Cosby's joke Neither of the have. day. Neither have I. I. Yes, he is. No, I don't think, I don't think his putting have it. I think putting have in there would make it clunky. Yeah. I think yeah. I think neither I. I think neither, neither I. I. Uh, I think neither of I. Neither have yeah, I. Yeah, it took me a while to get it, so hence the uh, yeah. lateness on the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's called a delay, lad. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, no, it's called a delay. Yeah, That's yeah, what it is. yeah. Maybe that was uh, as as uh, Mr. Oski would call it. Maybe that was more of a 9.30, 10 o'clock <laughs> night joke. That's right. Yeah, we got a time zone problem. It's a with that joke. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ace. Yeah. Uh, now we return to Christy Lee at the Bob and Tom News Desk. Filming on an episode of Law and Order SVU was briefly put on hold. After a lost child mistook actress Mariska Har Hargitay for a real police officer. A witness told Poli uh, People magazine the little girl had been separated from her mom in the Ann Loftus playground in Manhattan's Fort Tryon Park and approached Miss Hargitay for help. Production was halted for about 20 minutes while she helped the girl find her mom and console them both. <laughs> There's, there's a picture with the mom showing up. She's got a corn on the stick. Corn on a stick? Yes. She oh. left her kid to get corn on a <laughs> yes. stick? Well, it's corn on the stick's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's a sweet story. Yeah. But she was a cop. Huh? What happened? They, were you not listening to a word uh, I no, said? No, not a they word. Were, they were right shooting on location. <laughs> For okay, SVU. Well, hang on, what, what is it? SVU. Okay. Yeah. Right. That's in New York City. Right? Law and order. Yeah. yeah. That's a great car. Yeah. 25 years that show's been on. Oh, yeah. So I've, this little kid thought. I haven't seen one episode. Mariska Hargit. I have not ever Law seen an episode order. of it. It used to be great. Ever. Oh, used it to used be, to be great. Well, wait a minute. He watches the golden whatever, or old, young, bachelor, <laughs> dating. Let's just have sex have for the cameras. Mariska Hargitay is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah she's she very is. Yes. You, if, if she were so the little kid thought she was really a police officer. Yeah, yeah and lost her and mom. And then her mom showed up with a eating a, a ear of corn. <laughs> yes. Okay. Probably happened to Telly Savalas back in the day, you know? Probably happened to people thought people, he was right? really a cop. Yeah. Get this brat away from me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't help you. I'm an actor. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't you speed up. through red light? a lot more often if you thought you were going to get pulled over by Mariska Hargitay? Um, maybe. Hmm. Think she'd dig the chickster? I, I, can't, I, I can't imagine why not. Oh, you were hitting on that early this morning. No, no, that was last hour. This is a different, it's a whole oh. different scam. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right, well, thank you very much. Yep. That's happened in a much more serious manner, though, right? What do you mean? We, uh, we had one a few years ago where they thought they were cops and it was uh, like a serious... This they were uniformed cops at some, shooting some TV show. That sounds right. And yeah. they thought they thought they were real cops, and there was actual gunplay oh, about geez. to take place. Yeah, I'll have to dig it up. But yeah, that I know that's happened. But now in Chicago, they shoot Chicago Fire, Chicago PZ, but all the, those shows. Every time I go there, they're shooting it somewhere on the streets. Hmm. So, so you know, you can see how it would happen. But typically, they've got them all roped off, and it's pretty obvious. Right. Lots of cameras, but... All the big lights, that's a big giveaway. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, when you're a little kid, you're not going to know. No, oh, of course not. She's just trying to get help, and so they had a happy ending. Mm -hmm. Could have ended very badly. Well, let's not talk about that. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Let's move forward here. An Indiana woman is in custody after allegedly calling 911 to report a bad batch of meth. According to a probable cause affidavit, the 34-year-old woman, Sarah Harris made the two open line calls to the Bedford Police Emergency Number, prompting an officer to visit her home during their conversation. The woman told the police captain that her meth was, quote, not what it was supposed to be, adding that it felt 
different on her skin and her nostrils when she snorted it. Hmm. She declared that she wanted the narcotics to be tested and wanted to, quote, turn the person in who provided her with the drugs. She was charged with meth possession. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. I heard she gave the meth a bad Yelp review. <laughs> also, I... We've heard that about marijuana. Like if somebody stole yeah. a pot or whatever when that was illegal, mm -hmm. I guess. Well, so now we're moving on to meth. Yeah. Huh? All right. But I, I, I assume the, uh, the lesson here is when you're really high, you don't necessarily think things all the way through. But I don't know much about meth. Is, is meth like pizza even... Even bad pizza is pretty good. Even <laughs> I know nothing even, about Even it. bad meth is okay. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I do know that U.S. Customs officers in California... By the way, I, have you seen the mugshot of her? Uh-uh. Funny enough, it looks like she likes her meth with extra cheese pizza. <laughs> Maybe double uh, stuffed. She's a, <laughs> she a big gal? She's not overweight. Yeah. Oh, oh, what? God, God. Oh, you know, that's the oh, worst. Oh, that's pork, how terrible. Pork sausage. <laughs> <laughs> in California, customs officer sees 25 packages of meth concealed in a cooler full of fish. A 34-year-old man at the Calexio West Port of Entry was referred for an examination when scans found irregularities in the ice chest in his vehicle's trunk. When a CBP K9 team alerted to the presence of drugs, officers discovered and removed a total of 25 packages of methamphetamine weighing 47 pounds, and the driver was taken into custody. They're making this a TV show. They are. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking bass. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's oh fish. My fish. There's, there's fish in the meth. I, I actually, remember I told you, I actually found the sound of the uh, customs officials opening up the cooler full of meth and fish. Really? You did? Yeah, yeah this, is, this is actually okay. what happened when they opened it up. Is that a Billy Bass? Billy Bass. Bass. Oh, that's, that's Billy Bass. Oh. Billy Bass. Remember when those things came out? I on were meth. everywhere. What year was that when they oh, started? A while man, ago. 2002. I, don't know. I was eight or nine. I remember that very well. Really? Because you could push it, but yep. there was no way to turn it off. So it would sing for 30 seconds. Uh, and then your older brother is playing video games. You hit it, and then he hits you. Wasn't it motion detected? So if you'd walk by a... so yep. it, it would that, the, the, the higher end ones. And okay. then the big awesome. payoff was when the, the head swung, swung toward... Yeah. Yes. Going out front, man, that was fun. Uh, Big Mouth Billy Bass, animatronic singing prop, uh, invented by Jemmy, G-E-M-M-Y Industries, December 16th, 1980, uh, 1998. Ah. Hmm. What a classic. Sold beginning January 1st, 1999. Oh, they just missed that Christmas season. Yeah. Uh, I, have the, uh, I have the Christmas one. Oh, with the... Uh, the with fish the, has the Santa cap on? The Santa hat. Hilarious. You yeah. still have it. Same it's song. in my office. Oh. Is there a chance that somebody out there goes, <laughs> you know, this Y2K, don't get those big bully basses. They're, the, the computers on there are going to blow up. It's oh, gonna, yeah. It ain't going to quit singing. Oh, you no, know, no, he's listening to you. Billy Bass is listening <laughs> to everything you're doing. You know he is. Uh, Billy, <laughs> Bass, Billy Bass is a vaccine, vaccine man. <laughs> He's gonna. <laughs> He's a vaccine man. He's gonna vaccine you, and they'll be following you. You know. Uh, um, uh, Speaking of fish, they're doing the Sphere in Las Vegas this weekend. Did you? Know? The, I wish I could go to one of those shows. Yeah, yeah, and Trey Anastasio said that you know they're they never do the same show twice. Yeah, every show different, every show in different theme, huge and, props. It's and gonna they're be gonna incredible. Yeah. They're they're streaming them. If, oh, if, they are. If you're a fish, fish is streaming. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not mean. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it to be a pun. Good I thought. Thank you. Okay, apparently uh, there's some uh, guy online that has uh, synchronized 75 Big Mouth Billy Basses singing the BG Stand Alive. I've seen that. I've uh -huh. seen the video. Uh, you have. Yes, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing, Tom says. We played it in the air. I don't remember anything about what you're talking about. Am I right about. here, Jason? Remember that? Yeah, yeah, we did. Okay. That's so cool. I, I can't imagine how in any I way wonder what that the would next, be uh, uh, That's going to have to come back in a while. I wonder what the next level of the Billy Bass will be. Oh, well, now they've got the... Be the a dolphin? The dead Billy Bass. Look at that. Ooh. He's just bones. No. He's fish bones. One bites the dust. How about that? That's funny. Huh? That's very How good. funny is that? Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the Billy Bass. Yeah. I can okay. tell. Oh, give me the, give me the uh, teaser, Christy. What's going on? Um, coming up, we have a snake longer than a school bus. Snake! Too long. Uh, yeah, we have... How are sex toys tested? Have you ever wondered? Well, We're going to take a look at that. Hmm. And, um... 
I don't think I can say this word, Tom. But um, what does it start, start it out. Take your time. It starts with gang. Oh, I, I, I think I know <laughs> oh. oh, a real yeah. bang up time, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. yeah. Oh, I know what story. That we is. have that coming. Yeah. Up okay. As well. Okay. It's it's a kind of a group grope. Is that better? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's better. Hey, okay. let me tell you about Simply Safe, the design it yourself, do it yourself home security system. The days are getting longer, and chances are you're out of your house more. What does that say? Well, yeah, you're just asking for it. That's why you need Simply Safe. Home security, the only one that uh, I recommend, we recommend here at the Bob and Tom Show. I found this about five, six years ago, designed my own home security system. I could check in on my smartphone, various cameras around the compound. Simply Safe has sensors to detect break ins, fires, floods, and more indoor and outdoor high def cameras to keep watch over your property day and night. Uh, and backed by 24-7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. Simply Safe professional monitoring agents help stop crime in real time by talking to intruders through the wireless indoor camera. Police are on their way, and they are being recorded while they're committing a crime. No contract and a 60-day money-back guarantee with Simply Safe. You could try it risk-free, and if you don't love it, send the system back for a full refund. And we want you to have it, too. What am I talking about? Peace of mind, get 20% off any new Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. Just visit simplysafetom.com. That's simplysafetom.com. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Read the reviews, people love them. We get love letters about Simply Safe. Thank you very much. Once again, coming up, gigantic snakes and more. This is the Bob and Tom Show. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Text us at 888 262 8661. Hey, hi, it's Tom from the Bob and Tom Show. Miss some of the show? Become a Bob and Tom VIP and subscribe to the audio and video podcasts. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. Charles was a young prince. He never thought he'd be. King Finally Charles. ruling England at the age of 73. King Charles. The queen was his mama. Lucky Chuck. She used the Oxford comma. Born in the royal palace. Hands never callous. King Chuck. Now that his mama's gone, I hope he doesn't fail. King what exactly Chuck. did he do as the fancy Prince of Wales? King Chuck. His teeth and ears look big and funny. Bucky Chuck. Will they fit on stamps and money? Born in the royal palace, hands never callous. King Chuck. 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 The queen, she had her corgis. Chuck. Chuck. Prince Andrew had his orgy. Chuck, Chuck. He's wild, that brother, Andy. King Chuck, Chuck. On Epstein Island, Duke got Randy. Prince Harry moved from good out to Hollywood. King Chuck. Charles loves the polo ponies and dressing up for ceremonies. He wears a kilt, please don't stare. He's not wearing underwear. Finally gets to rule, cause he's got the family jewel. King Chuck. He married Diana, they had a castle and a villa. But all the time he dreamed about the homely one Camilla. King Chuck. Couldn't wait to get his hands on. Horny Chuck. Said he'd like to be her tampon. Born in the royal palace, has the royal phallus. He's so old it won't be long, we'll have to write another song. King Will. Oh, uh, ow. Oh, back. <laughs> Oh, well, hey, Josh. What's wrong? My back is sore. My legs. What's in your shoe? Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, look. Nothing. Ah, uh, Joshua, you have to have proper support. Huh. Orange insoles. Orange insoles, you say? Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah I see them. Look at this. They're great. Yeah. Orange insoles. I'll give them a shot. Great. All see right. you later, buddy. Give it a... Oh.
Yippee! I can mow and dance while I do it. Ha! No more pain. Thank you, orange insoles. <gasps> oh, Josh, Josh, did you get orange insoles? Jessica, I sure did. Thanks to orange insoles, I feel great. Terrific. <laughs> See you a... later. <laughs> orange insoles. Feel better, do more. To get a job done, you need the right shoe. Michael Jordan doesn't step on the court without his Nike Air Jordans. And Jose Impalero doesn't <laughs> step into the streets of Pamplona without his Air Toro. <laughs> Air Toro. Once you strap on these bright red steer hides of potters, you'll be ready to run for your life. Yes, hello, this is Jose Impalero. You know, when I put on my Air Toros, I feel like I can... People would walk over you to get this shoe. Air Toro. Hemingway may have worn khakis, but he never got to wear Air Toros. Plenty of other famous people love their Air Toros. People like Gore Vidal, Bruce Hornsby, Red Skelton, and the Chicago Bulls. So, hoof it on over to your favorite shoe store, Air Toro. <laughs> Air Toro, just do it. Hey, this is Frank Caliendo, and you're listening to Bob and Tom Radio. Which is why Tom likes it. <laughs> hey, you know, some people just can't grow up. <laughs> I bought some Twinkies. I bought some Ding Dongs. I bought some hose and some powdered sugar donuts. I poured some sugar in my Pepsi. I had seven cups of coffee with some fudge. I ate a <laughs> Snickers bar. I ate a Almond Joy. I poured some sugar on a Milky Way and ate it. And now I'm driving on the freeway. And if you cut me off, I think I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, yeah, kill you, kill you. I pulled a booger <laughs> out of my nose. I poured some sugar on the booger and I ate it. Yeah! I'm eating sugar boogers. I'm eating sugar boogers. Yeah, yeah, sugar, kill you. Sugar's good. Yeah, beep. <laughs> <laughs> he beeped there at the end because that was an uh, answering machine. Answering was machine message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the sign said, anybody caught trespassing <laughs> will be shot on sight. So I jumped over the fence and yelled at the house, hey, what gives me? <laughs> <laughs> Essential morning radio all day and all night. Some light bug, some light shreds, up for me. It's Bob and Tom. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Pat's here, and Willie's in for Josh Arnold. Hey, buddy. There's uh, Christy Lee, and Ace Cosby, and hey. Chick. Here's Tom. Have we heard from Josh yet? Do we know what he's doing? I was just getting ready to say we should call Josh, have his phone ring, scare Why? all the fish away. Why? Are but there if, are there if rules? You call about... him. He's going to talk to us. Who needs that? <laughs> is there like a is an no. etiquette about using a phone while fishing? Well, you want to be quiet. You don't want to scare the That's fish. That's a good question. I was fishing with that buddy of mine in uh, Ontario. In a foreign country. What? Yes, Canada. And I was out on the... And we were listening to a... I had a portable speaker, a battery-powered speaker, and my uh, my phone, and we were listening to music, and the phone rang. And it was, um, you know, somebody I wanted to talk to. There it was. I got a phone call in the middle of the lake in a foreign country. So you're country. telling me that we, have, minute, it, we have the technology now in our culture... Hang on. Yes. <laughs> ...to call someone in a foreign country. Yep. And you're not even attached to a landline? No, no, exactly. No power, no electricity, just me and this other guy in a boat. Wow. 
I know. Mm. <laughs> it's hard to believe, hard to wrap your Did brain the fish like it. your music? Catch anything? Uh, yeah, there was their slimy. Th- I forget what their fish are called up there, but man, their pike <laughs> was a pike, a musky. I think that, I think you got a pike. No, they, they had teeth, t- long and thin. Pike. No, it was a pike. It was the, a pike. The, the, the muscalunge. The yeah. muscalunge sounds like a like a dirty move from a guy that smells bad. No one calls <laughs> yeah. it muscalunge. He gave me the muscalunge. What's a muscalunge? You know, uh, political musk. experts agree. That if Edmund Muskie had ran under Muscalunge, he would have won oh, absolutely. Pres- the presidency. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. I saw that, too. Yep. I saw the same article. Thank you. Too. New Yorker. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. They nailed it. They nailed it. had a really it. good cartoon uh-huh. right okay. before the yeah. article started. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you get bit by a pike? Oh, I've never worked so hard in my life. <laughs> so <laughs> Anyway. Time for that bonus Ace Cosby joke? I think it I is. I think it is. Hit the uh, button. Okay, here we go. Now, this may be called a mulligan by some. <laughs> <laughs> you, gave, you gave Willa the high eyebrows over there. I didn't do anything. The hey, I'm wrong. talking about my life. Okay. <laughs> Growing up. Growing up. We were, we were pretty poor. Uh, uh, how uh, poor were you? I, I had to use a hand-me-down calculator. Had no multiplication thing on there. Uh-huh. Times were hard. <laughs> that was the <laughs> I like that. Look at time. I don't know about mul- the multiplication <laughs> thing. I think uh, it got I, 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 I nailed it. it function a, function a, could, a is a word that you could have used. Check this yeah. out. Too wordy. Ace, it's tough because calculator jokes can be divisive. Play it. <laughs> play, play, play it, baby. Play the damn out. There you go. Play it, play it baby. It. It's oh, a oh, that is that's nice. Folks. That is nice. Let's get out of town. Okay. Uh, Where were you when you realized that... Uh, this will be lost on the youngster, but you could uh, spell boobies on your calculator. Oh, no, buddy, I was well into the boobies. <laughs> you turn really? it up down. Oh, That's yeah. old school. I was doing, yeah, the old 5318008. Yes, Flip it sir. Upside down, make your pal. Upside laugh. down, it's boobies. <laughs> That's hilarious. Do you remember this? You can no? do boobies, you can do boobs, you can do boobs singular. And didn't we have a guy that had that as a vanity plate? Boobies? And then they finally figured out what it was. And oh, they the ups- oh, oh, it eight, was upside down? 8008 zero, zero, yeah. uh, one, three. Yeah, what does that tell oh, you? Yeah, yeah. Now, how do you feel in general about vanity plates, Christy? If you, I have one. So, what are you going to do? I gonna... mean, no, no. I mean, if, if he, if, 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 if... Oh, here's the thing. I was going to get a vanity plate. One of the first things right? I got here, Tom and I were having it when he talked to me off the air. Uh-huh. Uh We were ha- having it, and he, I, I go, I can't. I'm going to get a vanity plate. Sure. He goes, Oh, really? You like your car getting keyed? <laughs> <laughs> and I never thought of it. And I go, Yeah, you're exactly yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I you know, never had me. my car keyed because I. Have a I mean, it, 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 when you, I know that you're married now, but when you when you were single, if, oh, you, if you met some guy, you, you know, and I know that you've dated a guy pr- primarily based on his vehicle. And um, you're walking. You're walking out to his very nice vehicle, either uh, antique or regular. Red Mercedes. And uh, you know he had like a, you know Hunter Fortuna license plate. <laughs> <laughs> How about just tuna? Although I like Hunter Fortuna. Yeah, How about tuna Hunter? You remember back in the '80s, there was a dating um, site where you could go put somebody's license plate in or what what you don't remember that no Uh-oh. and it would tell you who they were no. yeah hey, hey Pat. That. remember that morning when ace admitted to a felony on the air remember that man that was fun that was wasn't a, it yeah, they took him away and you know what that monday he wasn't on the air anymore. that was weird the cops what happened came to him? in the afternoon yeah, go to these things work themselves out yeah they do they yeah, really go do. to the swap and sock over there it's a lot of fun what? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, well, he shouldn't. You joined a uh, uh, dating, it wasn't a website yet, uh, uh-huh. thing, uh-huh. and you got a sticker for your car, and uh, if somebody saw you, in the Oh, like you would put a sticker and it would invite other people in this. You're not you know, going to strangers. JK, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I, oh, was, I, I was under the impression that you saw a cute girl and then you wrote down her license plate <laughs> and you went to the DMV and go, you need to give me your name <laughs> right now. You got to reverse this. I you can't see. do that. Do you ever oh, see yeah. vanity plates and you, I, to this day, don't know what they are? They're like, what the hell was that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I saw one yesterday. I'm telling you, what? I don't get it. Well, I don't either. A lot of them I don't get. Do you remember it? I'm no, sorry, and I, I wouldn't if I, I wouldn't say it on the air. No, I saw it, one the other day. It was a Purdue plate, and then it said B B L R up. And I was like, what? Oh, yeah. And it's Boiler Up. Boiler but it up. took me for, I was like, BL Rupee? Who is that? Who's BL Rupp? I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. I, I love the ones, um, and this is regional too, but the Pacers plates have like the logo of the P, you know, with the basketball in it. Uh-huh. So then it just said Acer. So oh, that's cool. It was really cool. You know, if you get the Pacer plate, they will not let you get Enos as your plate. They will not let you put it on there. I wonder if they'd know. No, they know. They, they get mad at you and okay. they really get your tricks out of here. 
don't try to confuse yeah. us with yeah. the word yeah. game. Yeah. I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to tell you where I went to college or why they wouldn't give me ox sucker. <laughs> <laughs> You know, oh, it's, it's, New York it's amazing how how upset we are about certain situations, yeah. and, and it, it starts to fade, it's, and then another one rears its ugly head to replace it. It's both deeply offensive and pretentious, which oh, should yeah. be the name of his book, by yeah. the way. Yeah, isn't that great? Offensive and pretentious. pretentious. Yeah, there you go. Well, hopefully you'll see my vanity plate sometime again, but... Can you well, give what happened to your car? No, my little car is... storage. Yeah, it's oh, in storage, and it needs, storage. it needs some work. And you couldn't pay. Put, it in, the work on it. To put it in the shoebox? Yeah. Yeah. I had a car yeah. repossessed. It's okay. It's a, it's a yeah, sad Yeah, we've all situation. been there, Christy. Yeah. 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 They come so to your door. You level? know what? I, I had some dumbass put my license plate up online one time. What? And have single girls call what? me. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's How about that? It turns out it's a felony. Yeah. I have a Nissan Figaro. Yeah, Mesa, and that's like a, that's the one that has right hand drive, right? Mm -hmm. And it and my plate says a Figaro because people always that's, ask. And what's so your and the, it, but it looks like a toy car. Yeah, it yeah. does. Very small. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. And what's wrong? With it? I didn't know. It was, it was not, I, I have a know. new exhaust system that I need be, to be have put on. Do they make those in America? <laughs> no, I had to get it out of the UK actually. Really? Yes. You have to take a pipe cleaner and put it in so tiny. <laughs> 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 you really need to take care of your car. Yeah, That's right. Thanks. This is for Mace. How, what are, what are we yeah, celebrating? What are we celebrating the birthday of is your rear window being made of plastic? I am at sure least. it has we been. Have to take a break. It it's has been, been a year. at least <laughs> a year. Absolutely been a year. Okay, um, and it has shows no signs of being <laughs> repaired. <laughs> uh, coming up, scuba diving bumblebees. Um, I, I just to see him a bumblebee in a mask. I want to see that. Maybe I didn't print that one. We have a giant snake. A really cool Star Trek story. Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about next. If you're a big fan, very important Star Trek story coming up. This is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com slash contest dash rules. Or just scroll down to the bottom of the page and see contest rules. This is the Bob and Tom Show. You think you lost money in investing? My whole people lost money in investing. Bernie Madoff came along and took, oh, all, wow. took set us back ten thousand years. I hate that guy so much. I hate Bernie Madoff so much. Not and not for what he did, because I don't care about the rich. I know uh -huh. they lose their money. But no, for how he looked physically. Did he have to look so Jewish while he was doing that? He's already the image of a Jew that's in every redneck's paranoid mind's eye. Just some crook-nosed Jew on top of a pile of gold coins, swimming in it like Scrooge McDuck. Like, ah, I'm gonna take the ten thousand money. Ah. Like, I always trip out when I see somebody that so fully embodies a stereotype like Bernie Madoff did. Like, when you see a nerd who's actually wearing a pocket protector, like, they don't even make pocket protectors anymore. <laughs> Believe me, I know. That guy had to go out and hand mold the plastic <laughs> resin that fit into his nerdy little pocket. Or when you're driving in traffic and somebody cuts you off and you look into the car and it is, in fact, an Asian woman, you're like, are you kidding me? Are you serious? Are you seriously going to be Asian right now? There are people watching you. Mm -hmm. Have a little bit of self-respect and don't be Asian. Like when I'm walking along and I see a quarter on the ground, I don't pick it up. It kills me not to. <laughs> but I don't do it because there's people watching. Bro. There are people watching. Yes. You don't yeah. want to reinforce the stereotype. No. That's correct. Oh, you gotta, oh, oh, keep man. it real. Uh, 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 Moshe Kasher is our guest. I live, uh, I live in L.A. now. I live in, uh, sort of, I live near Hollywood. I live across the street from a 99 cent store because uh. comedy makes dreams come true. Uh, yes. Yeah, they have a, they now have a, they now sell a 99 cent pregnancy test. Have you seen that? No. no. Yeah. How bad does one's life have to be? Like how far down the socioeconomic <laughs> ladder do you need to flop before the 99 cent pregnancy test seems like a viable health option? <laughs> the 99 cent pregnancy test when you kind of have to know. Uh. <laughs> so I bought one. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh. Why not? Just to see what would happen. I peed on the little stick. And? Turns out... I have hepatitis C. <laughs> <laughs> I caught it from Who the knew? test. <laughs> wow, cool. Tiki Barber here. Remember the days when I was a running back in the NFL? Well, if you're on your feet all day like I was, you get the struggle. The secret is orange insoles. Their insoles are like magic for your feet and body. They'll help you kick hip pain, sore feet, and lower back discomfort to the sidelines. Feel better, do more with orange insoles. 
Hey, it's Josh Arnold with a food recommendation for you. Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese, their famous oven baked cheese. It arrives pre baked. You just heat it and eat it, grill it, skillet, or air fry it. Check out their new oven baked cheese flavor, jalapeno. Ooey, gooey, spicy cheese. It's sure to tickle your taste buds with real jalapeno flavor and heat. Perfect for game day parties or Anytime. Excuse me. Are um, are you serious with it? I mean, why are you doing this? Me, uh, the real me, is right here. I could easily be doing this. We we don't need you, man. I uh, look. There's only room for one of us. <laughs> That's Gardner's Wisconsin Cheese Jalapeno Flavored Oven Baked Cheese. It's now available in Gardner's Oven Baked Bundle Package, so try all the great flavors. Receive free cold pack shipping and free cheese curds when you spend $59 or more at GardnersWisconsinCheese.com. Click the link below and tell them your pal Josh, me the real Josh, from the Bob and Tom Show sent you. team that launched the first, the first low salt, low sugar peanut butter into the category. It was called Simply Jif. It was targeted towards diabetics. I wanted to call it type two peanut goo. But... <laughs> yeah, of course you don't feel good, Greg. You ate an entire rotisserie chicken at 1130 at night. You shoved the whole thing in your fat face in six minutes, Greg. I think he ate the rubber band that holds a legs together. I mean, come on. My birth certificate? That document is 54 years old. I also don't have the Declaration of Independence. Because I don't know if you've ever seen an organic peanut butter kid go off the deep end. <laughs> it is not pretty. OK, these kids? They spend 18 years eating it, then they go off to college. They have one bite of a GIF sandwich. Six weeks later, they're passed out on a park bench with nutter butters all over their face. It's like a bloomin' onion. <laughs> the Cubador, now available at the Bob and Tom Personal Care Outlet Mall. Warning, not intended for beards, backs, or buttocks. Ask for the Pubador by name. Pubador. <laughs> Essential morning radio. All day and all night. Yeah, this is Bob and Tom Radio. Bob radio. Well, actually, I'm doing a CNN interview at 10, or else I'd go with him. Do Larry King. First time, I'm very Larry. excited. Yeah, I just want him to go, Saskatchewan, hello! <laughs> Can you turn down the electric blanket? <laughs> I can't turn off the fan above the oven. <laughs> I go, you know what I'm gonna do, Larry? We're gonna try to get your shoulders a little higher. You can do that. <laughs> Why are my suspenders so tight? Because <laughs> they don't go around your Larry, that's why they go up. See, if you let them go, the shoulders will do that. You won't look like a, you know, you look like a vulture in heat. You know, Muncie, hello! Question for the skinhead! Hi, this is Paul. And this is Storm. And we're Paul and Storm. And you're... Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Top Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. And Pat Godwin in the performance room. Hey, check. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. In for Josh Arnold, who hey, uh, has moved away. There's Ace Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back, what is it, Tuesday? Is that right? 
I wait with bated and breath. Uh -huh. Bated? As in ba fishing? Because he's fishing? Is that your way of doing ba bated breath jokes? Yes, it is. Um, I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom. He's in a fishing tournament. It's very yeah. exciting. I what, hope that he said that he's going he fishing wins? with yeah. his brothers, and instead he's going to go watch fish at the Sphere in Vegas. And oh, that'd be cool. Take too many mushrooms and freak out, come back a hippie. That'd be fun for me. I would love to go to that show. Really? Well, really. What's stopping you? Um... Uh, Got to be here, but uh, yeah, they're, they're, the fish is doing four nights at the Sphere, every show different. Please uh, tell me you just said the fish. You said the fish. <laughs> he did. Please tell me, as in Country Joe and the Fish, and the great song, uh, the feeling like I'm fixing to die rag or the fish cheer. Oh, go you know how the fish that. cheer oh. goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Tom. Give me an F. The fish cheer goes. I'd Give me an F. Not, I'd rather F. not participate. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. You're Fine. welcome. Go ahead. See, this is a Woodstock. He's going to spill fish. F I S. Well, well, that's the that's the studio album version. The live album on Woodstock. The, the, <laughs> the, the letter after F is a U. Um, no, ah. P H I S H fish. Those are going to be great shows at the Sphere. At some point, I want to go see a show there. Some friends of mine have been, and apparently, it's it can be kind of overwhelming. I went. Uh, me and Noah went. You did? Uh, yeah, when we were in Vegas, it was cool. We just watched. We didn't go see a show. U two was there at the time. They play a movie. Uh, we watched the movie. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. We were kind of joking around like, hey, we should, you know, smoke pot or get some mushrooms. And as soon as I walked in, I was like, this would be way too overwhelming. You do not need any enhancing things. You're not watching fish in a field and you need a little bit of help to have a good time. It is completely sensory overload. Oh, really? It is insane. You don't need anything to help you out along the way. So huh. it's like you're inside a big globe, right? It's, it's insane. And I will say, though, before the movie that started, it's the biggest screen in the world, and no one's looking at it because they're all looking at their cell phones. Oh. It is. Uh. It, there was a guy playing Candy Crush behind me, and you could just no. hear the... Bing! It, was, it was absolutely insane. Oh. oh but but that's the, amazing. These shows are going to be cool. They're only doing four. Right. They you, started you, last night, I believe. YouTube, YouTube did what forty or something. <sighs> uh, so it'll be it'll be cool. So YouTube's what thirty six times better than Fish? Is that Not at all. Saying? No, okay. they they did more or less the same show every night. I did. Okay. Uh, Fish is trying to do something different every evening, like they always do. Should yeah. be it should be cool. Should be a good show. Now we have Christy Lee right over there. Yeah, the long lost first model of the USS Enterprise has been found nearly five decades after it went missing. The model, which was used in the opening credits of the original Star Trek television series, disappeared sometime in the 70s. Caused quite a stir when it popped up on eBay. Yeah, I well. remember all the news breaks. Yeah, yeah, leading <laughs> the sellers to take down the listing and having it authenticated by Heritage Auctions. The auction house recently facilitated the model's return to creator Gene Roddenberry's son, Eugene Rod Roddenberry, hmm. the CEO of Roddenberry Entertainment. And he said... That, quote, this is going to get restored. We're working on ways to get it out to the public, and they hope that it will land in a museum somewhere. Eugene Roddenberry quipped that the discoveries cleared up a longstanding rumor that it was destroyed because, as a young boy, he had thrown it into the pool. <laughs> I had that model when I was a kid. Did you? Mm -hmm. Kind of cool. I was kind of a fun story. Uh, this is it wow, kind of you always like bad TV. Even when you were a kid. You like, didn't Star like Star Trek? Trek? Wow, no. Mm -mm. What? Do you ever sit down and watch it for uh, production value and uh, acting oh, ability? Back in the well, day. Well, good yeah. Lord, what a mess that show is. <laughs> I think it's about... I, it's, back in the day, it was It's, it's about lofty ideas, Chick, things you don't is understand. Right? Oh, okay, that's right. Uh, now, is this because I'm too lazy to understand it or no, my no. brain power? I'm no, just it's stupid. a combination of stupidity okay. and ignorance. Thank you, Tom. Um, oh. Paper mache rocks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's paint her green. That it, means she's it, not from Earth. Uh, Admittedly, there's a... Okay. But this is interesting to me that this kind of reminds me of when Paul McCartney got his bass guitar back recently. Yeah? There's kind of this sort of gray area. They're not really telling you what happened. Someone, so where this, do you this, think the Enterprise was? This, well, I don't know, but it showed up on eBay. Someone trying to sell it. Who was that someone? How did they get it? They're not really saying it. It's a documentary. There you go. That'll be a documentary No, but I mean, someday. it was, you know, and God knows what condition this thing's in. Could be full of DNA from some there super, super fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was waiting for, Pat. Do you know the actors when wavelength. the actors on Star Trek before the door would open, they had to make shh with that with their noise with their mouth? Because <laughs> they didn't have sound effects then. They, not, they did it with their mouth. Oh, God. It's true. <laughs>
It is not true. <laughs> <laughs> so that was your audition. Yeah. Shatner, Shatner, sit down. For, for, for God's sake, Shatner, you're not that big of a star. You no. have to make the shoe oh, sound. Don't, don't ask. <laughs> and then the don't fade, tell Bill he's not the biggest star. They, with the fade, they go pew, 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 pew. That's right. They do it right That's there on camera. That's where it came from. <laughs> You can take Computer. a joy out of anything, can't you? Communicator. You well, do you know the, that robot? What's the name? Uh, what's the show called? I'm not. I'm not going to get this right. Lost in Space. Yes. Robot. That, that, robot. that had that robot. Uh, what yeah. was that? Another robot Emmy show? winner. <laughs> yeah, I, that was also terrible. I was not a fan of Lost in Space. Wow. That I robot. Lost in that space. robot. Oh, made. the bird, the pain. Yeah. Oh, the pain. <laughs> oh, the pain. <laughs> the robot with those wavy arms. Yes. They found that. It's now getting restored. The arms to that thing were actually um, being used as a dryer vent <laughs> at a house in uh, southern Indiana. That's uh, no, yes, it's that right. Oh. Yeah, that robot. That, that, that really robot showed up in a bunch of different bad sci-fi movies. Yeah, he was shows. in something else before Lost in Space. Well, you know, they didn't have all the great props that they have now. You know. Oh, that thing's got to be that. You now, someone will know what that robot really is. That probably is worth a fortune. The original of that? Well, Jake wouldn't have it. I wonder if there was a man in there doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Doing, the, yeah, the, uh, probably. Had to be, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, at least half a man. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they, they, cut, a, they, they cut a guy in half. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine it was a little person. <laughs> Might have been a little person with sticks. Well, he was a pretty big robot, wasn't he? Like he was, a man well, size. Yeah, yeah. man yes, size. But if you look at him from Really cheesy, though. <laughs> Even as a kid, I was looking at the going, this is awful. And that, and that guy that you just who's imitated. the older guy? That the air? lonely oh. bachelor guy. Who is he? No, was... the pain, the pain. Hey, the pain. Dr. Smith. Dr. Oh, Smith. the pain. Yeah, I just hated that guy. Oh, did you? Oh. Ooh. And Billy Mummy was in a yeah. rock and roll band. <laughs> oh, he's an excellent guitar player. <laughs> or a more obscure rock and roll oh, news. God. Okay, I'm sorry. Take it, Billy. Was, that the, was the guy in Lost in Space Mr. Hand in Fast Times at Ridgemont yes. High? Mm -hmm. No. No, that was no. my favorite no, Martian. That was my favorite Martian was oh, Ray okay. Walston. Ray did Walston, you like of course. my favorite Martian? No. I did. No. Ray Walston, of course, uh, famous for his uh, role on Broadway in South Pacific. <laughs> yeah, well, that's actually <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was... Ray Walston. Uh, very... He had the coconut bra. Oh. Was he, was... Did he? Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> You know, you never watched South Pacific. <laughs> What's that? happy? Talk <laughs> Can we last... talk about anything this century? Oh, what are the, some anything of the, one of the at all. greatest musicals? The last all. five minutes, you guys talked about thirty TV shows. I don't yeah. know. Okay, I, sure. I have no idea what's going yeah, on. What's so the worst sure. TV show you watched as a kid? <laughs> Growing up, watched as a kid. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I remember when you're a kid, you don't even know it's bad TV. That's what I'm saying. But Chick mm -hmm. knew when he was a kid. I used to love watching. Like... I I loved Mr. Terrific on CBS, and he wasn't. Uh, that wasn't a very good show. Mr. Terrific. Uh, I don't even remember that show. Yep, I know. See, that's how cool and awful it was. Like, what were your favorite shows? Well, no, what I was weird. I grew up around you before you got into your kids' interests. Like, now you're into, like, Taylor Swift and stuff. But when I was a kid, I was, like, nine watching 24. Uh, I was seven. I was really into Survivor. Okay. I was sort of a weird... I had interest based on what you guys liked around here. I gotcha. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, Survivor. The early years. You really liked that show. And then be I can't... I don't have time to... God, I did, remember I, the first couple of years. What an awful show! We all were like on board watching that. No, I think it was cool. Oh, Rupert, love that guy. Mm -hmm. Love the show. Man, um, um, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to think with a. I kind of meant ch with Chick though. I knew that was bad TV even then. That's interesting. I uh, guess Chick I and I are both highly critical, enough. especially of things that the other likes. Yeah, that is tough Chick for will us point to, It's very to tough for Chick to like anything I think is good. Yeah. Oh. I, w I was watching Manhunt, but now I've let it slide because you're watching it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't. I can't. And it's, it's a B minus. Mr. Terrific, uh, sitcom on CBS, Mondays at 8 o'clock in 1967. Hmm. It starred Stephen, Sh Stephen Strimple as Stanley Beamish, Mr. Terrific. John MacGyver was in it, Alan Young, Dick Godier, Paul Freese, the amazing, uh, the amazing voice talent Paul Freese. Ellen Corby from uh, the Waltons. Grandma, Grandma oh, Walton was in it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. oh yeah. Huh. Mr. Terrific. I know. I know, I know why. I did didn't Mr. Know Terrific it. fly? Oh, exactly. what did he, he did. He did. He did it all. Oh. We didn't get CBS where I was in the mountains as a kid. We you got didn't two get channels. CBS. No, nope. he received it, but he just didn't, didn't understand get, I didn't it. Get it. <laughs> didn't get it. Wow, He's got PBS, the Pocono Yeah, we got that. Po yeah, PBS, NBC, and ABC. That's it. Actually, do you remember the? That's the uh, prison guard in Midnight Express <sighs> that beat Billy Davis up. Remember this? I remember uh, the movie. Uh, barely. A, a big guy with dark hair. He was in Mr. Terrific. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the show. So. Paul Smith. Did Mr. Terrific last more than one season? No. God, no. Oh. No. 
I see. Huh. I see. Well, um, now, what's coming up in the news, Christy? Uh, well, we were talking about getting bored, <laughs> because I am. Uh, uh, the average American kid, how long does it take for them to get bored these days? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, also, we I bet have, it's not a lot. We also have a new Scrabble game, for those of you who like the game Scrabble. Love it. And then, of course, we are going to jump up to adult stuff and how are sex toys tested before they reach the market. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. A couple of guesses on that one. Yeah. Uh, well, Centrifuge things. Up the kazoo. Up the old <laughs> kazoo. Sort of uh, wear and tear and suction. <laughs> and, uh, pieces of it flying off. This one's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, it's, they, they need it. <laughs> it works. Hey, okay, fellas. Okay. Uh, that got that got a 700 on a tachometer. <laughs> that'll, that'll beat it. Uh, right now, I want to I want to help you out here. You're saying, Tom, how can you help me out with Mother's Day? Well, I can do. I can make this real easy for you. Our buddy Steven Singer has got the answers, a whole bunch of them. I'm going to focus on a couple right now. Mother's Day is coming. It's a Sunday this year, right, Christy? Yes, May 12th. Okay, thank you very much. That's just around the corner. Uh, you got a lot of moms in your life, of course. Those moms deserve something great for Mother's Day. You can give them some roses, of course. They're going to wilt. But how about this? How about a rose dipped in 24-karat gold? And uh, the one this season is called the red wine because added to that 24-karat gold, a beautiful, deep, rich, burgundy color. This rose, by the way, comes in a beautiful gift box. And it's shipped to you, uh, free shipping, I should point out, with the Steven Singer guarantee. Check it out. It's called the red wine. This year, it's uh, uh, that's this season's version of the rose. And uh, Stephen has a, a bunch of different colors, actually. You can check them all out at IHateStevenSinger.com. I mentioned free shipping. That's important. Also, they've got a lot more than those roses. Christy, do you have your bracelet on right now? I do not. It's I work what? out today, so I can't uh, wear it. Okay, sorry. What's it called? It's called the At Last Bracelet. It's gorgeous. It has diamonds. It's a vintage look. You know something? Could we Easy rename to it? Wear. Beautiful, beautiful bracelet. My love is coming along. What's your favorite? What's, what's your favorite? What's your favorite song you're listening to right now, Chip? Uh, oh gosh, Just, um, well, I'm still in the old Steely Dan. I'm, I'm which, 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 which Steely Dan song? Midnight Cruiser. That's great. I'm not sure they maybe Stevens here come up with a midnight cruiser bracelet, but that sounds like something you'd get arrested wearing. So we'll uh, we'll go. <laughs> well, he was in the bus station. And you says, know, some will say we are our own worst enemy. <laughs> That's what some will say. It's lucky, some lucky, would say that. It's lucky Stevens, my friend, and he has a nice dog named Buddy. Uh, I hate Stevensinger.com. This is a great Mother's Day gift. Of course, I'm talking about the red wine rose and those beautiful bracelets. The At Last Bracelet. I hate stevensinger.com. That's where you find it. Coming up, sex toy testing. Mm -hmm. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Yes. Hey, did you enjoy those videos played in that break? Check out the Bob and Tom YouTube playlist for more great stuff. I, I'm actually in love right now. My boyfriend and I are walking around town in a two-headed Snuggie. <laughs> um, it's oh, getting pretty intense. That's nice. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad, you know, because I, I have a hard time listening to the, the love song, you know, love songs with Delilah. Where are you calling from tonight? Uh, Where are you? What's going on with you tonight? What's your name? <laughs> Requests and dedications. <laughs> Hi, Amy, calling in from Tustin, Arizona. What's going on with you tonight? <laughs> you and Matt broke up. That's hard. What do you want to say to Matt tonight? <laughs> we'll play that for you. That's Penny Lover by Lionel Richie. Penny Lover. Oh, uh, uh, you know what? I've had enough. That's, I, that's it. I, I'm in love with I her. remember that very well. Maria, that is... Uh, for, those that, <laughs> for those that get that... Yes. Oh, and for those that don't, you should listen to the Delilah just so you do. Just that yeah. one just time. So you get oh, the joke. Intense. They should have those songs. Aren't they're not good for people's mental health? Like they should have little footnotes at the end of every verse. You know, I would cross an ocean for you if that ocean led to an English-speaking country. Because at this point in my life, it'd be really difficult to learn a second language fluently. Not to mention the anti-American sentiment. We'd have to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> You know? Wow, you are quite the literalist, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Baby, I would die for you if I were already dying and you just needed my giblets. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Bamford is our guest. She's not kidding. She 
Maria, were you a temp? Did you ever I was a temp for a long time, about seven years. And uh, I always like how they make every job sound like, you know, it, it, you know, so crazy, you know, um, we we do things a little differently around here. <laughs> We're a bit of a nut house. Hold on your hat. It's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> but it never is. No. <laughs> <laughs> I train people in at offices, you know, so I was like, oh, the fax machine's a little tricky. Yeah, you got to dial nine to get out. No, a lot of people try to use the fax machine. They go, oh, it's not working. I said, did you dial nine? <laughs> you know, oh, uh, what's a week, Rajiv? No, every day we get bagels in the kitchen. There was we Rajiv made some mini muffins. That's on a Monday. So guess what? Guess what that's called? Mini muffin Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I wish offices would be as crazy as they always promise. You know, yeah. you get trained mm-hmm. in. Be like, uh, take me out of your pocket. Hi, I'm Zakynthos, the talking rabbit. I'm in charge of the vol- volcano. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, you'll be working for Thor. He's uh, always scrabbling through the recycling looking for quartz. He's a dwarf. <laughs> Nude. <laughs> Anywho, lunch is from 12 to 1, but there is a wrinkle in time, so just try to get back any time for the quickening. <laughs> your flippers, your barbecue tongs. If you have any questions, go, uh, go back through the fifth dimension. I'll be sitting there on my lily pad. <laughs> my only question is, when do I start? Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. Good job. <laughs> Wow. Man. I love that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Dial nine for the fax machine. Remember that. Everybody's crazy. No, they're not. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maria Bamford is with us. Wow, that's brilliant. That's very, very funny. Do you ever work in an office, Tom? Mm. Uh, I don't think you have, have you? Worked in a restaurant. No. No. It's an interesting experience. Bob, Mm. did you ever work in an office? Oh, yeah. I did a little I have issues with authority, you might have. I know. That's why I was asking. Mm -hmm. You know what struck me is it's, it's so quiet. What, in an in office? office? Yes. Well, yeah. Well, you're still, yes. that's if, if people are actually doing work. Yeah. And I had to work at a bank once when I was at Temp, and mm. I was stunned at how quiet it was. Mm-hmm. And people whisper, th- you know, yeah, you know what the saddest place in the world is when you're the temp and it's time for office birthdays and you didn't get the email because you're not on the system yet. Mm. Right. And you hear the voice of your coworkers rise from the conference room. Happy birthday. Everybody who had their uh, birthday in the office this month. Mm-hmm. If you cup your curves mug against the conference room <laughs> door, you can almost hear the happy scraping of plastic fork against paper plate. Mm. And later sometimes, guys, somebody comes by your cube and says, oh, there's cake left did the temp get any cake what's her name again mm-hmm. oh uh yeah. hey my uh, <laughs> yeah. if you want any cake there's cake left nice. mm-hmm. cake temp want cake oh, yeah they all want sad. cake <laughs> Joining us in the studio, comedian Larry Reeb. Now, well, Larry, you are from Chicago. Mm-hmm. You, you just got a great Chicago yeah. accent. Well, it's a, originally I'm from a little town, Dwight, Illinois. It's a farm town. Uh-huh. There's a mental institution and a women's prison there. Really? And my parents met. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I live in Chicago. Are you married? Are you I've been married 10 years. Oh, how's really? it going? Good, I think us guys need good women, don't you? Women oh, yeah. keep us in line. Sure. Oh, yeah. That's why most axe murderers are single. <laughs> <laughs> they were married, their wife wouldn't put up with that. Put that axe down. You're not chopping anybody. You have to take the garbage out. <laughs> take the ski mask off. It's summer, you idiot. And Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Like <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. Hi, this is Nick. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. It's been a Friday, hasn't it? My goodness. I'm very good. Very excited. Yes. Ready for the weekend. Um, we have a lot going on here still. Lots of review, I think. Reviewing. Some great stuff in the news. All right. Yeah. We got uh, new shoes from uh, Caitlin Clark coming. New shoes for the breakdancing fans that are going to watch the Olympics. Oh, boy. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe turning I may be turning the corner on this. I may be, you may, you, you're you going to look forward to breakdancing? I, 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 I give really? up. I might as well look forward to it. I don't think it. you can uh, make that kind of a no. I'm sure you don't do that. Discus and classic track and field events. Sure, they're great. Like but d- disco, <laughs> disco, <laughs> break dancing, disco. Yeah. Maybe maybe they should do disco, the disco, jazzlin. Uh, yeah, uh, but I, if they're going to bring in break dancing, they have to bring in jazz or size. You sure never know. know. You may enjoy it. Okay, 
Uh, we'll open see. mind. Go in with right. an open mind. Well, that's hard for me to do. I know. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're honest. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I'm, I'm really interested in, uh, you said they're going to announce Caitlin Clark as a, a shooter. Yeah, it's, uh, I swear I read somewhere it was a done deal already, a $20 million endorsement from Nike for, for Caitlin. But I cannot find it verified today, so maybe. Maybe you dropped it. Any minute, I guess. I don't know. What? Oh. Maybe you dreamt it. It could have. I okay. Know. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, we have uh, uh, Christy Lee at the news desk. Willie G sitting in for Josh, who's fishing. Hey. Uh, Patty G, another song coming out of you? Whatever you need, my friend. Okay. <laughs> we uh, need a song. We we'll need a song about Tom and I talked yeah. about three things. I could. Uh... How about some Neil Diamond? Oh, I love Neil Diamond. <laughs> how about some of that? Uh, All right. Uh, how about a little Neil Diamond? <laughs> Neil Diamond for dandruff shampoo. Here we go. All right. All right. Well, you know something? I well, <laughs> we were on a roll, chick. <laughs> we were. We were, we were having right fun. There, right and right what right. happened? Two I notes out. Stepped on it. Go ahead, Neil Diamond for what? Dandruff shampoo. Here's Neil. Oh, I didn't know this was. <laughs> Sell some blue. Everybody uses it. Hey, hey, hey now. Selson. <laughs> So Selson Blue. Okay, as opposed to songs. Perhaps song you blue. were right to interrupt. <laughs> no, I, perhaps you were. I, I came in this morning and uh, I have been uh, extremely annoyed by uh, the. Uh, I know road construction is very important. I get it. And instead of just driving along and going, oh, they're working on this now, you take it personally. Well, they've, and are, they've effectively closed a quarter of our and, town. Uh, I think and, it's higher. And you, I, if you, you think, <laughs> sit and think about it, I think it's closer you, you to can't, 80%. You can't get anywhere near where I live. You can't be either. And to access my oh, house, well. uh, the two main roads, oh. one of them's been closed, then they closed the other. It's just driving me crazy. That uh, There's no one sitting down and going, we really can't close everything at the same time. Well, I come in today, and now Pat's losing his mind. It's crazy. Because they've closed are. the biggest intersection where he lives, so you can't get anywhere. Have they asked you uh, yet about uh, hotel accommodations? Okay. So I can what stay? No, there? because if they uh, eventually, I read that uh, they they have to pay a hotel room for you if you can't be, get back to your house. That's what really? I yeah. yeah, absolutely. They're, they're, no, they're so gonna, you might be in line for something. You're gonna, like have, to, you're gonna have to walk everywhere. But uh, you have a now. The, now you're pissed about too much construction yeah. at the same time. This is a protest song. Okay, it's Barry. a protest. Oh. Okay, good. Oh, Barry <laughs> McGuire tribute. Oh, okay. here we go. They're setting up cones. <laughs> Lanes there are blocking. Tomorrow your speed. Uh, they'll be clocking. You carpool to work and it's your week for driving. If they stop traffic now, who knows when you're arriving? When rush hour's over, you'll feel like imbibing when they tell you to slow down and move over and pull over again dead end. <laughs> I gotta believe we're on the eve of construction. <laughs> That's right. We're not moving and I'm prairie dogging. Seats will be soiled. Streets aren't clogging. My girlfriend's pissed and soon she'll be scowling if I don't pull over soon. The air I'm fouling when they tell you to slow down and move over and pull over again, dead end. Uh, oh, you gotta believe we're on the eve of construction. Oh, thank you very much. Well, that's a song you'd never hear, the real, you never hear Eve of Destruction anymore. For good it, it was, it, because no, no, it's it, uh, it was, it was of a moment. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, that, that was like the number seconds. one song in the country for a while there. That can't be. No. Right. Yeah, it was huge. That no. can't be right. That Barry, cannot be Barry right. Barry McGuire. Yeah, yeah, just, not it, number it, one. I think so. About that. I barely remember it. Yeah, me too. I barely uh, remember it. I have no oh, idea. Yeah, what it well, is. we were young. You know what we've done? What we've done? Our, our mistake. We should have just said, "Yeah, you're right." Because mm-hmm. now, guess He's what? Gonna look it up. We're going to talk about it for another research. five minutes. <laughs> and now, stand by yeah. for the biography Eve of destruction. Yeah. Jason's yeah. waiting, waving at Jason's you. Jason's number going one crazy. song. Number one song in the universe. Oh, uh, universe. Uh, it's on your what? bar. What? What was it? Number twelve. It's on your bar. It's on your bar. Okay. Oh, you want to hear a little bit of it? Okay. No.
training and yeah. nothing to hum. Oh, okay. Yeah. What if you didn't have a right uh, speaker? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah that early stereo, always bad. You got to um, fight for your right first. It speaker. was number one in the cash book chart. <laughs> Cash, cash box, book. cash box, sorry. cash box, and uh, what about the real chart? <laughs> just all the one I have in front of me. Can't find Billboard, huh? It was doesn't, on. It, it was on. Doesn't uh, participate in your argument, huh? Uh, 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 supported, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I've been there. I okay. understand what you're doing. It's fine. A woman who is a sex toy tester has revealed what it's like to sample the devices before okay. they hit the market. All right, Pat, you're you're going. You're out, to, you're, you're out on a date. So. Uh, what, what do you do for a living? Phyllis, what do, what do you do for a living? Oh, a uh, sex toy tester. Really? You're a That's sex right. toy tester. We're going to need some vodka over here. <laughs> Drinks. Miss yeah. Venus O'Hara. That's her name. And her name's Venus. Uh, told El Pais. Pais? That means the Pais. P-A-I-S. Okay. That she currently has eight Hundred erotic toys at her home. I hope she, hope she has some shelves. <laughs> That's too many. That's way too many. She said it's impossible. I don't care if you have 800 prayer cards. That's too many. <laughs> A lot of nightstands. It's impossible to say which one is my favorite. You can't miss the wand and the rabbit. What's the wand? The wand is like a back massager that like folks typically use, but then the, the gals oh. will take it and they use it. Oh, ah. the gals will take it. Yeah. Mm. And the rabbit, is that the one that has the, do the ears go in different orify? <laughs> <laughs> no? no? Typically, okay. it's the um, shaft, if you will, and that has a little that comes out rabbit the, uh, like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. so you're hanging so out on the outside out while at, playing Outside on the, the inside, uh, yeah. Or the button. And this lady, you say she's a, she tests... I assume this is not an office job. Is this like a work from home deal? I'm hoping. I, I wouldn't no, think it I'm would sure be a she goes into situation. an office. Yes. If they're testing, God. do <laughs> not use the dishwasher in the break room at yeah. that office. It's yeah. not getting anything it's clean. Not. Ms. O'Hara. <laughs> don't don't talk to me till I've had my first dildo. <laughs> Ms. O'Hara also divulged that she does not. Um, always feel like trying out the devices, but says you have to pay the bills. Boy, oh, boy. After 10 years of professionally testing sex toys, she knows which products to say no to. Quote, I don't... What? I don't try anal toys, and I don't like realistic dildos at all. Huh. I also don't accept things that take up a lot of space. Right now, there are many companies trying to send me dolls or torsos, but where do I put them? Yeah. Yeah. Who has a good place for a torso at their house? <laughs> Woodshed? A torso. Closet? 800. I think, That's... I think the way you do it is like you own it and you just put it in your living room and you're like, yeah, that's that's Daisy. That's the, the that's the lifeless doll that I come home to oh. when we hang out. You have to just... Well, yeah, I guess. You have to put it right in the middle and Like not Lars be and the real girl. Exactly. Just you can't be embarrassed it. by it. Yeah. It has to be your thing. Ugh. Okay. Well, some of them, you don't have a shelf space. Some of them, you can just stick them right on the wall. And that's kind of a cool thing. <laughs> you can hang your hats off it, put a scarf around it. Oh, yeah. Who, work. who thought of that? You know, the suction cup must have thrust the Deldo <laughs> image <laughs> way <laughs> into the future. The industry? Right? Yeah. That's the workhorse of the industry, the suction cups. Oh, so how does that work exactly? Well, well, well yeah. there's a suction cup on the base, and then yeah. you can oh, sit oh, oh, on I see. it okay. or you can, uh, lean suction, up against it. Or... Yeah, the suction cup, you can flail with your arms. Uh -huh. You don't have to worry about... Uh, you can find a bald yeah. guy, you can put it on the paint. <laughs> right. And oh. You can kind of go to work. On the shower wall. So your hand's free. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And she doesn't like the ones that have the... Uh, Realistic veins. Real. That's interesting, too. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Venus. Members of a 20-person so-called polycule have divulged the details on how they navigate their relationships. This is a group of 20 people who this apparently... Is, this is a great idea. <laughs> ...have sex with each other uh -huh. and still are married and, yeah. The polyamorous group from the Boston area spoke with the New York Times saying their <laughs> polycule is like a weird family and works like a complex kinship network works. So the word just is a little, polycule? Yeah, just a little kinkier. A person named Ashley told the Times that a bunch of couples meet in the summer of 2020. Do it in a Boston accent. That'll make it much less attractive. I can't do a Boston. Ashley's a Southern Well, uh, we uh, park the uh, car uh, with the dildos and then... Uh, Ashley's a Southern name. You got to go Southern. She said a bunch of couples met in the summer of 2020, but has since transformed into an evolving organism that looks entirely different from everyone's perspective. Oh, sounds like a lot of beans. One person named Katie highlighted that everyone in the group approaches ethical non-monogamy differently 
but everyone is so deeply in love with each other, whether or not it's romantic love. Katie continued, there's a lot of boundary setting in the polycule. It ranges from people who really don't have rules to those with very defined rules, and they keep track of each other in group chats. Oh, God, this must, well, be, like you know, a, must be like a bad podcast. The word polycule is a synthesis of polyamory, engaging in multiple romantic relationships, and, and molecule. Oh, sorry. <laughs> molecule? I don't understand that part, but... Um, I don't think anyone on earth uses the word polycule except these 20 people. No, I, I think other people use it making fun of these 20. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have a name for okay. it. Okay, this article this says, I'm quoting here so that I forgive me if you don't like these, these words. A group of lovers based outside of Boston consists of couples and individuals, which includes heteroflexible men, queer women, and non-binary individuals. Heteroflexible... It means you're straight, but you can do the splits. I think. <laughs> I'm not sure though. I'm not totally straight, but bendy. At the same time. <laughs> you're, you're good at naked twister. <laughs> what a what a weird huh. word. Huh. I assume that just means that you're straight, but sometimes you swing the other way. Yeah. I don't know though. Oh, I okay. don't know. All right. Well, have have fun. Let them do their thing. They're not bothering nobody. Yeah, Twenty people. They always. No one can agree to do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> they can't decide where to go out for dinner. Ugh. I can really decide with two. Yeah. Uh, now, um, well, thank you very much, Christy. Hey, there's a new survey out there that shows how quickly kids get bored. The poll of 2,000 U.S. parents commissioned by the Elmer's Glue Company found that the average American kid gets bored in how many minutes? Go, Pat. Three seconds at my <laughs> I house. Said minutes. Uh, seven, seven minutes. I'm going to go with four. Four, seven, ten. But Tom does because I, I know the answer. And Thirty-three it's... minutes. Wow. Really? That's still a pretty short attention span. Forty percent of parents said they struggle to find ideas to keep their kids entertained. They also found that the average kid spends 13 hours a week in front of a screen. Parents report their kids seem happier, more satisfied, and less bored when they are crafting instead of using tech devices. Hmm. That's, I mean, that's great to know. Sure. Um, you, okay, go outside. Play. Throw a ball around. Have some fun. Right. Hmm. Uh, this, this makes sense to me. I, even that, What this says is that about every 30 minutes, if you're teaching class, take a break. And they're talking think, when, would people get things done? Sure. Okay. You don't think so? I don't know. I haven't been in a classroom in a long time. Well, I'm, 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 the kids have more to do. This is why I have to have recess and go outside. And I never got bored in high school. I would just, whenever I get bored, I just pull my phone out, take a look at that thing. <laughs> and then the teacher would do her That's thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. I finish playing Angry Birds, and yeah. I'm right back locked in. What's a cosine? Right back locked I have in no for idea what a cosine is. 25 minutes. <laughs> cosine. Yeah, I never could figure that cosine thing out either. I I, cosine, yeah. what's that? I have to call my dad yeah, for an apartment? Uh, I have yeah. no idea. I can't get a car without <laughs> a cosine. <laughs> And speaking of kids and games, a new version of Scrabble aims to make the word-building game more accessible. Mattel has unveiled a new version of the word game Scrabble, team-oriented and purportedly less intimidating. Called Scrabble Together, it features a double-sided board that promises quicker play and designed to be accessible for anyone who finds word games intimidating. The update marks the first significant change to Scrabble's board in more than 75 years. Hmm. I'm a big fan of the original Scrabble. Do you have the turntable that's burnt, uh, the board that spins? Yep. Mm -hmm. Ah, it's great. It's um, a lot of fun. It's a great game. And mm -hmm. I, I, of course, I've told this. I, we modified the game. Yeah. We have, if you've ever played, you, you uh, if you want to make it extra fun, any word that can't be said on radio or television is double word score automatically. So, what if it's a double word score and you land on a triple word thing? And it's six times. And it's yeah, six times. Uh, it's, it's massive points. Wow. Yeah. So if you can, and if you can land in that one corner where you've got those, oh, it's yeah. huge. Mm -hmm. it oh. Makes it for makes. I it can't even add what Q U I M would be on a Scrabble board under these rules. But so you can say that on the radio. It would have to be. Oh, um, oh, oh, you would. Okay. All right. I think so. Can you say that on the radio? Well, yeah, maybe. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, Once. <laughs> Let's not try. <laughs> you know it. something, Pat. <laughs> That's the most profound thing you've ever said. Just, uh, oh, I, you well. can't say that on the air? Oh, you can. Once. Yeah. Okay, very good. Very Scientists good. say they've identified an ancient giant snake in India nope. that may have been longer than a school bus. I'm out. Fossils found near a coal mine revealed that the massive reptile stretched up to 50 feet and weighed a ton. The newly discovered behemoth dubbed Vasuki Indicus... 
Okay. <laughs> Christy, that's double points in Scrabble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Elise. I-N-D-I-C-U-S. Yeah, well, yes. it's either Indicus or Indicus. It, we, no, either way you slice it, we're in trouble. Yeah, it lived 47 million years ago, and researchers named the species after the mythical snake King Vasuki, who wraps around the neck of the Hindu deity Shiva. The largest living snake today is Asia's reticulated python. Everybody knows that mm -hmm. at 33 feet. A 50-foot snake. Yeah, weighing more than a ton. Your favorite thing, Tom. I wonder what it ate. <laughs> Whatever it wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you can still see if, if you know caveman walking around. He sees the fifty foot snake. His buddy goes, "Hey, man, it's not venomous. Don't worry. <laughs> that'd be that'd be Josh." <laughs> so, caveman in your scenario, uh huh, used the term "Hey, man." <laughs> Is that what I just heard? <laughs> yes, and as we know, cavemen all spoke English the way God hey, intended. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. hey, it's not venomous. <laughs> hey, man, you gonna paint in the wall today? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, what do you hey, man. Hey. That damn kid's drawn all over the cave wall yesterday. Did you see that? Jeez. Hey, have you seen the fire next door? <laughs> what? Oh, What's yeah. that? Yeah. I got a new hey. I got a new grip for Grogette's hair. <laughs> Grogette. I, 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 I tie it in a knot. Yeah. Then I drag her around. Atta boy. And oh. you're the one who had problems with manhunt. With the language in that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> yes, I did. What did what did Pat Oswalt say that you did not like? What was it? I got the intel. I got on, the intel. Yeah. No one said that in 1865. I don't. I, I don't find it that objectionable to r oh, ruin the series. There's for more than that. There's more coming up. <laughs> I mean, it would be like saying, "Well, the president's dead. I'll take some pictures on my iPhone and send it to the press." I, well, know. I don't think they'd say the, word, the iPhone. But we just whip out a whip out a. <laughs> Whip out, a, pad. whip out a Blackberry. <laughs> this explains why I don't watch anything Tom does. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, the Bob and Tom Show sponsored right now by our friends at BetterHelp. BetterHelp is all about helping you access therapy in a, in a much easier, more elegant way. And therapy, of course, a great way to recharge, a great way to get your uh, social sweet spot all lined up. And uh, you can find all the information at betterhelp.com slash BT Show. How does it work? Well, you'll uh, sort of go through this uh, little questionnaire. And you'll be matched with one of 35,000 licensed therapists. And you can change therapists at any time, by the way, no extra, no extra fee. But the beauty of BetterHelp, of course, is uh, easier access because it's all done online, as is the questionnaire you fill out. So uh, you can do it uh, like it's a phone call. You can do it like it's a Zoom with a camera on. You can do it texting back and forth. It's about what works for you, where it works for you, and when it works for you. That really is the beauty of this, the elegance of uh, convenience and privacy. See what I'm talking about by visiting BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. The slash BT Show part will give you 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash BT Show. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. This portion of the Bob and Tom Show brought to you by BetterHelp. Coming up, we're going to help you get educated. That's right. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. The show is also out there for you. Lion. Mm -hmm. I've always said now, I don't. A lion? I would love. Now I, I know this is crazy <laughs> that I thought about this. What now? I would never go into the wilderness and get an, and, and have a lion because they they belong. I, right. You know, That's where they belong. But if somebody like uh, maybe they worked at the zoo and there was a lion and 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 it had to live in a house, but it had to be sedated all the time. And I How could about squeeze raised it? from a cub. I raised from a cub. I yes. know you. And I would love a lion. Why? Just because they're so cute, I would just bite them all the time. <laughs> Their face. That They'll, little they bite back. Think believe it or not. Yeah. You know, and their dogs, teeth are bigger. Mm -hmm. Nick has raised a very interesting point. What? Which is uh, the essence of it, I think you said. Just because you like something, you don't have to have it. Well, I've always been, you know, somewhat uh, controlled by my finances. So mm. there's a lot of stuff that even if I did want, I couldn't have. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I, I literally, and I'm, uh, I I have panic attacks. Well, I'll, I'll I'll get done with the workout, and I go, I want to go get one of those really nice, like, $6 smoothies. And I'll think about it for, like, uh, can I, uh, do I, should I treat myself? <laughs> it, uh, am I worth yes, it? Yes, I You're it. worth six bucks. You know what yeah. says, says something? You think, I think in my head I'm probably the only one doing this. Right. I was at, um, uh, 
a, 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 a place. Whole Foods, Whole Foods. Mm-hmm. And they had these like expensive lemonades. I don't know how to explain it, but mm-hmm. the tops were the type where it had a metal top and you would pull it open and the rubber, it would be a rubber seal mm-hmm. like the old yeah. days. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and it was sure. like a little bit extra, but I had friends coming in from out of town and I know this is crazy. I thought this, I thought it'll look good in the refrigerator, you know, and I, bought, <laughs> I was at Whole Foods and I bought milk in the glass. I wanted it to look, yeah. you know, I wanted it to look like my home, it was a home, Holy. you know, like my mom's house. Right. Yeah. So I walked over and I went to buy it. It was two bucks more than regular lemonade. Mm-hmm. Then I walked away. And then mm-hmm. I went back. I went, what are you doing? <laughs> you are a full grown adult <laughs> and over two dollars get the god dang <laughs> lemonade. <laughs> well, it worked. Because I'm not kidding you. Because But the outcome is how I reacted. My sister-in-law was there and she mm-hmm. opened the refrigerator. And you know, I go over, all my brothers are married. Their refrigerators are filled with. So I, she opens up. She goes, oh, fancy lemonade. I was like, oh yeah, you know. I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't act like, oh, I acted like, yeah, that's the type I buy. <laughs> totally <laughs> worth it. Yeah. Totally oh, worth it. Totally worth it. Yeah. As I only half it's there, I left the other half in the Rolls and it's spoiled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having the Rolls Royce fix. Well, I, that's I, why I'm I, driving this. I would have got the milk in the jug, but my lion ate it. So. <laughs> yeah, my lion likes it out of the glass. <laughs> right. Yeah. My, we, we all do weird. Hi, this is Chick McGee from the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for watching this morning's show. To listen, just go to bobandtom.com and check out the list for a station near you or stream the online radio station on our website and the Bob and Tom app. The Bob and Tom Show, on air, on app, and on demand. I want to ask about this. You, these are your... Adopted uh, Adopted parents. Adopted parents. Are, That's okay. right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm adopted. Mm-hmm. I was actually left in a basket on the, the stoop of a fire station. Hmm. And had uh-huh. I been a Dalmatian, they would have kept me. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> damn your luck. Huh? Yeah, damn my luck. No. But I you lo- were, you were, you're, that's nice, though. You were, you were adopted, and you're, you have a good relationship with your adopted. I love being adopted. Uh, mm-hmm. But people say things to me. I, I'm with my dad. A guy comes up to me and goes, you have your father's eyes. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't even have his address. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I think he lives near a fire station. Somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, it, I, I really, I, lo- I feel blessed to be adopted, uh, but I'm curious about my culture, my heritage. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of think I'm a light-skinned black man. Uh, really? Ba- really? Based Very on light. What? Because I'm big. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, oh, and, uh-huh. uh, oh, I got you. Okay. okay. Uh, banana. Uh, people, exactly. <laughs> banana, That's banana. why it's a fun word. <laughs> people ask, are you English, you're German, you're French? I don't know. I'm adopted. All I know about my culture is they give away their children. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how happy I am to finally meet you. Right, right. Uh, What do you do, Jerry? Uh, Well, I own my own consulting business and... Ah, uh, consulting, eh? (laughs) And when did you lose your Amway dealership, Jerry? Huh? (laughs) Jeez, what a bitch. She's the bitchlerette. (laughs) She's single, pissed off, and is looking for money. Lots of money. Hi, I'm Linda. I'm Phil. Yeah, did you forget something? No, I don't think so. Any gift? Gift? I I didn't know that we were... Mm, (laughs) Bye-bye. Loser. (laughs) Wow. Tune in to Bob and Tom TV and see why she's called the bitch Lorette. She's on the prowl and she's got... Shut your (laughs) hole and bring on the rich numbers. Uh, On Bob and Tom TV. (laughs) Well, there you go. There's a show I'd watch. Yeah. Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. If you want to turn your daddy parts orange, eat some Cheetos and watch some porn. Bob and Tom Radio, 24-7. <laughs> There's a lady in town. She's an Orthodox Jew. And she needs to buy bread that is unleavened. <laughs> but it's late. And she knows that the stores are all closed. <laughs> and she really needs to make a sandwich. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. 
And she's buying bread at seven eleven. <laughs> 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 That's my idea. Right now, Killer Bees joins us in the studio. Uh, Bees, how you doing? Real good, man. Well, Ranking up a it. shopping list over here. My wife's eating in bed now. She's at that part of the pregnancy where they crave all this food. Mm. Uh-huh. Some people have mirrors over the bed. We got a sneeze guard. <laughs> 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 Sleeping on those posture pedic seal meal, man. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't lived till you're making love, and your wife says, "Go slow. I'm spilling my chili." <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Mike. For- New keyword in just a few minutes. Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Uh oh. It's that time of uh, day. That's are we wrong. here? Are we here? Uh, what... Today in history? Is that where we are? Yeah, I want to say happy birthday to Peter Frampton coming up uh, Sunday. His birthday's Monday, isn't it? What day's today? 19. Uh oh. Never mind. His birthday's the same day <laughs> as yours, right? My birthday's Monday? Yes. yes. Yeah. I thought it was Sunday. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oh, well, today's the 19th. Someone yeah. has to do some. Oh, boy. Okay, sorry. Skip. I'm losing my will to live. I'm looking at this. <laughs> There's a great article in Architectural I'm Digest showing mm-hmm. Peter's home. It's really cool to get a chance to look at it. Okay. Thank yeah. you, Peter. Um, and uh, you just saw Mr. Frampton in concert. Yes, I did. I just want to say, uh, uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he's on the way. Sunday, we'll know for sure. Uh, American absolutely. Idol, they're going to announce the inductees for this year. Okay. Uh, on this date in history, uh-oh. What? Well, this wasn't the really bad part. Uh, Captain Cook, Captain James Cook, uh, spotted Australia. At least I'm not saying he discovered it. I hate it when they say that. Because there were already people there. Well, yes. So he, he just saw them. They spotted him first, actually. The champagne baron, Captain Cook? <laughs> <laughs> um, wasn't his last, was his last stop Hawaii? I don't know. Yeah, so. <laughs> um, he eaten by natives? What are you talking this about? This is a quiz. Um, I'll ask you first, Pat Godwin. Yes, sir. Officially, they say the American Revolution began on this date in 1775. Where? Uh, Philadelphia? Nope. Lexington and Concord? Lexington, exactly. Wow, Lexington. Very good, Willie. Yeah, in, uh, good. in Queens, the yeah. corner of Lexington and Concord. Yeah, yeah. Right, right there. Okay. I'm um, listening to Gordon Wood's revolutionary characters right now. Really fun. Oh, there you go. There you go. That'll see. That'll have you get answers to some of these questions. Okay, 1934. Uh, the first movie by this famous movie star was called Stand Up and Cheer. Anyone? That'd be Brad Pitt. Next question. Uh, Stand Up and Cheer. Uh, Stand Up and Cheer. Uh, your, uh, your hint is drink. Dean Martin? I'm Shirley Temple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are some restaurants that still call it that. Shirley Temple? Yeah. yeah. You know, talk sure, about yeah. dated. Yeah. yeah. She's more, uh, that's almost as bad as when Will Willie pointed out about uh, kids of a certain age think Paul Newman is primarily a salad dressing baron. Mm-hmm. Wait like, a minute. Why are we talking about Shirley Temple? Is it her birthday? No, it was her first uh, movie. First movie, Stand Up Stand and up Cheer. Stand Up and Cheer. That's today in history. Yeah. <laughs> Shirley Temple. Uh, Shirley Temple. Okay, here's one for you, Chick. You'll get this one. Um, 1943, Dr. Albert Hoffman did this for the first time. Hoffy? And when, 43? 43. He split the, uh, split the atom. No, he split a tab of acid. <laughs> oh, yeah, lysergic. Uh, he took okay. acid for the first time. Mm-hmm. He was the first one to say a day later, watch out for the brown acid. Hoffy. <laughs> Anticipating the Woodstock. Um, how about this one? This is for you, Pat. Uh, 1963, Johnny Cash yeah. released my dad's favorite song. Actually. A Boy Named Sue? Nope, Ring of Fire. Oh. Who wrote it? Uh, Ring of Fire was written by his wife, June Carter. June Carter and Merle Kilgore. Uh, a great song. Man, it burns, burns, burns. I, I'm, that hasn't been sold to, like, Preparation A, has it? <laughs> I hope not. Actually, That was yeah. your dad's favorite song. He loved that song, yeah. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, this is too depressing. Okay, let's do some birthdays quickly. Uh, 1935, Dudley Moore. Oh, great uh, comedian, actor. Um... Uh, famous for his beef stew, 
Yeah, no, 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 that was his brother, That's, Dinty. Oh, his Dinty. Twin, okay, twin brother, sorry. Dinty. A friend of the uh, show, Alan Sir Jr.'s birthday is today. All right. Indy, two-time IndyCar winner. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Tim Curry, another great cook, uh, born in this date in 1940. Invented the spice. Uh -huh. oh, okay. <laughs> um, let's see. James Franco, known for his spaghetti, uh, born in 78. <laughs> Franco-American. Swing American. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, and uh, Hayden Christensen, who I think... Uh, he was a Darth Vader, wasn't he? Anakin yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Then he disappeared. Uh, uh, Troy Palomalu. Beautiful name. Mm -hmm. Beautiful hair. Yeah. yeah. Those are great ads. I like those very much. No kidding. Yeah. Tiny yeah. Troy? Yeah, I love those. That appeals to you, huh? That's very funny. That's very funny. Yeah, and that's, oh, that's today in history. I hope you learned a little bit of something. Tiny uh, Troy. We want to review what happened in today's show? <sighs> yeah. Uh-oh. Are you, are you done with us? Willie Griswold setting in for Josh Arnold today. Josh is on assignment fishing with his brothers out there. He's going to win, uh, what, $500 for catching a... Five pound exactly fish. Isn't that what he said? Did he call a shot? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I use the term crank for my uh, my uh, hang down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the $20 million Nike deal for Caitlin Clark uh, is uh, in any second now, evidently. We'll keep an eye on that for you. Uh, we have to make it seem like it was all Tom's idea. That's basically our mission statement here at the Bob and Tom Show. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Mm -hmm. I thought of that. <laughs> Yeah, proving that uh, insanity is a hereditary. A Haywood son, Coulter, uh, is a uh, falconer. Uh, I once played the drums at a hey, strip Yeah, you better club. clarify. You said that kind of quickly. You mean he's a... A falconer. ...person who... Um, handles birds handles of prey. Handles large birds of prey, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a falconer. <laughs> okay, there you go. You said it's long enough. Yeah. With no context, it could be misinterpreted. Uh, let's see. Vultures won't eat anything alive. Nope. And the drunk vultures were in the news today. Mm -hmm. I love the drunk vulture story. Nobody liked that but me. Oh, we liked it. Yeah, we liked it. Yeah, we liked it. They we were really described by it. scientists as being too drunk to fly, yeah. which yeah, gave us a chance to this play. This was our problem. Yeah. To play this right song here. Yeah. here. Do a party. That's uh, the Dead Kennedys in Too Drunk to F. Yeah. Classic uh, punk rock song. We were all concerned that we'd have uh, all morning to talk about the Allman Brothers because Dickie Betts passed away, but we were mercifully uh, just... Uh, uh, he's, a, he's a great musician, great artist. We'll, see, we'll miss you, Dickie. Um, uh, <clears throat> Tom tells everyone, if you don't take anybody... To, if you don't, don't go to Gary, Dairy Queen, you uh, ain't worth a damn as a dad. you got to take your kids to Dairy Queen. That's what Tom or your favorite says. ice cream place. That's right. Mr. Okay. Misty, whatever it might be. Mr. Uh, Misty. <laughs> or Mr. Softy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Misty. <laughs> Misty. <laughs> That's a drink. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at bobandtom.com. This is the Bob and Tom Show.